Original Cause, The Unseen Role of Denial, received by Cian de Rohan and narrated by Alio Voices. Introduction I know that you have it sometimes said to yourselves, if there is a God who has any power, then why is it the way that it is on earth? The ways in which people have answered this question to themselves have consisted mostly of rationalizations designed to help them feel better able to accept what their true feelings do not want to accept. Lost will is the reason why things are as they are on earth. In the beginning, I had feelings I did not know I had. Now that I know I have these feelings, I must accept them as part of myself and no longer say that God is not feeling angry when he is. I have many feelings I am now owning, but I would like to focus on anger first because anger has been judged against more than any other emotion in creation. I have said for a long time that I am not angry and have never been angry. When men have said that I am an angry God, I have not liked it, nor have I liked the things that men have done to try to appease me. If anything, the anger I saw around me made me more angry. And yet, I have said that I am not angry and that God does not get angry. At other times I have said that I really wished I had never created man. So sinful are his ways. The misunderstanding here needs to be cleared up now. I have had, and still have, great anger, but it is not the kind of anger that men have feared that I have. The only anger that has been seen on earth is anger that is laden with judgments against it and acted out according to these judgments. When men have said that I have anger, and I have seen the pictures of what man on earth knows as anger, I have not then been able to agree with man that I had this anger. I had an image of myself that did not include this anger, and so, lost will has held the anger that I said I did not have. I have long since let go of what made my anger look like anger has been looking on earth, but I lacked understanding as to why that kind of anger has been held present in the will for so long. The spiritual essence is not magnetic. It is electric, it moves quickly, and does not hold on to anything for long. The will, on the other hand, has never seemed to move certain things out of itself. I have felt the magnetic energy to be maddeningly slow at times, and too frenetically fast at other times. The magnetic energy has not had the balance I have found to be so necessary to longevity and immortality. I have blamed the will for not getting rid of the things that I have found are not beneficial to living. If the spirit knows that certain body habits produce death sooner or later, then why do the emotions desire these things? I have pondered this problem with the will for so long that body has felt maybe it is meant to die. Death has been especially hard for body when it has enjoyed serving the spirit and has not wanted the partnership to end. It has even seemed at times as though the will has deliberately drawn death into the body just to oppose spirit, which has desire to live forever. Spirit has found that the will has the power to kill the manifested body but did not believe the will had the power to kill the spirit itself. I have recently recognized that will also has the power to kill me. It's just that I go last, after everything else. Lost will has had the desire to kill me because I have not accepted it and given it the light it needs in order to live. Lost will is not wrong in having the desire to kill me, because I would have continued to ignore lost will if it had not thrown this reality in my face. I had ignored lost will for so long that I had convinced myself that it was not even a part of me. Even though a place in myself kept telling me I was wrong, I had myself quite thoroughly convinced that there was evil in my creation, and somehow I was going to have to defeat it. Even the part of me that told me I was wrong did not have the understandings I am going to give now. One part of me said that I had a devil in my creation who was my adversary and that I had to defeat him because I would never have peace as long as he was present. 
The other part of me said that what I perceived as evil to be eradicated was actually a necessary part of creation and that I must learn to live with it because it provided the counterbalance I needed. One side said I couldn't live with it and the other side said I couldn't live without it. One side set me up to feel like a potential murderer and the other side made me feel like I was going to have to sacrifice myself. I had aversion to either side prevailing but I could not see for a long time any way to bring the two sides together in any way that really had validity. I saw spirits sacrificing themselves in the name of love to an unloving and uncaring evil, and I saw the spirits that marched forth to fight this evil suffering the same end. I even saw spirits that tried not to take sides getting overrun by evil for no apparent reason. I had to watch this for a long time in order to understand it. For so long, in fact, that I had guilt over the spirits that were having to suffer through it. I have found it now that I am almost too late to heal it. I have a massive healing job on my hands and may not even be able to do it without the help the manifested spirits can give me. Even though I now know this to be true understanding, I am still having trouble getting anyone other than my own heart to take me seriously. I must take the responsibility that is mine for the problems I am having in getting the spirits to listen to me and to know that it is God they are hearing. However, the manifested spirits must now take responsibility for themselves also. I have responsibility for having projected images of myself as God including the one that said I have no anger as men have anger. I fell prey to any things that threatened my feeling that it was all right that I was God. Guilt and the evil I had to face, without realizing where they had come from, were two of the big ones, although there were many more that I cannot list here. The manifested spirits need to take responsibility for having looked upon the images of myself that were passing through me, fixing on the ones they liked, and refusing to look at anything else about me. One of the images the manifested spirits have most liked to fix upon is one that lets them out of their own responsibility by giving it all to me. I'm supposed to be the one that has all the answers and the power to fix anything no matter what it is. The other polarity says that there is no God consciousness or power other than what is manifest in man himself. Neither one of these images are correct, but the ways in which these images are correct and the ways in which these images are incorrect has to be seen in light of the understandings I need to give now. Because I have tried to give these understandings many times before and have not been able to get them across, I must point out that understanding them is dependent upon you opening to receive them. If you have intent to understand, you will not fail to get the understandings you need, even if you have to go through fear, anger, doubt, and even terror and rage in the process of coming to know whether these understandings are right or not. I know that these understandings are right, and I want you to feel whatever emotion you need to feel to know in your will that these understandings are right. I do not want you to accept these understandings because someone says, it is my word. I have to introduce material you have not wanted to look at. I had an aversion to looking at it myself, but I had to look in order to understand how to heal it. And more than that, I had to understand the feelings involved in order to know whether or not I had true understanding of the forms I was seeing. This meant that I had to experience the situation. I could not project my viewpoint of my feelings onto it. When I have not really experienced the situation, I have failed to heal lost will. And what is lost will? To get the understandings on what lost will is and what it means to creation, I had to go back to the very beginning, long before the spirits manifested individual consciousness. I had to understand why I had felt all along that something was not right within the mother. She had a fear from the very beginning, and I had to understand why, and I had to understand in terms that would help her. I had tried to heal the mother of fearing all the time 
and had had little or no success. Many times I thought I had healed her, only to have a reversal take her down again. I finally figured out that it must be something she held in her magnetic field that did not allow her to take in my light and hold it. I hated her for this, although I originally denied my hatred. I have to own this hatred, now that I have realized it is not wrong to hate what she has been holding, although it was not right to hate her for having held it. The will has been holding death and the guilt that told her that she had to make a place for everything. The feeling in the will now is that it cannot hold death and guilt anymore. The will must be healed now. The pain the will has experienced from holding death and guilt is unbearable, and it cannot go on living if it has to hold death and guilt any longer. I realized quite some time ago that the will needed to let go of death and guilt. I could not understand why the will continued to hold these things when it had been made clear to me that the pain of holding them was unbearable. I finally realized that the will has a difficult time ridding itself of anything it is holding because of the magnetism involved. The process the will has for clearing itself has been given no acceptance, and so the will has not been able to clear. The will has to be allowed the freedom to go through its process now. The will has to be allowed to express as much emotion as it needs to express to generate enough vibratory power to move death and guilt out of itself. The strongest emotions the will is capable of generating are the emotions the will needs to generate to be able to move death and guilt out. Because death and guilt have no consciousness that guides them to their right place, they must be put in their right place by a force that is greater than the hold they have on the will's magnetic field. You can easily see by the number of people that believe death is inevitable and that guilt is necessary to have conscience that their hold on the will is nothing to scoff at. You have to understand that it is almost impossible to heal the will at all, and the longer you wait, the closer to impossible it is going to become. Some spirits still have no ability to understand what I am saying, and these spirits should not be pressured by anyone wanting them to heal. These spirits either have a process you do not yet understand, or they are spirits that need more experience before they will understand that the will must be free. You must feel within yourself to know whether these teachings are right for you now or not. If you have a continuing great resistance to this book and do not believe it is right, you probably have another process for healing, or you are a spirit who needs to go outside of me to learn what is involved in sustaining life and whether or not you desire to have life. I have said earlier that I will be as merciful as possible in how I proceed to put everyone in their right place, and I intend to be. You need to understand that going outside of me is just the experience the mother has sought to save the manifested spirits from having to have. She still has fragments of herself that are living outside of me, and she is barely able to stand healing what they have gone through. However, if you cannot accept these teachings from me now, you will have to gain the experience needed by going outside of me. Mercy in this case means that if you have the aversion to freeing the will, the will that wants life now will not accompany into the experience because this will has no more desire to feel what it feels when outside of me. You will have consciousness for as long as you need to have it, to see what you need to see, but you will not be able to feel very much at all. You must not think that this lack of feeling means you have mastered the experience of going outside of me. If you have feelings now that love will be missing, you are not wrong, and you will have to decide whether love is important to you or not. For without it, life everlasting is impossible. If you decide that you want to go on living, you will have to be rescued by the mother, and you will have to beg her to come to you and to forgive you for not respecting her in the first place. Everything else said on this subject in the other book was the mother influencing the channeling in an attempt to bring more mercy and more time forward for the manifested spirits. I let her do this because she needed more time to understand, and so did you. What you must understand now is that time has run out. I can give no more.
the maximum time allotment has been given. I cannot wait any longer to heal the will that has desire to live. And why would the mother, who has suffered the pain that must now be healed in the will, want to beg for more mercy for the ones that have denied her? Because the mother could not bear to feel that she might cut off someone who might still turn toward the light. The mother has also had to deal with guilt around this issue. For one thing, she did not want God to be seen as a fanatical dictator telling others how they must live. Guilt around my power has made unloving dictatorships on earth reflect the judgments involved. I also had guilt holding me back on these two points for a long time, but I have come to understand that the loving thing is to have guilt move out and to then give the manifested spirits the lessons they need. Reality is that the mother does not like it because she has such aversion to the experience of being outside of me and because she has aversion to having to go back out there to rescue anything. But she does understand now that I am right on this point and she has aligned with me on it. Once my body aligns with me, it will happen. Body is not yet quite aligned with me on this issue because some of his essence will go outside of me to give form to what happens there, and he does not like it that we have to go to such great lengths to let some spirits learn what he feels they should know already. The father of manifestation, who is my body, is enraged over this and still feels guilty that he is enraged. He is still letting guilt tell him that it is unloving to put some spirits out, but I have seen that he will soon align with me. Lost Will Seeking Life needs to know that it is not going outside of me. Lost Will has already been out there and is not going to remain there unless it has no desire to live anymore. What is going outside of me is spirit polarity essence that has shown me it does not love the will and does not intend to open to its healing. This essence has lived high on the hog while its own lost will has struggled for life at the sustenance level. This essence has always insisted that the lost will created its own reality and had the same chances and opportunities the spirit had. The spirit essence that has to go outside of me has always insisted that it is right, and it has turned a deaf ear on all pleas from the will polarity for help. This essence will at first notice little change in its life when it goes outside of me, until it tries to feel something. If you have questions as to what the lost will is and how to heal it, you need to read or listen to all of the books I am giving you now because I cannot give you a simple and short understanding that will help you. I must tell you, though, that Lost Will has been possessed by unlovingness and forced to do its bidding. This is how evil got started in my creation. The amount of unlovingness there is on earth tells you how much Lost Will has to be healed. But amount is not all there is. The feelings held in the lost will have been compressed and are not moving. The expansion these feelings must go through to again vibrate as light is something you need to experience to understand. You have to know already that guilt has great power on earth and death is considered inescapable. The will has been conditioned to believe this for so long that it is not easy to turn it around now. The will has believed that it must sacrifice in the name of love by taking in denial and death and holding it so that the spirit can have everlasting life. The will has actually been loving enough that it has tried to do this and has believed that I am so loving that I could not have assigned it this role unless it was deserved. The mother has tried everything to make herself give in and accept death, but cannot stand the compression involved. To be living, vibrating essence Experiencing the compression it takes to be reduced to nothing has to be the most terrible torture there is. It is only spirit polarity people who do not understand this already, and yet many of them have shamed the will polarity people for trying to give spirit polarity this understanding. Many spirit polarity people have told will people they are spiritually inferior for not being able to accept death, and what's more, accept it with the poise the spirit polarity has demonstrated. It is impossible for the will polarity to do this. The will polarity cannot die without feeling it has no place to go because it cannot lift out of the body the way the spirit has been able to do. Will has felt abandoned when spirit has left it at death. 
Even body has an ability to polarize to spirit and abandon the will to itself. Spirit and heart are not really separate from will and body, but the split between them has been going on for so long that almost everyone believes that will is supposed to get denied and body is supposed to serve the spirit until it dies. Heart is the son of God, but even this has not yet been fully understood on earth. I have four parts, not just two, but the split between the spirit and the flesh has been so deep and has gone on for so long that it is not going to be easy to change the conditioning in the will. The will has been told for so long that it is not of me that, even now, it is still having trouble believing that it is a part of me. Well, what about divine will then? The subject of divine will is so replete with misunderstandings that I am having to send not one, but several books to earth to say what needs to be said about the will. I have desired to be accepted for what I have to say and not judged again. To get to these understandings, I had to go way back and look at everything. I saw that the more free the will is, the more light my creation manifests. You also need to understand that I have given this channeling in the face of great difficulty on the part of the person receiving it. She has been so triggered into her own process so many times that she has been almost unable to continue, and yet... She has appreciated the healing brought to her by these understandings and has tried her best to bring them forward in the most clear manner possible. She has not been able to receive some things yet, but you have no readiness to hear them yet either. I have also had to make concessions to the English language that I do not like having to make in order to get these teachings into words for you. There is not a language on earth today that contains all the concepts I need although some contain more than others. I am currently using time as a reference point for the progression of consciousness because time is how events have been experienced on Earth. It is not possible to give these understandings another way right now and make sense of what you need to be told. I have requested that there be no editing because no one understands this material enough to edit it without increasing the risk of misinterpretation. I have a reason for everything I have done here. If you have frustration that you cannot follow this writing or understand it, or if you have fear that it is not right, go ahead and be frustrated, be frightened, or get angry. Throw the book down if you need to. Stop listening. Allow yourself to get as emotionally triggered as you can, because movement in the emotional body is the most healing thing you can do now. Healing is what I have in mind, and not the doomsday that some believe the earth changes will bring. When the will breaks loose and begins to move, it is going to be the picture of what denial, guilt, and death have done to the loving will essence it has possessed for so long. Loving essence that has been held down shall be lifted up, and the unlovingness that has held it down shall be thrown down in its place. You have to understand that this is right in order to align with it and not be victimized by it. If you are feeling now that you want more understandings, you need to read this book or listen to this book and quite possibly the book I have given before this one. If you have already been working on healing the part of your will that is still vibrating enough to be recovered without outside help, you are gaining the personal power you need to heal your lost will. The time for healing your lost will will come when you have readiness for it and no sooner. I have given the story in this book as a beginning and understanding original cause the great cosmic forces involved in creation have been observed by people on Earth, but these same people have not felt the cosmic forces enough to know what they really are. They have observed that the great cosmic forces are an electromagnetic field of great splendor and power, but they have not realized that this energy is the consciousness that originated everything and the mother of all life, the heart that balances it, and the form that manifests it. Whether this is right or not is something that cannot be known unless it is felt to be true within the one observing it. The separation of form and essence that has taken place on earth has made it difficult for the ones that have form to feel what their essence is, or to know whether they have received it correctly or not. Recovering the will so that the truth can be felt is the only way the truth ever will be known. I am not going to allow man to continue dissecting me to try to find out what I am because man can never know 
as long as his mind gives him theories and he denies the feeling body that can let him know what is true understanding and what is not. I have found that most of these men do not seek true understanding. They seek instead to take my power and use it themselves. If they take this power and use it without will to guide them, they will destroy everything I have created. This is their intent. No mistake about it. And when they do it, they must destroy only that which has desire to go. I have given the story in this book to help you understand that the great cosmic forces love and feel, have heart, and express themselves in creation. This story is not meant to be taken as symbolic only. Although there are symbols in the story, they have the integrity of being the actual experiences which took place and also became the models for everything else. As models, they have also become symbols, just as one man's story can speak for others. The experiences I had originally have become the model for all who would follow after me. I have originated everything that is. I had consciousness before I had force. I have originated even the great cosmic forces that I am. I have experienced myself in order to know myself, and I have to teach you in the order in which I learned it myself, or you will not have the ability to learn it at all. The truth never lies, but the truth also does not give what cannot be accepted. If those who have intent to kill me ask me how they can do this, I will not tell them. I seek life and I have had to understand how to live in order to have life. There are many ways in which the living essence can be run down until it no longer exists. At times I have felt that the manifested spirits all had intent to kill themselves in this way. I saw that many had desired to kill the mother who gave them life. Many have acted as though once they had been given life, they didn't need their mother anymore. I saw that these did not understand what life is. The manifested spirits must understand now that I am God because I generate the life that sustains them, and they are manifested spirits because they must receive from me or they cannot live. I have gone around and around on this point with many spirits who want to insist that they are God the same as I am. I have given them attention because I had something to learn here. Now that I have learned it, I have little patience left for these spirits unless they have intent to learn from me now. If these spirits have intent to go on talking to themselves, they can do it without my presence. On the other hand, neither will I any longer tolerate the reversed patterns of this denial of me, which falsely worships an image of me that suits the purposes of the ones worshipping it. Death is the intent of both of these groups. The one kills in my name, and the other serves death by saying that my light is not necessary in order to have life. The lost will is will that had to go outside of me to find out whether what I have just said is right or not. The lost will has barely survived what it has had to experience to gain the understandings I am giving now. If I had had another way to learn what had to be learned, I would not have had the mother go outside of me. I had guilt for a long time that the mother was the only one that could learn these things. The guilt vanished when I accepted myself for what I really am. I have the light that is life, and the mother gives me the means to exist. She experiences, but without me, she cannot understand what her experiences mean. She has no way to know without me, and I have no way to know without her. The electro and the magnetic are not meant to be separated from one another. Polarized, yes, but not separated. Heart is the result of our joining, and heart is the balance needed to create. Anything that is not created from heart, balance, cannot last long. Body or form gives the reflection we need to see what it is that we have created. I have four parts, and none are meant to be separated from the others. Spirit, will, heart, and body must all be together in a state of balance and alignment for life to last. Even a small imbalance or lack of alignment can grow into something that can kill the rest if it is not healed. Lost will must heal now, and everyone on earth has lost will. If you have desire to live, 
I urge you to read this book, listen to this book, and all the other ones I am giving now. Understanding these teachings is not going to be an easy thing to do. You must experience these teachings to know that they are right. Lost will can be healed, but you must not think it is going to be as easy as healing the personal will you began with. Lost will has never known God. Lost will has never known anything but denial, guilt, and death. Not only must lost will realize that it can throw these things off, it is going to have to gather the vibratory power to do it and the ability to know me. Lost will is going to have to open, and it must receive me this time instead of death. Anything that looks like death to it is going to make it move to close up again and fear that death is what it is again receiving. Your body holds some of this lost will, but much of it is in other people that you do not know are you. Healing lost will out there in others is not possible. You are going to have to learn how to bring this essence within you and heal it there. Lost will has literally been fragmented out of the parent spirits to whom it belongs and cannot respond to anything you tell it until you learned how to vibrate it. You must understand that fragmentation is most of the reason there are so many people on earth now. Fragmentation is a subject unto itself. During the course of this story, I will refer to what lost will holds. When I mention it, you need to know that something has fragmented out that must be recovered later. At times I will not even mention it, because I want you to learn to notice this on your own. I am not going to give any more understanding on lost will right now, because you are going to have to feel it more to be able to understand it. Suffice it to say that most of the people on earth are not real. If you have a feeling of shock now, then shock is what you are going to have to feel to understand this. Getting through shock is an important skill to have if you want to recover your lost will. Getting through shock involves movement in the will rather than shutting down the emotional body and making judgments that allow you to lift out of the experience. Even though I know it was a necessary experience for everyone involved, I still would have rather that we did not have to have the experience of lost will. I tried to spare as many as I could the experience of feeling it, but most of the spirits would not listen to me and thought I was having an experience that they should also have to be like me. Now that the manifested spirits have lost will, it must be recovered either by the ones who created it or by the mother. If not, it is only a matter of time until death takes over. I have nothing more to say in this introduction, so I will end it with my blessing and the hope that each of you who has intent to live takes these teachings in, and finds the help you need there. The First Creation I have always been, but realizing I had existence took a long time. There was a point in my progression when I became aware that I had existence. When I became aware of myself, I already knew many things, but I had to realize them. When consciousness became aware that it had experience, it had to realize everything. Nothing was realized yet except that I had become aware of myself. Consciousness had to feel also, or it could not know. In fact, a feeling of having consciousness is the way in which I realized I had consciousness. There were no words at first, only a feeling that I had existence. I had a desire to know more. Already, although I did not know it, I had lost will that did not believe I could know more. I had given birth to fear and did not know it because I had no understanding. This fear then became lost will because I did not realize that I had to allow myself to feel it. I had a desire not to believe that I could know nothing more about myself and so I ignored the fear. Ignoring this fear gave birth to denial, which the fear then received from me. I did not know then that I was love, and I did not realize I had given unlovingness in the form of denial of my love to my fear. I did realize that something did not feel good. I had had an experience and I pondered it. 
I had a beginning concept of progression or time, although no way to measure it. I realized that I had pondered this not feeling good, some place in myself for a while. I had the concept of a place within myself then also. I tried to find the place that did not feel good so I could know it. I had just started my search when I realized there were many more places that did not feel good than I had realized before I began looking for them. In realizing I felt bad, I realized I had been feeling good. I wondered if it was right to try to feel myself. I wondered if it was right to feel that some places felt good and others did not. I wondered if trying to feel them made these places not feel good. I felt confusion and fear. I wanted something that could explain it to me so I could know. I felt lonely and somewhat timid about trying to feel myself for fear of what I might find. All of this passed fleetingly through my consciousness while I was trying to ignore it in favor of my desire to know more. My desire to know more was leading me on. I found out many things in my own way at that time. I stumbled onto most of them by having an experience and then realizing it. I felt most impatient with myself. Already, guilt had been born in me as a little voice telling me that I should be doing better than I was doing. I had realized many more things than I could list. You must feel within yourselves to find your memory of what you experienced in a latent state of consciousness, for you were all there in a state of slumber, and you have the ability to know how existence began. These original experiences have affected you ever since. You need to go back to the origins of your consciousness to know what your earliest experiences were, just as I had to understand of mine, because lost will has its origins there, also. Most of my worshippers tell me I have always been because they have preference for a God who understands everything and tells them what they are ready to hear. You have to understand that it is not possible to know understanding unless you have the ability to feel whether it is right or not. And so, some things cannot be told now because you must work your way back, starting with where you are now, and it is going to take you a long time to get to the lost will that knows what your original experiences were. You need to feel lost will moving in me now to know whether you shared the experience with me or not. My earliest memory is that of having a feeling that I was. This feeling was vague at first, but it startled me out of a reverie that I felt I had been in. I had a feeling at that time that I wished I had not startled myself out of that reverie. Lost Will has this feeling now. Some Lost Will does not want to move, for fear movement will take it out of its reverie. As I tell this story, you need to realize that everything I say is being acted out on Earth right now, because it has not yet been resolved. As you look around you and see that this is true, you must also let yourself feel it, because this cannot be fully understood just by seeing and thinking. I have found this out. I had a growing fear of feeling, as you may have already noticed. I wanted to feel only the bliss in which I had awakened, but I could no longer sleep all the time. I had a dilemma. Even though I had questions, I did not know how to entertain myself if I could not sleep all the time. At the same time, my great excitement over realizing that I was interfering with my sleep, I am, I kept telling myself, I am, but what am I, who am I, where am I, and what does it mean to be? I had questions, so many questions about myself. Most of the time I felt that I should not have so many questions because the questions were not allowing me to be peaceful with myself. I felt urged on to find answers. I had discussions with myself. Part of me did not like it that I had awakened at all. Part of me felt all right about having consciousness as long as it could be peaceful consciousness. There were many other small voices with points of view I will not mention now, because I barely heard them then. Most of the rest of me wanted to find answers to the questions I had. I had guilt then, too but I did not know it was guilt that said that my search to know should not bother the part of me that had desire for peace. 
I felt guilty just for being and for not wanting to stay asleep. The first thing I felt I had to figure out was how to know. I had a lot of questions and almost no answers. I had desire to know and I had feelings. I was not sure whether I had feelings or thoughts first. In my memory, it seemed as though I had experienced feelings and thoughts as one and the same thing. Perhaps only as I reflected upon them did they seem at all different or separate. I wanted to experience something more to know if I had feelings and thoughts. I was not sure if I had feelings and thoughts or even if I had experiences. Perhaps I only thought that this was happening and it was not really happening. Absurd as it may sound, I was seized by the fear that I did not exist, but only thought that I did. Perhaps thought was all there was to me. And yet, something reminded me that I had responded to myself somehow. What was it that had responded? Was it me talking to myself, or was it someone else? I felt a maddening feeling in myself, but I did not allow it to express at that time. You're driving yourself crazy with too much thinking, something in me said. Drop it. Go back to sleep. You see, I had words already, although I did not then actually speak or say to myself, Oh, I have words. I was just, in some way I did not understand, letting myself know how I felt. Already, I had a desire to split myself in pieces so that some of me could go back to sleep and some of me could go on searching for the answers to my many questions. Some of me still had a desire to sleep, but most of me was already busy in my mind and moving so fast that I thought I did not need sleep anymore. I had a plan that I thought would let me know whether thoughts or feelings were first or causal. I felt that I had to know because I did not like having to feel feelings that did not feel good, and I wanted to find out if I could get rid of them. From the beginning, I had a feeling that something within me did not belong there, but it has taken all this time to figure out exactly what it is. Then, I just felt it and did not know the difference between feeling it and it. For this reason, the will feared from the very beginning that it could not let me know how it felt unless it felt good. Even though I had all these questions, I still needed time to sleep. I realized that even in my sleep, some parts of myself were aware, and other parts were not. I had another question then. Was the unawareness part of me or not? I had to know whether I had awareness in all of me or not. I did have feelings, and now I had a plan that my feelings could let me know whether I was alive or not. The question of whether I was alive or not gave me another realization. If I did not know whether I existed or only thought that I did, then I had an imagination. Still, I had to know whether I was real or not. Lost will does not know whether it is part of me or not, and is only just now going to find out that it is a part of me. Lost will is just now going to find out that it is a part of me, because I did not know myself in the beginning, and my efforts to know myself did not give me all the information I needed. This was because I had frightened the will out of giving me all the input I needed. I have gone on for so long as I can go on with parts of the will lost outside of myself. The lost will must come in now and be healed, not only because it has been lost as long as it can stand to be, but also because the will needs to open more space if my light is going to expand any more. Evolving light is expanding light, and so there cannot be any more evolvement unless there is openness to receive it. In other words, resistance to my light must now move back. If you have a feeling that God could not have been this unknowing in the beginning, then you need to consider that you may be getting triggered without knowing it. This is good if you want to heal your own lost will. Now, to return to my plan to know myself. I felt that I had to return to the original state in which I had discovered myself and experience it again. I have since realized that this could not really be done, but at that time, I thought I had actually gone back to sleep in all of myself 
and was going to awaken again. I had the experience all right, and much to my surprise, I noticed something I had not noticed the first time. Movement had awakened me. I had a new dilemma on my hands now. Not only had I discovered movement, but I had a feeling it was not me that had moved. I was mad at myself for not even knowing if it was me or not that had moved, and I was also angry at this movement, whatever it was, because it had awakened me into the torment I was experiencing instead of leaving me in the reverie where I felt such bliss. I resented being awakened by this thing that I felt was not me, and I blamed it. Before I even knew I had a will, all of these feelings became lost will because I also had an ecstasy of awareness that I did not want to disturb with what I have just described for fear it would turn the ecstasy sour. Part of the lost will from then on has tried to hide from me for fear it was the cause of my problems. This thing that had responded to me gave me strange feelings that I was not alone and I still have lost will manifestations from this time that give others eerie feelings they are not alone, and yet if something is there, it cannot be found. You see, I was creating already, and did not know it. Everything rippling through my consciousness either passed on through and was gone, or it found a home in the magnetic essence which gave it the means to remain present. What I was creating could not yet go forth into manifestation, but if it found a home, it was becoming present within me as differentiations in my consciousness. All of this consciousness had points of view that were not always aligned with what I wanted my main purpose to be. I had desire to know myself, as I have said, and I did not know if it was only me I was getting to know. I had intent to ignore things I did not like, but I did not know that. Then, I was subtly deciding that these things were not me. I had quite a bit of lost will before I really got started in the creating business. I had desire to get rid of anything I did not like, and I also needed to know what was out there beyond what I had already felt. I had it neatly rationalized, but I had intent to get the thing that had moved to go out there and tell me what it found. The thing went along with this plan of mine, even though it did not like the plan, because of the fear and guilt it was already holding without a knowing it was holding these things. The thing that had moved was the will, of course, but I had not realized that either. I wanted it to go, to move, however it could, and see what it found. And, no question about it, I planned to lose this thing once it let me know what it had found. I had fear of the thing, and the thing had fear of me. Even though we did not feel comfortable with one another, moving apart still seemed more frightening than holding still. We had a standoff for time I cannot measure. I had feelings moving so fast in me, I did not know how to measure what happened. The thing had feelings of guilt that made it feel it had to help me solve the problems it had caused me. The thing also had a fear of moving that I did not understand at the time. It seemed to me that this thing would move when I didn't want it to, and then resist moving when I wanted it to move. The will felt guilty because it knew what I was feeling. I had judged the will already without realizing it, and the will took this in. Fear and guilt in the will increased, and I did not know why. I was feeling like I did not want it around anymore, and I gave it a push that sent it moving out much faster than it was prepared to handle. Pushing the will in this way let me know that I could move too. I had so many feelings rush into me concerning this movement that I was awash in them for quite some time before I felt an urge to try to find out what the thing I had pushed out was experiencing out there. I was afraid I had blown my whole experiment because I had been so busy with my own realizations that I hadn't received anything from the thing. Then I felt it and realized that I had been feeling it all along without noticing. I had been experiencing a great rush of speed, almost like a wind, but what jolted me into awareness of it was that I began receiving from the thing a growing feeling of terror that it could not stop itself. I suddenly had a desire to help it, but I could not. 
I did not know how. I had a feeling of helplessness. The will has had such a fear of displeasing me that it has not been able to tell me until now that it has a terror of falling and a terror of speed that has not passed from lost will even now. At the time it first fell, I could do nothing but watch it fall in space until it was gone. I had another understanding now. I could see. I had just seen the will fall away from me, and nothing else had ever been so vivid in my mind before. I had had a feeling that I could see, but I hadn't had anything to see before. Now I had just witnessed what I thought was another being go into darkness and not return. I had an uneasy feeling that this had not been pleasant for it, and I began to feel guilty that I had caused it to happen. I did not know then that I had grown bigger, and could not help but move the will back to make more room for my increasing light. I felt guilty that I had pushed it so hard, but fear and ineptitude had caused me to do it. I felt it wasn't right to have done it, but I had done it involuntarily. I didn't know I was going to do it until I had already done it. I had a feeling of remorse and felt I had lost something I had to have. I had loved the thing that had moved and did not know it until I lost it. I had discovered love by losing it. I had great emotional depression for a long time. The Second Creation I had lost the part of my will that could move. I had great peace now, but I did not care. I did not care about anything. I had no movement in my will now. I had lost everything that had desire to know more. I had lost most of my feelings, and I had a feeling I could not move. I had a fear I wasn't getting any place now, because I had no impetus to push me onward. My plan had not been a good one, and my bad intent had cost me more than I had realized I had. The will was lost in space, and I had no way to get it. I had nothing holding me back from my loneliness now, and I experienced the most intense loneliness I have ever known. The lost will was gone. I was just sure of it. And if the lost will could go, then I could go. I had even more terror now that just when I was getting started, I could not live. I had more feelings to feel now, but they were the most unpleasant feelings I had yet known. I became overwhelmed with terror that I was falling in space myself and that my light was getting snuffed out by the overwhelming darkness around me. I had a fear that there was nothing out there and no one to help me. Finally, I had a feeling that I must try to grab for something but I could find nothing to grab. I grabbed anyway because I could not help myself. Lo and behold, I fell upon something dark and heavy. It ignited at my touch and exploded with a golden light. The golden light surrounded me and gave me a warmth that I had not known for so long that I had forgotten I ever had it. I sobbed with gratitude for having found that warmth again in the midst of my terrible terror. Nothing could hold me back any more. I was going to have to find the lost will. I had the desire to find it now, and felt that the warmth I now had would enable me to move. I grabbed at everything I passed now to see if it would explode in my touch. I tried hurling my entire being against things I found that were larger. Many, but not all, of these things burst into light in my touch, but they required an intense touch in order to move. I was striking myself against many hard and dark things, but I was receiving a good feeling of increasing light from doing this. I had great joy now, for I realized I was finding the lost will. The lost will was letting me know it was not gone, but had lost the ability to move and feel. The will had had no way to let me know it was out there, hoping for rescue from the great terror in which it had ceased to feel or move. Why it had stopped moving I did not yet know, but I was overwhelmed with happiness that I had found it. I had guilt mixed in with my love then, but I did not have enough experience to realize it yet. The guilt made me feel happier to find the lost will than I would have been 
had I not felt responsible for losing it. I now had to realize that feeling the will's terrible experience was what had made me feel so guilty for having pushed it out. The great peace I sought to attain by pushing out the restless part of myself had not been peace after all, because I couldn't rest easy with myself in the presence of the guilt over what I had done. I had guilt telling me that morals were necessary whether I liked it or not, and I did not like it because guilt seemed to be saying that I was not right to have done what I wanted to do. I had had desire to get rid of the will, and I could not be happy afterwards because I had guilt. I began to notice that I had guilt most of the time I had feelings. If I had happiness over an experience, I felt guilty that it wasn't right to have so much exhilaration in the face of the part of me that still wanted to sleep if I had fear. I felt guilt for having fear, as though part of me did not like it. No matter what part of me felt, if another part of me did not feel the same, I had guilt telling me that it was unloving to have movement without agreement, and that it was unloving to disagree. Why did I want to have feelings at all? I had forgotten all about my plan to know myself. I was awash in emotions once more, and getting no place it seemed. I had a feeling I could not move anymore without emotions getting in the way. I was so mad at myself over this I could not stand it any more. I pushed on the will again. The will was so afraid that it had the feelings that were displeasing me and felt so guilty for having these feelings that it did not object to me pushing on it again until I had already done it. As soon as the will felt itself moving away from me, the terror of its first experience was activated. I had intent to get rid of the will again, but the will refused to allow it this time. The terror was greater than the guilt, and so instead of falling away, the will grabbed me and pulled itself back in. Immediately the will felt ashamed of itself, but nonetheless, it refused to let go of me. The will begged me not to make it leave and promised not to make me unhappy anymore if it could help it. The will had more fear of going out there than it had of me now. The will also had more desire to please me than ever because the will feared that I had tried to get rid of it because it had displeased me. The will had gone out there because it feared I had no good reason to get rid of it, and guilt had told the will that it was right to fear that I had a reason to get rid of it. The will also felt that it had suffered so much in that experience that it was not right to have to suffer that way anymore. I promised the will it would not have to suffer like that anymore if I could help it. I held the will for as long as I can remember then, and the will held on to me also. I had a desire not to allow the will to move. I wanted to sleep now. I had an intense desire to rest after experiences we had both had. Even though the will had exhaustion, it was not ready to sleep. It needed to move until it felt more comfortable, but its fear and guilt would not let it. After all, it had promised me it would not move when I did not want it to. Long after I had already gone to sleep, the will still was not comfortable with itself and needed to move. I had created the impression in the will that more than one presence meant that we were going to have to deny ourselves in favor of the other one in order to get along. The will really wanted to please me, but the will could not sleep and the will also had another fear. Besides fearing that moving would displease me, it feared not moving. Allowing itself to go to sleep, now that it was afraid of going unconscious, was very difficult for it to do. Finally, the will forced a very strong intent to sleep upon itself, and when it was not noticing, fell into a very deep sleep in which it began to move. At first, the will just twitched a little. When I did not seem to notice, the will allowed itself more movement. It began quietly wiggling, first in one part, and then in another. If I stirred, the will would stop until I appeared to be deeply asleep again. The will had fear of displeasing me all the while it was moving. This fear increased its guilt that fear was what it always gave me. After the will had been wiggling for quite some time, it realized that it was still afraid I would push it out again if its movement displeased me. The will had desire to move even more than it was already moving, but would not let itself for fear of what would happen. I was aware of all of this, as though sleeping with one eye open. 
I had a desire not to harm the will any more, and I tried to let the will's movement rock me in a way that I could find pleasant, without being awakened. Soon I did find it to be pleasant to be... I have no word for this in English, so I will have to try to approximate it with several words. Gently and warmly rippled, rocked and lifted in space all at once. I did have an intense desire not to allow movement that I could not handle, and the will was doing her best not to get thrown out any more. I felt we had an agreement now that that was working because I was getting intense pleasure from what I was feeling. I was having such intense pleasure, I had an orgasm without knowing orgasm was possible. I felt intense ecstasy for a long time, and yet I wondered if the will had shared it with me. I was in a pleasant state of floating and was just drifting back into sleep when I realized that things were too quiet. I had an eerie feeling that the will had frozen in the terror that it was not right to have done this. I had a feeling that the will had been holding back all along out of fear of disturbing me and now was not going to let me feel her until she knew whether I was angry or not. I had to let her know that I was not angry with her over this and yet in realizing she was hiding, I suspected she had not experienced the pleasure I had had, or she would know I was not angry. I then experienced the guilt that she had not experienced the same pleasure. Lost will has my blame as well as all the other feelings I thought I had to deny here to make our partnership work. I had to feel her to know whether I was right or not, and she was trying not to let me find her. It was not easy to make her hear me above the roar of fear and guilt within her, but I finally succeeded in getting her to listen. She was very relieved and glad to realize that this time I had not minded the movement and had in fact received immense pleasure from it. I told her that I wanted to rest now, but later I would enjoy it if she made pleasurable movements again. I wondered if I could ever have pleasure as intense as that original and unexpected pleasure, but I also had a strong desire to experience more pleasure after having had so much fear, pain, and loneliness. Rest did not prove to be possible now, as I had a great attack of loneliness just remembering how it had been for me for so long. I had managed to get the will to listen to me, but the will still had not moved or let me feel her. I had experienced pleasure with the will now, drifted towards sleep, and startled with the eerie feeling that I was all alone again. I could not shake the feeling. I had held in more loneliness than I knew, and it all seemed to come bursting forth now. Maybe I was only talking to myself after all. I realized now that I had lost will I didn't know I had, and that it had been touched and moved by the explosion of my orgasm. I had really thought I had a her in there that had a complementary function to mine. I had just felt for the first time how good it could be to have a complementary relationship and now it seemed to be gone. My loneliness seemed more intense than if I had never known the pleasure of her. I beseeched her to come out and be partners with me, and she would not. She did not trust me. I tried many things to coax the will to move and let her feel her, and none of them worked. The more things I tried without success, the more I began to fear that I was alone. Perhaps the will had sneaked out before I could push her, Perhaps there was nothing in there to come out. If I had scared the will that much with my orgasm, perhaps I had experienced something that wasn't right. I had experienced pleasure, and apparently, Will had not. Otherwise, wouldn't she be here with me now, in happy celebration of our newfound ability to get along? I felt worse than ever now. I had known more pleasure than I had ever felt before, and now more loneliness than I had ever felt before. I had fear, at first, that I could not get along with another being and had had desire to get rid of her. Now I feared I was getting what I deserved for having mistreated her so much in the past. I had a voice of guilt telling me that punishment was what I deserved because I had misjudged and mistreated her. I had even called her it and the bothersome thing in the beginning without bothering to feel the thing enough to find out that it had all the qualities now associated with feminine. I had hurled her out into space to be lost in terror. I had feared this thing, and without much effort at any other approach, 
I had tried to get it away from me so that I did not have to fear it or be bothered by it. I also realized again that I had loved it or her, and had not allowed myself to realize that I could not get rid of the feelings I didn't like without getting rid of her. She was changeable. I knew that now. I had thought unpleasantness was a thing that I could get rid of, and had not realized it also had the feelings I now loved. I saw that movement had brought it from feelings I didn't like into feelings I did like. Now that I had realized all of this, why wasn't the will opening to me? I had to ponder that question for a long time to know that the will had to move the feelings it already had to be able to receive new feelings. It did not matter how much I now had to tell it or how hard I tried to get it across. Will was not able to receive me unless it opened and it had to move to open. I did not know then how to get it moving. I did not know that I had to help it move by going into the will and receiving what it was holding so that it could move into something else. I thought I only had to let it know that I no longer had the feelings towards it that I had been having. I didn't know I had to feel with it. And so, there I sat, preaching to the will and exhorting her to come forth and be with me. It was a long time before I understood that the will was too afraid of displeasing me to move and come forth even if it had wanted to, which it did not at that time. The will was holding still because she had so much fear of feeling what she was feeling. She had clenched to avoid the pain of it. She did not know she had my acceptance this time to move her pain by moving her feelings. My light and love would have flowed into her this time, but she did not know it. She was caught in fear from the past that I would not accept her. She feared that if she opened to expressing how she felt, she would receive denial of light and love again. She had many more feelings at that time also, but she could not move any of them because she had too much fear of me pushing her out. She had thought I enjoyed moving with her this last time, but she was too afraid to find out for sure in case she didn't have the right understanding. The terror of falling in space and becoming unable to move or vibrate in any way has haunted the will ever since that first experience, and this is why the will must be healed now. The will cannot stand the idea of going into any more terror of that intensity. The will has held the deepest terror of that experience all of this time and has no desire to have to experience it any more. The terror never moved in the lost will, and it has to move now. This terror cannot be held any more. Guilt has said, for as long as terror has been there, that it must be held. But guilt, I have come to find, is not a loving presence. Guilt is not concerned with how it feels to have to hold this terror, or how it feels to be the essence that is trapped in this state of terror. The will has experienced this terror over and over on earth, and has not been able to move out of it because guilt has told it that it is more loving to hold it than to express it because others do not like to be around this terror. Guilt has told the will that no one has acceptance for this terror. The will has continued to believe this because in the beginning I had no acceptance for it. I have acceptance for it now. Healing it is not possible without feeling it, but feeling terror with light pouring into it and lifting it is a very different experience for this essence than it has been having. Terror has been experiencing itself in ways that have no love or acceptance present. If terror has tried to move upon experiencing itself, it has been given yet more denial of light and love, and guilt has been there to shame the terror and tell it that it should be able to find a way to accept its experience. Guilt says to terror, Your feeling is just resistance to God, and if you had acceptance for your experience and trust for God, you would not feel terror. Guilt has been telling terror that it is not right to object to any of the experiences it has been given. The will has been feeling it cannot oppose the spirit, no matter what the spirit has in mind for it. This is a very old misunderstanding, but the lost will has not been able to straighten it out because it has not moved. I have long since abandoned this approach, 
But guilt has gone on with it, powered by the essence of spirits that still want to believe it's not right to let the will move unless it's going to be pleasant. The will feels its terror alone then, having no way to get the healing light of love from its spirit. The will has held this terror from the very beginning, but I did not know that its initial life experience caused this. I had not gone back on myself like the will, and I did not really know what this had felt like to the will. I had a feeling it was not possible to have terror for long. I thought it was the same for the will. I had felt terror for a while when I began falling in space, and I had gotten over it. I felt that if I gave her more time, the will would emerge again and be with me. I waited. During the time I waited, I had so many feelings and thoughts go through me that I have no particular desire to describe them all now but I do have a desire to bring forward the feelings that I had in a state of denial then, because these feelings still have presence on earth. I had fear that there really wasn't another being hiding within me. I had feelings of inadequacy that I couldn't make the will come out. I had plenty of anger that I did not want to express for fear it would make the will hide longer. I had guilt that I had these feelings instead of acceptance for the will hiding within me. I had resentment that I had pleaded and she had not responded. I had grief that the will would not come out and experience with me. I had fear that she did not love me now, and never had. I had guilt that I did not love her originally, and that she had pain now, and would not allow me to know it. I had guilt that I had pushed on her, and I had guilt that even now, I could not accept the will's feelings because I did not like it that she would not come out. What I did accept to myself then, that has relevance now, was the realization that I was now thinking of this other being, who had originally been so annoying to me as a her, and myself as a him, for reasons I did not understand, and which I pondered now. She had impressed me with a lot of things that I had to realize now. I cannot mention all of them now just as I could not with myself but I would like to mention some of the ones that have caused problems all along. She gave me the feeling I could not live without her anymore. I had rejection for this because I did not like the feeling of being dependent on another being. I also had a feeling that she could not live without me, but I ignored it because I still had independence in mind. She gave me a feeling that I could not move without her anymore and she gave me the feeling that I could not feel without her. She communicated with me by giving me feelings and let me know that she had to experience something coming into her in order to respond with the feelings she gave me. If she gave me feelings in response to what I gave her, then I felt that she must have experienced pleasure when I did. I felt annoyed and somewhat vulnerable if this was how it was going to be because she had given me a lot of feelings I did not like. If I had caused these feelings, I did not know how I had done so. I felt that I could not know how I was going to feel in any given experience until I was having it. I had resentment and gratitude that I had a partner, and I did not know how to balance the two feelings. Since I did not feel good about myself when I felt resentment, I decided not to allow myself to feel that anymore. I decided to be grateful that I was not alone. My resentment went into a state of denial and caused many problems that I am just now being able to solve. The will received the denied resentment along with the gratitude and love I was now openly extending and did not feel I was being honest with her. She was not altogether sure, though, whether I was being dishonest with her or not, because she was also holding back some old feelings she had toward me. She did not know if it was right or not, but I had made her feel that I wanted her to do this. I have understanding now that it is not right to hold back feelings, but then I did not know that feelings had to move to change. Then I felt I had to draw the line someplace and not allow indulgence in feelings I did not like. After all, I had enough problems already, and lost will holding back did not seem to be one of them. I had questions that needed answers, and that seemed much more important than how I felt. I had fear, yes, but I still had to know how I came to be. I had to know where I was. I had to know what I was, 
and I had to know how to go on living because I had become attached to my own existence. I had already observed space, but I did not know if it had limits or not. I had observed myself to be light, and had observed space to be dark, but I was not sure whether this was right or not because I had also observed space appearing to be light if I shone into it. I had already looked around in space as much as I could from within myself, and had tried to send the will out there to look around. The will had told me that in seeing me from out in space, I did not appear to move. As the will fell in space, she had let me know that she was angry with me that I did not make a move to rescue her. Then she had become terrified that perhaps I did not have the power to rescue her. I had felt like I was moving in space, and yet she had said that I was not. This puzzled me for a long time, until I had realized that if she felt she was falling away from me as much as I had felt I was moving away from her, we must have both moved apart from one another. I had had no point of reference earlier to know if I was moving or not, except that I had a feeling I was. At this point in my reflections, I had a feeling of fear come into me from the will. If space has limits, perhaps we should stop moving. Then she had an immediate rush of guilt that she had given me fear again, and at the same time remembered that she had not liked it when she had stopped moving. I realized now that I had to vibrate to live, and when the will held too still as she had been doing, it did not feel right. I still had a dislike of feeling fear, but I did not like it that the will was being so still in there. The fear at least let me know that something had to be in there whether it was just me or not, but where had it gone? Even though I had been busy in my mind, I had been waiting for the will to respond to me. I had hoped that if she gave any response at all, it would bring her forth again, but it did not, because she still had too much guilt over feeling fear. I did not know then that guilt prevents movement, but I know it now. I gave up on waiting for her and tried to pull her out. This she had aversion to, and shrunk into me even more so that I could not find her. I had a feeling I did not need her if she did not like me. Then she let me know that she did like me. I tried to coax her out some more. I had a feeling it would not work, and it didn't. I hated her for a moment there. She had made me feel powerless and exasperated. I was frustrated, angry, and hurt. The Third Creation In my mind, I had been going on as though she had already emerged. The will was receiving these images of what would happen if she did come forth, and reading them was making her hold back even longer. She did not like everything she saw in the future, and she did not like seeing a future that did not look altogether pleasant to her any more than I did. Since she did not want me to know that she was unable to make herself feel pleasant toward everything she saw, she did not communicate this to me. She wondered what would happen to her if we touched unpleasant places in an emerged state. I also did not like everything I saw, but I did not know how to change it. I told her we'd find a way to have pleasure and avoid the rest. I also had an undercurrent blame for her, because I believed that it was her feelings that made some things unpleasant. She felt that I blamed her, and her guilt increased. Her distrust of me also increased, because I was giving her impressions with which I was not fully aligned. Later you will see how this lack of alignment did not bring things to pass just as I said they would be. The feeling in the will of my inadequacy and powerlessness increased every time my predictions did not manifest exactly as I had planned them. Distrust was increasing in the will toward promises of any kind. Most people are dealing with this distrust in themselves right now on earth, and in some places it has manifested as a feminine revolution because the women have gotten disgusted with how the men have been handling things. The truth of the matter is that, all in all, the women will not do any better than the men because there must be balance between the two, as I have found out. Back then, though, I was just a lonely guy in the sky, trying to figure out how to stay alive and maybe have a relationship if I could figure out how to survive in it. The will, for her part, 
felt it wasn't possible to have me around if I was going to keep treating her the way I had been doing. You must be seeing yourself in me. If you are not, you have not understood how you originated. Now, back to the guy in the sky. I went through some changes waiting on the doorstep, so to speak, for my true love to come out, and she went through some changes inside, looking out at me and wondering if she had been given any choice or not. She had a desire to know if there was anyone else around at the time. We both waited to see if anyone else would show up. I tried to fashion someone else for her, and for myself too, out of essence I found lying around, but it didn't work. As soon as I stopped holding it in place, it slipped back into me. She had no response to this except to laugh at me and hide her fear. I grew angry and exasperated and threw a major temper tantrum right there in front of her. She hid, and I had fear that my anger had ruined everything again. She was afraid that she had angered me, and that I did not love her when I was angry. My anger had included several explosions in the literal sense of the word. Her guilt and then her fear had darkened the light of them until I did not know whether she had more power or I did. I had grown accustomed to myself as light. I was quite fond of my light, and now the will was causing me to fear that she was a dark thing who could even throw darkness into my light. Not only did she now have fear of me, I had fear of her. Neither one of us moved for a long time. I had guilt that I had made her have no more desire for me, and she had guilt that she had made me dark again, and that I didn't like it. I held back as long as I could then, from going after the will again, because I feared I had an impossible situation on my hands. The will held back also for as long as she could. The will still had not told me whether she had had pleasure with me or not, so I was not sure if there was even a reason to go after the will or not. The will wanted another part of my spirit to come forth and be with me, instead of her. She did not feel she was going to be what I wanted, or that she was going to like what was going to happen if she did come forth. Nothing happened for so long that I became quite disconsolate and dim. Loneliness had set in, and I had given into fear and tears before I felt the will move again. It seems that she could not stand to see me suffer the way she had done, especially if she might be the cause of it. She had had to pressure herself a lot in order to remain still all this time. When she did finally move, I pretended not to notice at first. There were many reasons I pretended not to notice the will, which do not need to be listed here, except to say that I did not want to look up and see what was going to come forth now and have a reaction that might stop it. The will had begun to move within me again and began to have a feeling of pleasure again. The will still had fear that it was not right to move, and was only doing it because she could not hold still any longer. She was holding back as much as she could, and did not move very much at first. There were ripples through me, and wiggles here and there, then nothing more for a long time. I hoped it would not be such a long time as it had been before she moved again. Apparently, I encouraged her by appearing not to notice, because she did give in to more movement. Her fear was relieved when I appeared not to notice her, but this did not satisfy her because she had a desire to be accepted exactly as she was and loved. She also had desire for me, but I did not notice it then. Lost Will was not participating in this movement in the will, but I did not know it then. I have understood this now, and that is why I am going into these initial experiences more than I would have thought necessary in the past. In the past... I have noticed what was moving in response to my light, but I have not noticed what was not moving in response to my light. I had a hard time noticing lost will because it did not have light and I could only find it by feeling its presence. Feeling its presence is something I avoided as long as I could. The will had let me know that she did not feel good in places in herself, and when I had tried to find them, I could not. The will then felt guilty, as though there was no basis for her complaints. I have since learned that my light either reflected back to me off the lost will, or the lost will hid from me altogether. Either way, it was a long time before I knew it was really there. 
Now, many have said that it is impossible for God not to know everything, but I have not realized anything without having experience to tell me what it is. I hesitate to say this now, but I had to have my will have an experience outside of me so that I could know what it was like to be without my light. Lost will was without my light, but had desire to receive it. At the time I was having this experience, I did not realize I was having it, for reality is I could not have done it if I had known what I was doing. I had to understand my experience after it happened, because at the time it was happening, I received such a shock from my feeling body that I could not stay present for it. I had no way of knowing, without having my will go outside of me, what it was like to be without light or love present. I had to push my will outside of me and have her feel what it was like to be lost will in space. I had to push my will outside of me on a wave of hate, otherwise there would have been some light and love present to sustain her and she would not have had the experience we needed. I did not know how this would feel to her and when I did feel it, the feeling was so terrible I had to disconnect from her. She had to receive this denial in order to have the experience we needed and in the passionate fury I had worked myself into in order to hate her, I thought I did not care what she had to experience. Later, I realized that this action had increased the lost will tremendously. I did not know whether I could ever heal it or not, and yet I have responded to an instinct in me that knew this experience could not be avoided. Why? Because my instinct knew that I had to know what death was in order to live. I had already experienced growing dim and falling in space, and I did not know why. I did know I had to have light to live, and that I had to know how to sustain it. The will was holding back her emergence, because she already felt that I was going to push her out again. She had such a dread of it that she could not even allow herself to find out whether I really had to do this again or not. She could not stand to feel anything about it, and therefore, I did not receive the full feeling of her experience at that time. It was the best we could do given the circumstances. It was difficult enough to realize we were already fading again, and yet had attachment to continuing, without going into my plan to solve it. We tried to detach ourselves from the desire to go on living. Each of us ignored the other, and ourselves, in an attempt to ignore our existence, our feelings about existence, and our impending death. It was only a matter of time. We both knew it. We told ourselves it was all right. We told ourselves we didn't care. We told ourselves it would be better than the struggle it took to live. We told ourselves we had come into being and we could do it again. This only served to remind the will of the terror she had felt at going back on herself. She begged me to tell her it wouldn't happen anymore. I told her I could not promise her anything, but perhaps dissipation would be less painful than compression. Perhaps we wouldn't feel anything. The will tried not to feel anything. We floated there for unmeasured time, growing more and more dim. We tried to get rid of our desire to live, and could not. The will wished ardently, so ardently, that I regard it as the birth of prayer, for some other chunk of us to come forward and do the job instead of her. In reality, Neither of us could stand to look at the future. The past looked better to me than the dismal prospects ahead. The will didn't want to look at anything. Every time we had a desire for anything other than what was happening, we noticed that we grew more dim. Actually, lost will was increasing, but we did not know it then. The will feared that desire and preference were not right, and she felt guilty that she had preferences. I had great impatience now. I had a great desire to go forth and not be held back by fear that could not be handled. One thing is sure, I told the will. We're going down if we stay here. So come forth and get moving and make me warm again. The will moved somewhat and gave me some warmth and then lay still again in spite of all my entreaties toward her. 
I had just about resigned myself to dying, because I had realized that I had to have the will to survive. I had already tried everything I could to try not to grow dimmer. I could think of nothing more. The will had to move, and it seemed that the will had decided it would be better to die than to have to feel what she would feel if she moved. I had an attack of fury that the will seemed to be free to do as she pleased in spite of my wishes. I wished she did not have that freedom. I thought I had tried everything I knew, but I had not realized I could have tried just loving and wooing her and helping her to desire to come out of me. I did not know that to her. Loving her meant accepting her as she was and helping her to go through her fear first. I thought I had not had time for her fear. I thought we would never move if her fear were allowed to get the upper hand. She was already holding back out of fear anyway, so I finally got the impression from her that I needed to help her with her fear. How? Most of the time I felt like I didn't have fear, only anger at her for having fear. Whenever I allowed my anger, her fear seemed to worsen. I try not to have anger. You should try not to have fear, I told her. She had even more guilt then for having fear. You really are impossible, I told her. Your fear is what's killing us, not my anger. She gave me the feeling then that my anger had caused her fear. I had just felt blame toward her, and now I was feeling guilty about blaming her and angry that she blamed me. I hated her for that and for not letting me live. She hated me for not allowing her fear, not because she had a good time feeling fear, but because she couldn't stand holding it. We turned our backs on one another, so to speak. Each of us felt it was the other's fault that we were not going to live. Neither one of us felt there was any point in making up because we did not know how to save ourselves anyway. I grew very disconsolate and just sat there in abject resignation. I had a grief and could not move it. I could not move anything anymore because the will would not help me move. I had grown more and more dim and did not have much consciousness left. I had feelings of fear now that I had done myself in by not being able to learn how to stay alive. I had a feeling there was nothing else that could help me now. The will had to move or die. I felt frozen and feared the will was not conscious anymore. I had guilt that I had not treated her well and that that was why she wouldn't help me now. No matter what thought I had, there was a feeling of nothing responding to me now. I felt utterly alone. I had given in to death when I felt a movement in my will. It was just a little movement at first, and it had an edge on it of anger and fear that even now I would not really let it move. It had decided to live. I knew it now. No such thing, the will let me know. I just have a terrible time holding still and can't stand it anymore. She gave me a little push to let me know she had anger, as though I didn't already know it. Then I felt her encircle me with her warmth, as though loving arms were around me. I grew warmer than I had been in a long time. The will had intended not to let me know that she wanted to live in case I might push on her before she had a chance to grab me. I was weeping with relief and tried not to let her see it. She hoped that she could avoid going outside of me by claiming she did not care if we lived or died. I held my breath, not wanting to make her give in to death instead of living. She continued to wrestle with her fear of emerging. Her dilemma was literally causing her to twitch and wiggle and shake inside me. I began to get warm. I had a desire to laugh. My first laugh. I held it in for fear of scaring her with another explosion, as I did not know how a laugh would express. She felt me laughing anyway, and was afraid I was laughing at her fear, until I told her that I was laughing at us. When I gave her this understanding, she gave in to more wiggling, and I gave in to laughing. I realized that she had partially emerged and that the rest of her was still wrestling with her dilemma about it. I had a desire to let her know she was already partially emerged, but thought better of it. I had a feeling now that I had to hold still and let her move however she was going to move, but holding still was not possible for me anymore either. 
I had millions of realizations rushing through me now. I cannot mention now all the realizations that burst upon me then, but I would like to mention some that need to be looked at now. I felt I was now going to get to have the relationship that I had had it in mind to have. I sought to make the will happy this time, and to not frighten her into not moving. At the time, I did not realize the importance this judgment against myself was going to have as time went on. Already I did not feel I could let myself be spontaneous with my feelings. I did not realize that this attempt of mine to lessen the will's fear of me actually increased it instead, but the will could not find peace with me while sensing that I was holding back. I have guilt now that I had so little faith in myself, but then I had all the feelings that humans have now about getting to have a mate and a relationship and no longer having to be alone. I had great desire not to make a mess of it anymore, and I gave this desire the place of uppermost importance with myself. In advance of experiencing the will in her new emerged state, I judged everything I had thought to be a problem in the past to still be a problem now. I judged all of that behavior to be unloving and literally shoved it aside. When I had done this, I looked toward the will in expectation of having her love me for it. I found beside me a huge golden light that encircled me in her arms, and I took this as a sign, although I later found it was not a sign, for the will had no love of my denials. At that time, I had desired to overlook this, and she did also, because we had had such a long and difficult time achieving enough balance that the will even could emerge. We wanted to go on now, and we feared that looking at any problems might put us right back where we had been. I asked her how she had gotten herself out of me without being pushed, and she responded by saying that she had been pushed on. But, she said, it was a gentle shove this time. I told her I had not done it. She wanted to know then if I thought someone else was in there. I told her we would find out, but now was not the right time. Now, I said, I want to celebrate our renewed friendship and the balance that has finally brought you forth. I have pleasure in mind. I pulled her to me and began to feel her as I had done so long ago. She was soft and warm and glowing. She felt good, and she let me know that I felt good to her also. She told me I was cooling like a breeze, which she welcomed because she had grown too hot within me. She warmed me, and I cooled her, and our emotions began like a rippling dance in an ocean of rainbows. She was like an ocean of golden liquid light, and I was rippling through her with an excitement I had not known for a long time. We allowed ourselves to float within it, to move it and be moved by it. The more we allowed ourselves to open to it, the more pleasure we had, until finally we had a large and intense burst of prolonged pleasure. Then I did not have a name for an explosion of pleasure, but I have since called it orgasm. We floated high within it, feeling as though we were moving upward in one another's arms. I realized that we both had eyes streaming with tears of joy and relief that we were healing us in their soothing waters. Our tears streamed down and fell away from us, cleansing us and making us new again. I had a feeling that it would never end now. The increase in our light was tremendous. Perhaps we had found the way to live. We floated together in the light, full of the realization that we were one, and yet not, because we had each other now. We drifted for a length of time I do not really know, and then the will began to move again. This time, she had a feeling of needing to move closer to me, and she wanted me to hold her. I took her in my arms and made love to her this time by giving in to her feelings and responding to them. She had feelings I had not known before that were more pleasant than what we had already found. She had ecstasy and joy now, and she gave me the same feelings. She had love expanding and opening to my light. She had many nuances of emotion I shall not describe here, but I thrilled her, and she let me know it. She also had an intense lust to know more pleasure, which I did not mind at all. 
there was nothing we knew to hold us back then, because the morals of guilt had not yet stepped forward to tell us it was wrong. The will touched me with such passionate hunger that I almost lost myself giving in to her. Each time I gave in to her, I had intense pleasure, and each time I emerged with more light than I had had going into her. The will was growing bigger and brighter also, which I had not noticed at first. She had such a lovely light, so golden and warm and full of colors. Sometimes she was still and limpid, and sometimes she gave me a feeling of effervescence. She could be a warm bath. She could shower me with love. She gave me both calm and excitement, and I began to see things in response to how she made me feel. I saw her as a woman now, of great beauty in my eyes, but the ways I envisioned her form changed quickly. If she was holding me, I saw her as though her arms became wings as we began to soar. I had an internal vision in which her wings had feathers that became streaming flames of colors as we flew. Colors changed with our feelings, and I began to associate some colors with warmth and others with coolness. Sometimes when we would be flying very quickly, she would roll over in flight and hug me very tightly as we soared downward into the night. There was always a little more terror in her then than I would have liked to feel, and she grew to know it and tried very hard not to be afraid. Our flights did not bring us to the limits of space, and so space had grown huge in our minds, making us feel like small lights in a vast darkness. We had found no other light in all of our travels, nor anything that felt alive except us. We had a great desire to find someone else by now, and had not. I suggested that we should not look outside of ourselves any more, but should go inside and see if there was anyone else in there. The will immediately got grumpy on me, and wanted me to know without having to tell me that she had fear I might find someone else in there to love better than I loved her. The will had feelings of love for me now that she had not allowed herself to feel earlier. I reassured her that I could not love someone else more than I had already loved her. She did not know if it was her fear or my lack of love, but she was afraid to tell me that she did not wholeheartedly believe me. She had desired to believe me, and so she did not oppose me. She held me in her arms and we made love on the promise that she had emerged first, and she was my mate, and nothing would ever change that. We had balance in mind now, a partnership. Whatever we did had to feel right to both of us, or it was not right. We had a feeling of loving now, intensely bound together by a feeling of needing one another to feel whole. The Emergence of Heart we found so much pleasure floating in one another's arms that we did not feel like moving for a long time. Finally, I felt like we should look inside and see what was going on in there. We decided to go inside together and feel everything that we could find in there. Having gotten to know the will now, I realized that movement had allowed me to know I was alive in the beginning, and if there were other beings inside of me, perhaps movement would help make them aware of themselves also. I had already looked around outside in every way that I knew to do it. I had a feeling that inside lay essence that hadn't moved yet. We had little sense of inside and outside of ourselves than except for the realization that we were light and everything else was darkness. We had found a little more lost will outside of ourselves and had brought it in where it desired to be, but we had found no light of another being outside of ourselves. I had already gone into the will and emerged with more light, but it had stayed with me and had not produced another spirit. The will wondered if her fear of losing me was preventing her from allowing any others to come forth. She also had a desire to please me and a loving intent not to make anything stay inside that didn't want to. I had intent to look around inside now, which I had not really done since my earlier experience, which had led to fear of what I might find. I felt more readiness now and turned my attention inside of myself as I had done in the past. The will opened to receive me and I gave in to the movement and feelings within us. She felt with me and opened to receive the realizations I had to give in response. She helped me to know whether or not something was responding to us by letting me know how it felt within her. 
There were many different speeds of movement within her, and I noticed then that speed had a lot to do with color. I had not been inside for long when I began to have a fear that I could not get out again. Why now when I had not feared it before? I noticed that the will was holding quite still, as though she were holding her breath. Did I have a fear of slowing down? I began to feel pulled on and held on to, as though I were being trapped inside of myself. I felt I had to get free of it, but I did not know what it was. Perhaps it needed help and did not know another way to ask for it. The way I was being grabbed and held on to, I began to fear that whatever it was, it wanted me to stay in there with it. I didn't like the feelings I was having. I pushed on it to let me go, but I could not get free. The will felt fear and guilt now that I didn't like something I had found inside of her. She feared that I was fighting what she had been trying to hide from me. What is it? I asked her. I'm afraid it's everything you don't like about me, she replied. I had touched her now in places she had been trying to hide from me, and she could not hold back her emotions. She shook with fear and openly cried in my arms. I held her for a long time. Finally, I felt a peace in the mother. She let go of me now. Don't go, I felt her say, but she did not say this out loud. I had not moved to leave yet, but she had felt that if she allowed me to pull away from her, I would. Hold me, she cried out suddenly. I took her in my arms, and a huge spirit popped out of her. That's why I have called you mother, I cried. Hart had just emerged, but we did not realize yet that this spirit was Hart. We both looked in wonder at the presence of another being. The mother was so startled that she did not know how to react at first. She had feelings of fear and love all at once. This spirit looked simply huge to us, but we had not realized how huge we had grown. I had to pull out of the mother now and give Hart some help. This new spirit was not looking well and needed some help learning to vibrate on his own. He was both gold and silver, but I instinctively knew that he was a he, nonetheless. He was feeling cold and frightened because the mother had not opened to receive him yet. He was not sure whether he should have emerged or not. The help I gave was to let the mother know that she had to open and receive him, so that he could get warm. Heart felt like beating in a vibration of love, but he could not move yet. I needed to give him something now, too. My acceptance. Once I accepted him, he was able to vibrate himself and hold himself present between the two of us. He felt loving, immensely loving. I realized I was a father now, and that the mother had given birth to another spirit to be present with us. We held him between us and rested for a long time in the loving feelings that his birth had brought forth. Nothing seemed more appropriate than having him with us now. He seemed to balance us and improve our relationship with one another. We felt a great increase in our loving feelings toward one another, and he was not left out. His presence seemed to be love itself. So soft and shimmering was his light that it was exquisite to feel him. We all made love together now, and the increase in our light was tremendous. The mother seemed to have an endless capacity for taking in our light and making more of it than it had been before. It felt wonderful. The three of us frolicked through the heavens in a state of ecstatic joy and lovingness, moving in and out of one another according to how we felt we had our best balance at any given time. We enjoyed flying and now even free-falling in space. The mother did not seem to be afraid as long as she had us with her. She always hung on tight, though, letting me know that she did not want me to let her go. We had learned to move in other ways now also. We had feelings of flying upwards and sideways, of rolling, and of moving in spirals, dips, swerves. Colors changed with our feelings, but Hart was already glowing a rose pink most of the time. I had internal visions of how we looked, but I could not get outside of myself to see it. To me... We looked like balls of light with flames of many colors streaming forth. At times, sparkling light fell away from us, which frightened the mother, 
until she saw that this light continued to sparkle for as long as we watched it and was still there whenever we looked for it. At times we experienced great explosions of colored light. I had many questions about what was happening to us. I had realized that our son was our heart and that he represented the balance between us. Heart helped me to realize and understand many things. Heart gave us input that only Heart could give, because he was the balance between the father and the mother, or, in other words, between the spirit and the will. I found myself consulting with Heart more and more, because he could give me the balance I was seeking. The mother also had a great love for Heart and wanted to be with him. I was glad. I felt we had a little family now. I felt we had a new role as parents in which we needed to give a lot of our attention to the child we held between us. As Hart received from us, his light grew so quickly that he seemed no longer a child once he got used to being emerged. As he grew, I felt drawn to be with him more than with the mother. He and I shared visions and realizations of so many things that I did not think the mother could really enjoy with us because her emotional nature did not allow her mind to follow us. If she had an averse reaction to anything we were doing, she could not follow the rest. Hart and I had great excitement about a lot of things she did not seem to care much about. She began turning away from us to feel her moods, turning back to us when she felt interested again. We were busy looking around at what was happening within our light and understanding it. We were seeing forms within us that had begun to talk to us as though they had a life of their own. We listened to them and felt they had to have a voice in how we lived our life, but we did not know how we were all going to get along together. Once these voices began to speak their minds, it did not look possible for us to have agreement on all things such as I thought the mother and I had achieved. My son loved all of them and had a strong feeling that love could make everything all right. He was giving me images of how we could have a big family and move space back for it. He was sure we could make everyone a place in which they could be happy. He felt that loving interdependence would allow us all to help one another and be independent at the same time. Hart felt no one should be held back if there was a desire to come forth. Hart, however, had some guilt that was unrecognized at the time for having emerged first and this guilt made him more ready to give in to the needs of others than he would have been had he been balanced in this area. At that time, Hart did not realize how much evolution was going to be necessary before his vision could be fulfilled. I had Hart's vision, so I could not see how much evolution was involved either, but I also had some reservations about the rosy picture Hart was painting. I knew that something was wrong, because I felt the mother less and less present with us now. I could see her turning her attention out into space and brooding. Sounds good, I could hear her thinking, but feeling it and liking it is not going to be as easy as your vision is making it look. The mother did not like it that we had not sought her input more often. She felt that we had gone ahead without her into so many of our visions that now she really might not be able to follow them. She knew that she did not like a lot of what she felt around our work, but she could not argue with us on the practical points. She could not tell us why she felt as she did. She just knew she did not feel altogether good about the way creation was going to go, if it unfolded according to the picture's heart and I already had. In the end, her uncertainty allowed guilt to get the upper hand with her, and she gave in to us without being able to make us understand why she felt as she did. Hart had also been noticing that the mother could not stay present with us. Hart had not envisioned the mother having the feelings she was having now. He felt guilty about her lack of interest in what was going on between us, but he also felt it was right to go ahead with the manifested creation. The mother did not like it that everything had to emerge through her, but she too had love in her essence and knew that it was right to allow creation to come forth. She felt jealous of heart and spirit because we had the role of conceiving and she had the role of doing. 
She stamped her foot and said that she did not like the role we had envisioned for her, or the image we had of how she was supposed to fulfill it. She said that we did not know what it was going to be like. She got angry, but she also feared her role because she knew it was not going to be the fun we kept telling her it was going to be. Hart tried to reassure her that loving balance could be reached, but she knew more than he did about what was going to be involved in reaching it. The mother could not understand why we had not included her more and why it could not feel better than it felt. Hart and I could not see her point of view then, because we were not really feeling everything, as we found out later. We were so excited by the visions of spirits and planets and so forth that we considered the mother a drag on our speed when she wanted us to feel details that didn't seem important then. When we did not open to her point of view, guilt began telling her that she might be the cause of the negativity she saw, since Hart and I did not see it the way she did. The mother held back her feelings during our preparatory discussions because she felt we were not pleased with her response. She had tried to change herself by letting her feelings move on her own, but after all her efforts, she said she still felt the same as she had felt in the beginning. Hart and I had a way of envisioning that moved faster than she felt she could go, and that left her feeling out of place. She also said that some things we had envisioned felt so bad to her that she could not imagine doing them at all. She had guilt for feeling the way she did, but still, she could not see how moving through it could feel the same to her that envisioning it had appeared to feel to us. She blamed herself, fearing that it was because of her that creation was going to go the way it was going to go. She feared she was not the right mother, and she had feelings of wanting another spirit to come forth and replace her. She had fear that she could not do the job and live through it, but her attachment to me also did not want to give way to another mother to replace her. She struggled with this for a long time and even had a desire to go off alone, but could not bring herself to be separated from me. She finally wept and begged me not to go ahead without feeling her first. We had not made love for a long time because I had been so busy with heart. She had a desire for me to hold her now and feel her and let my love and light pour into her. She also feared that doing this might bring forth another spirit, whether she felt a readiness for it or not. Her fear, though, was not great enough to suppress her desire for me, and so she tried to be with me without letting another spirit come forth until she felt ready for it. Fear and guilt did not have the power to make her hold back what was moving in her now. She moaned and cried in my arms with the realization of what was going to happen. Looking at her from the point of view of spirit, it was hard for me to see what she was so upset about. I asked her if she did not want to have spirits come forth and be with us. She said that she did, but that she did not want to be separated from me. I do not understand what you mean, I told her. I thought that you had been as present with me as you wanted to be. You do not understand, she told me. I want to feel you loving me. I do love you, I responded, and Hart loves you too. Then why don't I feel it? She asked me. Why do I feel that I'm just sitting around waiting for you to have time for me? I have been waiting for you to receive me. I hesitated to feel that heart could be an interference in my life with the mother, but perhaps it was true. I knew I could not give up what Hart and I were able to do together. I felt resentment toward the mother that she could not just give us that space in good spirits. She wondered why we could not find time to include her in our process, but she sensed our response to her and felt too frightened and guilty to press us further. There now, I told her. All you need to do is trust in me and let me know if I am ignoring you too much. The mother was somewhat placated by this, but more than anything, she quieted down because she feared that she had not really let me know how she felt and that she was being too possessive of me. The will had a desire for me to want her without her having to ask, and she did not want to have to say this. She also felt enraged about the way she was being treated 
and she did not express it because she was afraid it was unloving of her to be angry. She did not like my attitude, but she especially feared the feeling of resenting her own child. Hart felt all of these things in the mother along with me. Hart felt he had not been made aware that the mother felt he was, at times, in the way of her relationship with me. He did not know how to feel at first because his guilt was in the way now. He had been as enthusiastic as I had been about our work together, and yet he did not want the mother to feel left out. None of us knew then that simply expressing ourselves to the end of how we felt would have made the difference in how everything went from that point on. We had not understood that emotions could evolve if they were freely felt and expressed. Then. We believed our situation would become impossible if we did not find ways to give in to one another. Hart and I began to make more of an effort after that not to leave the mother out, and still, she never felt sure that we really wanted her. The mother had such great beauty in my eyes that I could not help but look at her most of the time. It was easier, though, for me to feel Hart's feelings because Hart had the balance I needed. Hart was just allowing me to feel the balance of spirit and will, but I did not realize it then, nor did I understand how the process of attaining this balance took place. I wanted the mother to also let herself feel Hart more, instead of always having to feel me. The mother did not like this, and even felt that I wanted her to feel Hart more in the hope that she would become more like him. She began to feel even more displaced and inadequate. The mother had a desire to be with both of us all the time and did not want to be with one or the other of us. She did not know how this was going to be possible if she was so disinterested in what we were doing. She feared she was being self-centered to want more attention focused on her. She complained of pains within her that she said she could not move without her. And these pains were the places my light was not touching her, but we did not realize it then. The mother felt guilty that she complained so much of the time. We have had to have a lot of experience to finally understand what was causing these feelings in the will. All the mother could tell me then was, I need to be touched in here. I need loving hands here. I would go in and find her pain. It would be gone when I touched it, and yet I did not realize why. I would withdraw and she would have pain again immediately, and yet I did not know why. I feared the way she held on to me in there and thought that I could not stay manifested as myself if I remained more within the mother than I already was. Guilt told the mother that she was just having pain to get my attention, and so she held back until she couldn't stand it any more. All the way along, the mother held back more than anyone realized because guilt told her it was wrong to express what others did not want to receive. Lost Will has been holding all that was held back, including the anger the mother had toward me. The Emergence of the Father of Manifestation In spite of our held back feelings, what happened next was not wrong. The part of me that has known it was not wrong has struggled with the part of me that could not align with it ever since it happened. I was flooded with emotions that I denied at the time, because I judged these feelings to be out of alignment with the understanding that I did have. I have not seen how to balance the two points of view within myself until now, when I can finally heal them. The mother had desire for a lover that would hold her all the time and never let her go. She wanted it to be me, but did not see how it could be me since I had not demonstrated any innate talents in this direction. She had guilt that she had such a strong desire for a continuous loving contact, but she could not quiet her desire. She had tried me many more times than I had even realized, without being quite direct about it, because she had wanted me to take the initiative so that she could know I really desired her as much as she desired me. I seemed to her to be all too satisfied with heart and too ready to let her needs go unnoticed. She feared I thought she was too trivial and that I did not want to concern myself with her when Hart and I were poring over matters of the spirit. The mother watched Hart and myself for a long time before she made her move. 
Hart and I were involved in the weighty matters of how to create, without overriding the essence involved, while the mother stared out into space and longed for a lover that would understand her, and have the desire and ability to fulfill even her unspoken needs. She had a sad longing within herself because she did not know where such a lover could come from. She felt he could not be her child, and there was no one out in space that we had found. She feared she was wrong to have this longing and tried to hide it from me, but she called for this lover from her heart. I felt the movement of his emergence, but I did not look up. Hart had told me that this was an emergence that needed to come forth now. Hart and I were busy anyway, and felt it was not necessary to see what the mother was going to do with him. Lost Will holds this now in the form of not looking at reality, but being flooded with inner pictures instead. I was terrified that I had not done right by the mother, and did not allow those feelings to move at the time. I was also angry that the mother did not love me enough to wait for me. Lost Will has the feelings I did not move then in the form of believing the man should not let the woman know how he feels, no matter how hard it is to hold the feelings back. Hart told me it was going to be all right and that I should not allow my feelings to get in the way of his emergence, because he had an important role to play. Lost Will here is not yet sure whether I can heal it or not. It has been holding the fear that I am not adequate for the job of God and cannot do everything that needs doing all at once. There are many more things in the lost will around this emergence, but I'm going to bring them forward as they become more relevant to the unfolding story. Now I have acceptance for this emergence, who was the father of manifestation or my own body, but then my emotions could not understand why he had to come forth and make me feel threatened. I didn't recognize him as my body then. Then, I just saw his huge size and felt diminished in his presence, which was a feeling I did not like. This new emergence looked as though he could envelop us all. His light was dazzling. He had the soft, warm gold of the mother and the silvery white light I had become. Not only that, he had the colors heart had begun to glow, and in addition, a brilliant rainbow of colors arched over him. He was beautiful. I was awestruck. He has the power to make form come forth, I heard Hart tell me. I looked at the mother, and she avoided me, because she was afraid of how I might react to this. I was flooded with fear myself that she thought I was not enough for her, and did not want to tell me. I brushed these feelings aside in favor of welcoming a newcomer. Lost will got the fear. The mother allowed the father of manifestation to present himself to me without accompanying him because she was still not sure of me. She and this new emergence had made love as soon as he came forth, and she was not sure if I knew it or not. Of course I knew it, just as I really did know everything that had happened, but I had not allowed it into my conscious mind. At that time, I did not want to know because it felt too overwhelming to me. I feared that the mother loved him more than she loved me, and I was greatly relieved when she joined us and gave me a loving response for my acceptance of him. I hated her for trapping me in this, and lost will got the hatred. I did not let them know how I felt. I even held back from Hart on this. Hart noticed this right away and felt some guilt that he had not correctly ascertained the effect this emergence was going to have on me. We can't manifest the creation without him, I heard Hart telling me. It will be all right, you'll see. Hart did not seem at all perturbed, which gave me a passing annoyance with him. I became ashamed of myself and began rushing aside more of my feelings of inadequacy and fear that I was not needed anymore. I listened to Hart tell me how we would be brothers and how we would all love the mother together. That part sounded ludicrous to me. Why only one mother, I found myself thinking now. I had hoped for an emergence that would be a mate for my son. I had fears around the balance here that went into the lost will and became original cause for many gay men. They have no joy in themselves, but at least they can be gay. 
I watched my son to see how he treated this new manifestation. They treated one another very lovingly, but were not openly sexual. I had fears about what might be happening when I was not looking now. I accused myself of having the morals of a prude. If Hart had desire for another man, it was not my place to tell him how he should behave. I did not allow myself to realize yet that the mother had actually called for this lover and that Hart had not been responsible for calling him forth. I could have known all of this if I had not been afraid to feel it then, but I did recognize that Hart felt more open now that the father of manifestation had appeared, and I wondered why. I also had understanding that the mother now had someone to help her with the manifestation. I continued to feel uneasy, but Hart kept reassuring me that when he and I were busy with the mother of everything, as Hart called her now, and the father of manifestation had work to do on the without. This gave me a suspicion that went into the lost will, that Hart and I were gay. I resolved to watch everything more closely so that I could know the truth, but I did not have the focus I needed at that time to know everything at once. I have since developed much more mastery over this, but I still have lost will to heal that did not want to look at everything. Lost will is massive in this area, as you can tell by the reflection of how many people there are who do not want to know everything that is really going on. At that time, Hart and I still felt much of our attention being drawn inward. We wanted to get to know all that was within me that wanted to manifest. We were having a lot of fun looking within and discovering so many things that were not out in creation yet. As Hart and I grew acquainted with what lay within me, we began to feel the need to know more about how to manifest it. Many things within did not have voices. They had only the sounds of their own vibrations. I sensed that they were not spirits in the same sense that the voices were. There was a different feeling about their mass also. This essence had to become planets and stars, but I did not know what they had to do to come forth. I did not want to push anything and risk having it fall in space, as the mother had originally done. I had been pondering this for quite some time when I noticed that the mother had been trying to get my attention. She complained that I was ignoring her again, and that I had not been making love to her. She said she had realized that what had to happen could not be held back, but she wanted to have my love to help her through it. She had a strong desire to make love and had been holding back for quite some time waiting for me. I felt guilty again then that I had not included the mother more in what Hart and I had been doing. She answered me before I spoke, saying that she did not want to be involved that way. She wanted to make love the way we used to. I want to play. I want to move. I do not want to sit around thinking all the time, she told me. I had a feeling that I did not know all that the mother had been doing while I had been so busy within myself. I suspected she had been making love with the other spirit that Hart had called my brother, but I was not sure. She had such a desire for me now that I did not want to know just then whether she had or not. I pushed more of my fears about my relationship with both of them into a state of denial, just as they were doing with their fears about Hart and I. We had just given manifestation to the four parts of the one and only God there is, but we did not know it. We had already become fearful, angry, and jealous toward one another. When guilt told us it was unloving to express these feelings, we denied having them. Guilt was already telling us we should not be having the relationship we were having with one another, and fear kept us from bringing these feelings forward. Each of us feared that working our situation out might not mean it would work out the way we wanted it to. At that time, it seemed easier to try to ignore our problems. Heart, body, and I all feared the mother would choose another if she had to settle for one of us. The mother feared there was something wrong with her that she did not want another will spirit to be present with us in the ways that she was. We all had fear that it was not right to make love altogether. I feared I was inadequate, or the mother wouldn't have that other spirit, and that other spirit feared it was not right for him to be with the mother since I had been with her first. Hart was also interested in the mother, but felt like a son that received her and did not feel he could fulfill her without my presence. The mother had desire for spirit, 
heart, will, and body to be together as one, but she feared it might be wrong of her to want all of us to herself, and so she did not want to suggest it. Instead, she hoped one of us would mention it. We had no understanding as to why we had these fears, but they nagged us continually. All of these feelings and more were under currently present with us when the mother approached me this time. We wanted to forget about all of it for a while because she felt we could not understand. She began to stroke me now, saying that she wanted to feel as she had felt when it was only she and I. She pulled on me, and I took a hold of her. She wanted me to touch her pains again. I had resistance to this at first, but then I remembered I had had the greatest pleasure when I had made her feel good first. I touched her and found more places of pain in her than I had ever found before. I didn't know why, but I wanted to blame the father of manifestation for this. I also felt a blame toward the mother that she allowed this pain to build and now wanted me to heal it. I felt like she was trying to hold me responsible for her pain. I did not like feeling any of these things, and it seemed as though mentioning them might only make matters worse. The mother felt guilty here and was trying to arouse passion in me in an effort to get me to overlook what we were feeling. I allowed her to succeed because I did have feelings of love for her which I could not overlook any more. I plunged into her and she let me know she loved it by exploding in light. She felt delicious to me and I had light in every place I could find in her now. Instead of guilt, I was now feeling immense relief that she still loved me and could still respond so delightfully to my advances. She opened to me like never before, and we felt ourselves expanding in light until we had to explode in the happiness of it. I knew that heart was present, but I did not let myself realize at the time that body was also present. I was feeling so much joy and release in the expanding light that I did not look around to see where the father of manifestation was. The mother was thrilled and exhilarated, and lifted higher than I had ever seen her before. I felt as though I had done it until I realized that heart had affected her also. I then felt ashamed of my feelings of wanting the mother all to myself. I felt a rush of guilt that I, not only did I have those feelings, but I also wanted her to wait for me and not open to others in this way when I was not around. The mother would have loved it if I had come forward with this and made her feel wanted, but I did not tell her because at that moment I realized that our great ecstasy was not just due to the presence of heart. The father of manifestation, I now realized, was with us also. I really had fear then that I was no longer enough for the mother. I feared that I could not accept having the father of manifestation going into the mother at the same time that I was. And yet, Body was there with us because he felt he could not miss it. Even though he was unsure whether his presence was accepted or not, he had gone into the mother and had not come out when she had come to me. The mother felt ashamed and guilty that she had deceived me by not letting me know the father of manifestation had presence within her, and the father of manifestation was afraid he had felt desire that was not right. Hard to let me know that the Father of Manifestation had been present with us long before he manifested, and I knew this to be true. Nonetheless, I had feelings that were not at peace, and also a preference for ignoring these feelings because I did not like them. The mother already had desire to get everything out in the open and make light of it, so to speak, but she was afraid of displeasing me and did not feel she could dare try to prevail over me. She had felt me already, and so remained quiet for fear that an attempt to work it out might not bring the resolution she wanted. The father of manifestation did not like feeling afraid of me, and so he got angry at me instead, and told me that it was not right to feel like excluding him now that he had emerged, since he had been present all along. He said he wished he had not manifested if it meant that now he was going to be left out. He took the mother and stomped off without allowing me to answer him. I felt guilty now that I had been unloving toward him, and I felt as though I should share the mother with him, 
even though I had feelings that were not aligned with this. I went after them to make peace. I told them that Hart had given me the understandings I needed, but I was having trouble accepting them. Will and Body said that they were having trouble also, and that they did not understand why there was only one feminine manifestation. Hart beamed his presence upon us, and we reached alignment at that time. The Emergence of the Planets and Stars of the Central Universe We found ourselves lovemaking again, and many planets and stars burst forth from the explosions of pleasure that we experienced. We had a desire to go forth and see them then, to make sure they had a reason to be out there and were not mistakes that had desire to come back in. It seemed natural to begin by visiting the closest stars and planets first, and then moving outward in a progression. Our initial experiences took place in what has been referred to by some as the central universe. These planets had a lot of light, and we had a wonderful time there. Feeling the planets was not hard, because they began responding to us. We found light in many colors that had feelings of many kinds. It was not only emotional feelings now, but sensations also. The Emergence of the Ancient Ones that Serve the Light We felt fluttering feelings that intensified into orgasm and found ourselves surrounded by winged creatures. These first spirits were very large creatures. We had ancient ones now, the first order of spirits to emerge. They had great wings and hoary faces. Light streamed forth from their heads like hair dancing in the current of the ethers, almost as though having life of its own. Eyes looked back at us now, great deep eyes that saw everything and had the reflection of it to give. These great creatures began fighting almost immediately about who had emerged first. The mother had immediate guilt that she had made this happen, although she could not say how. We finally got them to line up and show us what each of them had experienced. Once we saw what they had all experienced, we could see that although there was a progression, they had emerged as a group, and not one at a time as we had. There were twenty-four in the original order of ancient ones that served the light, but these spirits are very fragmented now, so there appear to be many more. When these spirits originally emerged, they had just enough room to move around on their planet without getting in one another's way. The Ancient Ones had a desire to get smaller even then, and we had a desire to make them more space. Even though we got them to settle down and stop fighting, the Ancient Ones still had undercurrents that made them feel they could not remain in the forms in which they had emerged. The Ancient Ones had guilt that they had emerged looking so much like us, but at that time, they were not aware that they had guilt. They had, in fact, been sitting within us, looking out at us, and saying to themselves how much better life would be without guilt. They had resolved to emerge without guilt, and were sure they had succeeded. Only now are they realizing that they got rid of their guilt by shoving it out of themselves, leaving it to find a home wherever it could. The Ancient Ones had a reflection to give us then that we did not recognize at the time. It was the reflection of how our judgments thought it would look to be without guilt. We were horrified by their lack of concern over what happened to others. These spirits were very self-serving, big, and bright. As much as we enjoyed having company around us now, we also could not help but feel that they had perhaps grabbed too much light for themselves a guilt we later had to realize we also had. The Ancient Ones said that they had emerged to have fun, and they did not like to be interfered with. They had appetites for more experience, and they intended to have it now. They began to romp around us in a ring, teasing us that we could not move past them unless they allowed it. They were claiming to have, as a group, more power than we had. We did not know if their claim was true or not, and we had fear that we had created something that we did not like. The Ancient Ones then claimed that we did not create them. They said that they had godlike powers, 
and that they had created themselves. I knew that they had not created themselves, but I had some guilt that it was not right of me to have become so attached to being God. I felt that I was wrong to have this attachment. I also did not like the way these ancient ones felt. Their guiltlessness had a hardness to it that I did not feel to be loving. I had not realized that they were reflecting to me my own picture of how I feared a God without guilt would be. I had a feeling that I could not allow them to seize power over me. We had a great fight there in the beginning, during which I had to depend on the Father of Manifestation much more than I would have liked if I really was God. I felt that I had been there first. I had gone through a lot to get where I was, and I did not want to allow anyone to stop me from fulfilling the plans Hart and I had spent so long working out. I had plenty of fear as to what I would be like if the Ancient Ones gained control. I had a great desire to win this battle. Hart did not battle. He stood by and shone love on the situation. Body stood by me like the brother that Hart said he was. The mother grew enraged at these new spirits, and when she gave them her rage, the Ancient Ones moved back. This was the first time I really saw how powerful emotion could be. The Ancient Ones fluttered before the mother like leaves in a wind. The mother did not allow herself to rage for long when she saw what it could do, because her guilt stopped her. As soon as she stopped raging, these spirits had a desire to get away from her, but they could not move. Somehow, she was holding them magnetized in place. Since this time, the Ancient Ones have learned to love the Mother, but it took them a very long time, and they still have much lost will that still holds the hatred they originally felt. Mother both frightened them and commanded their respect, but they did not love her for a long time. The Ancient Ones were furious that they were not God, and they have had a lot of karma to work out in order to accept the position of close companions instead. The Ancient Ones have all worked on their original cause and their spirit vibration that is not on Earth, but they have a lot of lost will on Earth, including spirit-polarized lost will that has not yet been healed and balanced. Once the Mother again allowed the Ancient Ones to move, they resumed their emergence pattern. They had felt power as a group in this pattern, and returning to it gave them the strength to feel that they could tell us they had no guilt over what they had done. They said that they felt they were right and not wrong, and that they had counsel to give. In fact, they told me that God would be better as a counsel than as three men fighting over one woman. The Ancient Ones had counsel to give all right, but it was not the counsel they thought it was. The reflection they had given me of myself has been the most important teaching I have received from them. At the time, the Ancient Ones gave me these original reflections, I denied them, and thus did not gain the understandings at the time. I denied the reflection then because I did not think it was possible that all I could see were reflections of myself. Guilt told me it was egotistical to think that spirits could only reflect me. I was ready to believe it was not just my reflection that I saw because I did not like everything I saw. I had an image of myself as God at that time that did not include acting as these spirits had done. Lost will is healing this now. These spirits had challenged my position as God, and I had wanted companions instead. Guilt made me feel that I should not hold back another spirit from being God, if that spirit could do a better job than I could. I did not want the Ancient Ones to get my job, but I felt that I had to open to the possibility that I might get replaced as God. Self-doubt I had doubts now. Perhaps I had not created myself. Perhaps I had just come forward from the vastness in the same way that other spirits were now going to come forth. In the same way I had originally feared that I only thought I existed, I now had some fear saying that I may just have thought I created myself and everything else. 
For a long time I held on to the idea that another god might come forth, and even tricked myself into believing that this was actually happening. In the beginning I had had the understanding that I am God, and that I created everything. But I had to go through a cycle of guilt and doubt, during which I feared that I had deluded myself. It was my delusions of grandeur, paranoia phase. I could not allow myself to feel certain I was right to be God until I had experienced the possibility of God in other spirits. At the time, I had denial in this area that did not allow me to recognize what was actually taking place. There was so much movement in my consciousness that I did not even realize how I was handling some things. They were just handled before I even noticed them. The healing I mean to bring to earth now is of the lost will that received everything I did not understand in myself at that time. Then, I did not have intent to notice some things because I had fear I could not handle them. I did not know I had this intent to avoid, and I did such a good job of avoiding myself here that I did not even realize that I had fear motivating me. Then, I was a roaring nebulous of light, unsure if everything was me or not. Already, I had spirits near the center of the nebulous telling me that they had intent to be God instead of me. We had searched the without, and I had already gone into the mother so many times that I thought I knew her. I thought I knew myself, and yet, to take place, they wanted to have a democratic council and hold meetings about how it was going to be. I wanted to make love and let it happen. Hart said we needed a balance and he would help find it. Hart thought we could not all meet at once anyway because everyone had too much to say. Hart thought committees would be good. The mother could not stand to be present for any of these latest discussions. She felt it was unendurable enough that Hart and I had already gone through it and figured it all out. It made her furious that suddenly here were a bunch of upstart spirits acting like we did not know what we were doing. Her guilt over raging at them almost immediately upon their emergence caused her to stand present and act interested and open-minded when this was not what she was really feeling. She heard more than she wanted to hear until it gave her a desire to go off someplace and not return. The Ancient Ones had denied the mother in the beginning anyway and had challenged only myself and the father of manifestation. The mother felt that these spirits did not see her as a valid part of God. The mother was still feeling both hurt and enraged at these spirits' rejection of her, and this was a large part, once again, of her desire to go off and not return. She wanted to rage at the Ancient Ones once more, but guilt was telling her that this would not be loving, and that she might not be right. The father of manifestation also had a desire to go forth and get away from these spirits, but he did not tell me at the time. He tried to act in a manner he deemed to be reasonable, and so he sat and listened to these spirits more than he really wanted to. Our false attention span gave these spirits an exaggerated sense of their own importance and profundity. I stayed longer than the father of manifestation, though he had feelings for the mother that he could not hold back for long. He took to carrying her off and making love to her while I was sitting in council meetings with the ancient ones. I had feelings that it was not right to be sitting there instead of going ahead with what I wanted to do, but I had guilt holding me back. Guilt told me it was selfish not to give time to the ancient ones. I had a judgment now that guilt was giving me. I had impatience with these children and I had realized that they were children who thought they knew better than their parents. Guilt told me it was unloving to be impatient with them. Guilt said that I did not have time for others, and that I preferred to indulge my own selfish interests instead. Sexual interests, in fact. Guilt also said that having sex was just going to get me more children when I was not even willing to do right by the ones I already had. I had a furious reaction to guilt then. An overkill reaction, guilt told me later. I stood up, taller than I ever remembered standing before, and gave the ancient ones a lecture they have never forgotten, 
although they have lost will still trying to prove me wrong. I told them that they were not God, but that they only thought they were. I told them that it was clear to me that they were only children meddling in the affairs of adults, and that while they thought they knew how to create, they had to realize that they had only formed things with essence that already existed. They could not create the essence itself, and so I told them they had to admit they were one step removed from the source. The ancient ones had fear of me now, but they also had a desire to challenge me. I had a desire to go forth and not be held back anymore. I felt that I had to join the mother and the father of manifestation. They had been holding back orgasm hoping I would join them. In spite of my feelings that it might not be right, I could no longer hold myself back. I no sooner joined them than we had a great explosion of light. Space filled with many more stars than were already there. We had a great loving feeling that we felt could not be wrong, but we also had a desire to make sure. We had a great soaring joy now that we had gotten release. There was more light than before, and also more speed. The Democratic Council Guilt told me that if these spirits wanted to be God, they should have a chance to try it out. So I sat down and listened to these new spirits. I let them tell me how they wanted creation to take place. They wanted to have a democratic council and hold meetings about how it was going to be. I wanted to make love and let it happen. Hart said we needed a balance and he would help find it. Hart thought we could not all meet at once anyway, because everyone had too much to say. Hart thought committees would be good. The mother felt that these spirits did not see her as a valid part of God. The mother was still feeling both hurt and enraged at the spirit's rejection of her, and this was a large part, once again, of her desire to go off and not return. She wanted to rage at the Ancient Ones some more, but guilt was telling her that this would not be loving, and that she might not be right. The Father of Manifestation also had a desire to go forth and get away from these spirits, but he did not tell me at the time. He tried to act in a manner he deemed to be reasonable, and so he also sat and listened to these spirits more than he really wanted to. Our false attention span gave these spirits an exaggerated sense of their own importance and profundity. The Approach of the Mind versus the Approach of the Intuition We wanted to go forth, and we wanted to go forth in an orderly manner so that we did not have the feeling that we had missed anything. The mother felt that we could be orderly and thorough, and yet be guided by our feelings. She felt called from deep in space, and, remembering her own terror, wanted to go first to the manifestations that indicated they were in need of her heart. Body and I felt that we had to go forth in an orderly progression, a little at a time, starting with what was closest to us, or we would not be able to keep track of everything. The mother felt that we did not have that kind of time, in case something out there was in danger of going back on itself. Hart felt that it was not right to hold back if something needed us, but that it was also not right to go forth guided totally by feelings. He said that the mother was remembering her own experience, and that she should not project that onto what was happening now. He said these manifestations had burst forth on our love which was not the same, as the mother's experience of being pushed out before there was even realization that it had been one. Mother, Hart said, you were pushed out by instinct, by impulsive response before consciousness was aware enough to love. You had a loneliness that these stars don't have because we were not present with you. These stars have everything they need because love is present with them. The mother looked out into space and saw that Hart was not wrong but she did not feel that he was totally right, either. She kept feeling that there was something out there calling to her, something that was not happy with its plight. The mother wanted to make us go forth and find out if there was any problem or not, but she feared it was not right to try to prevail when she felt the three of us against her. Hart was making her feel judged against, as though she were only projecting an old experience onto a new one. 
she felt that Hart was telling her she was being overprotective as a mother and worrying herself unduly. Voices echoed within her saying she didn't want to allow anything to go forth. She wanted to keep everything right near her so she could watch over it and protect it, control it, some murmuring said. The mother began to feel unsure that there really was anything calling her from out in space. She no longer felt sure where the weeping and cries of terror were coming from, and she wept herself. Her tears fell in streams that gave birth to the Milky Way. The mother feared it was not right to try to prevail over us in case her fears were wrong, but she could not keep still on the subject without holding back feelings in herself. She stared and stared into space, but could not see anything falling in darkness that did not seem to like it. Maybe the fear is all in me, she thought. Maybe I'm the only one that is afraid of it. She dried her eyes and tried to smile, but her face had fear and uncertainty in it. Hart proposed a compromise that did not sound like a bad idea. He suggested that we visit all the planets and stars in an orderly progression, but in any given area where we already were, we would go first to the ones that indicated they needed us first. The desire to go forth without compromise went into the lost will, because we believed at that time that compromise was necessary to be able to act as a group. We had dismal pictures of how it would go if we did not compromise, and all of them had been acted out by lost will. For example, all four of us had pictures of the fear that the mother might be trying to use emotion to manipulate us. The mother especially feared that she could not express herself freely if it was going to make us feel manipulated. Her feelings of needing to be free with her emotions gave her lost will pictures of the three of us as cold, arbitrary, unresponsive to needs, and given to lecturing about things which we had not experienced. She felt overridden, as though she had to give in to us or she would not get light at all. We gave lost will the feelings that the mother always wanted us to give in more, no matter how much we gave in to her. The mother received these pictures from us and felt guilt that we might be right. The guilt increased the problems she already had. There were other pictures that also flashed between us, but I will not go into them now, because they will be given in other parts of the story. All of these pictures went through us so fast that we hardly realized they were there. The glimmers we did recognize gave us feelings we did not want to feel about ourselves and one another. We hoped that by avoiding these pictures, we would not have to live them. We did not want these pictures to dominate us, and we did not know how to get rid of them except by looking away and focusing into the pictures we did like. Going Forth with Self-Doubt At that time, we focused on going forth to visit all that had manifested outward from us. We had fun in mind and did not want more hassling between us. Going forth was not as easy as it sounds now to someone that has moved from one place to another. We had not done it, and we did not know how. We had rolled around together in a big ball and we had felt as though we were moving, but we had not, up until now, had any point of reference for movement or any place that existed that could be considered a destination. We did not express our fear that maybe we could not do this, and we did not want to look like fools in front of the ancient ones who would have been happy to tell us that we were not successful. Instead, we got together in a ball and rolled around because this had been our earlier manner of moving. We felt that lovemaking was a good beginning anyway. We celebrated having manifested anything at all, we celebrated having more companion spirits. Even if we had had a rough beginning with these new spirits, we also loved them and were thrilled to have their company. The ancient ones had begun to play while we were looking out into space, and it gave us a lot of joy to watch them. They had emerged to play, and they had games already. They began imitating us, and we had to laugh at ourselves. They wanted to go with us when we went forth, but we did not allow them to. They did not want to feel that we were holding them back, but they allowed us to, because they really had more desire to play than to go out and look at what we had already created. The Ancient One's mockery of the mother worryingly looking out into space had made her laugh, 
but she was also afraid she was just being foolish, and she felt guilty that she was even pushing us to go at all. We all felt that it was right to go forth, even if the ancient ones were making fun of us, and so we did not allow their reflection to hold us back. We had feelings we did not know we had that were giving the ancient ones the power to make us question ourselves. We had no desire to give in to their point of view, but we also were having a hard time ridding ourselves of the uncertainty that had arisen in us around their emergence. Lost will has the feelings we did not move then, in the form of people who need the agreement of those around them, to feel that they are right. Now it was time to go forth, if we were going to, and if we did not go soon, we were going to have to admit that we did not know how. We had the desire to go to other planets, and we did not know how to get there. Our first attempts to move toward a specific place did not amount to much, and made us wonder if we had ever moved at all, or if our sensations of movement had only been a rolling in place. The Ancient Ones did not appear to notice our difficulties at first. They were busy playing games that had movement in them. They were having contests and races to see who could move the fastest in the most different ways. Watching them made us feel they had noticed our difficulties and that they were trying to show us that they knew how to move better than we did. The mother did not like having to try everything with the ancient ones watching us. She said she didn't want to look at them making fun of us if it made her feel like they thought we weren't good enough to do the job. It feels like they're just waiting to grab our job away from us, she said. As I watched the ancient ones playing, I realized that we were held back by a feeling we had that there was no place to go. Everything was us and was moving with us. The ancient ones could move freely about within us, but we had the problem of only being able to move towards something if we reached for it with a part of ourselves. I realized that a part of us could go forth and that the rest of us must stay at home. If we went in totality, everything would move with us and we would never get there. We had form now, and our form had various parts. We made up an entity of all the essence that wanted to go forth from each of us. This entity had the same form that we had, light, magnetism, balance, and movement. This entity had very much of the look that people have pictured as God because, in one form or another, this entity is what people have seen when they have seen God. What went forth from us did not have as much essence as I thought it would have. But what there was, was very exuberant in its desire to embark on this adventure. The Emergence of the Great Archangels We had a great explosion of light in response to this excitement. The mother was very embarrassed about having an orgasm over the realization that we were really going to go forth, but she had it because she gave in to me. I had filled her with my own excitement about getting to create at last. When I filled her with light, her response was always orgasmic. She was immediately relieved of her embarrassment by the shock of finding that she had emerged more spirits. These spirits had great speed and light. Each one was slightly different than the others, but nonetheless, they were an order of spirits that I came to call the great Archangels. The Archangels were less in number than the Ancient Ones, twelve originally, but they were greater in power and light. Each one had a mission in creation in relationship to the specialty each one felt himself to have. These spirits did not feel threatening to us, and they had a great joy at having finally emerged. We had a celebration party that included all of the Ancient Ones. Entertainment at this party included each Archangel giving us a display of his particular skills and talents. The Appearance of Lucifer It seemed perfect to us that they had emerged just as we were going forth. We felt like they could help us. We had some guilt about it, but we gave them permission to come with us if they wanted to even though we still did not want the Ancient Ones to come along. We had just settled into our mode of travel, which was flying in groups of four, 
when we were all startled to see an incredibly bright light coming toward us from out in space. We had a mixed response, of joy that there was someone out there who had found us now, and fear that this light might be bigger and brighter than us, and take our position away from us. We turned toward him as he flew toward us. He grew bigger and bigger, until he loomed over us. Lucifer is the name by which he came to be known, but then he was only a light in the heavens of the greatest brilliance we had ever seen. He was so brilliant that it was painful to look at him, but we denied this pain. He introduced himself as another archangel who had gone to take a look around before coming to join us. We did not feel that he fit in with the rest, but we did not feel we should say that, and we did not see where else he fit in either. The mother suggested to me that he might be an ancient one that had been out looking around longer than he thought. She said this because she liked Lucifer even less than she liked them. I didn't think so because he was not like the ancient ones in form. His brilliance was overwhelming to me, and I wondered where he could have come from and who he was. He did not feel loving, but I gave him access to us anyhow, because I was reluctant to judge him so quickly. I was beset with the secret horror that my desire to create was already not working out the way I wanted it to. I wanted to be able to love what manifested from me. I was not alone in my feelings. The mother hated him already, and he hated her. We did not realize then what was happening to us, but we allowed guilt to make us pretend to like him when we should not have even allowed him to hang around. He in turn pretended to like us because he felt he could not have power over anyone if there was no one else around, and he wanted to be God in my place. Hatred was manifested then. When Lucifer finished studying us, he moved to the place he claimed was his point of emergence. It was at the head of the Order of the Great Archangels. He challenged us to go forth and leave him to be God while we were gone. I had grave reservations about this at the time, which I ignored in favor of giving him a chance. I told myself that I was also leaving enough of myself behind that he would be no problem. The Emergence of the Lesser Archangels We moved out now, and the joy of it was overpowering. We played in the ethers like children romping in a fountain. There was no time to worry about what Lucifer was going to do. If anything, we felt late in the response to the mother's desire. She flew slightly ahead in her urgency, and her magnetism drew us on. We held her back a little bit and made her have some fun with us which was not hard to do once we got her involved. Guilt did not allow the mother to get angry at me, but she had feelings of anger because I would not focus on going to find out if what we had manifested was happy out there or not. She said only, The planets and stars are out there and we have not even gone past the first ring of light. Her voice sounded guilty, but I did not want to know why. The mother had an intense feeling she could not calm, that all was not right out in space, but she also feared it was wrong to pressure us about her feelings. At the time, she did not know how to balance the situation. She tried to deny her feelings of urgency in favor of our desire to have an orderly, pleasant and calm time, but her undercurrent of urgency bled through nonetheless. As we approached what we saw as the edge of a ring of light around us, we felt another orgasm growing within us. We were enjoying a feeling of light fluttering past us. We were feeling held for a moment and then let go. It gave us a feeling of almost bouncing along. We began to laugh and exaggerate the movement ourselves. We had a great explosion of light and laughter. We had a feeling that more spirits might have emerged as we had felt a great fluttering go through us as we gave in to the orgasmic feelings the new spirits were all fluttering around nearby in the ball of light in which they had been born. They appeared more like a sunburst than like spirits at first. As we looked more closely, we could see that they had forms that were more interesting to us than undefined light. They had faces that were merry and bright, 
and they were looking out at us with great delight. They also had great eyes as dark as night that opened to take in light. They had great long golden streaming hairs and green hearts that gave out a bright light. There were many more of these spirits than of the orders that had come before. They had great glee in their numbers and did not want to fight. They were like merry children who had a desire to come forth when they saw us romping. They wanted to get out of their bubble, but they needed some help. We pulled their bubble back as though we were opening curtains on a stage. The spirits appeared in the middle and emerged one by one. We gave them names as they introduced themselves. This was the first order we had named individually, and we felt we were going to have to go back and name the others when we returned from our journey outward. We had named ourselves, but names had not yet occurred to us for others until now. We were getting more definition as we went along. The mother was very pleased with these new spirits and had an immediate love for them. She also feared that it was not right that they appeared to have no partners. She did not like it that we had only male children and wanted to know why none of the spirits were taking after her. She did not want every spirit that manifested to be her mate. She felt annoyed, but did not want to be complaining again, so she only questioned me about her concerns. I felt that the manifestations were all right, but I could not tell her why. She said she did not think she was loved by any of the children, or they would have taken more after her. I wanted to celebrate the emergence of these new spirits, rather than have them feel that we did not think they did it right. They had something to offer, no question about it. They had merriment, playfulness, and they also had some powers. These new spirits filled the space around us and gave birth to dancing in a circle. They whirled and danced in a way that increased their light. The father of manifestation made sounds that he called music now. These sounds were similar to the sounds we had heard when he emerged, but these sounds had patterns and progressions that repeated and took form as songs. The mother said that she also had sounds and gave her own version of the sound she felt within her in response to these new spirits and everything that was happening. I also had a feeling for song and did not hold myself back. In reality, we had our first chorus in the heavens. Everyone joined in, including the great archangels, and our sounds became more musical than what we had experienced in the past. One of the great archangels had the power to focus sound, and he showed the mother a way in which she could send light out into the universe on a focus of sound and give a presence of mother love to anything that needed it without having to go there herself. Immediately, the mother's heart filled with love for the help she could now give. She began to sing forth now, without holding herself back, and her light and love streamed forth toward all the planets and stars in space. She had a feeling of great joy that she could send love to everything and leave nothing alone and without it. I also had great joy that the mother found she had some power now. I wanted her to believe in herself. She had not listened to me earlier when I had told her that she had powers. She did not know she had. The feelings of powerlessness that she had gotten from her first experiences with me persisted with her in spite of all my efforts to help her understand herself. Seeing another spirit demonstrate a power that she could feel within herself had given her the courage to try. The mother had faith in this archangel and felt that he was loving and of good intent. She believed him when he told her that his power was her power also. I felt content now that we could progress as I had planned, and that the mother could now accept this without feeling that what had already manifested outward into space was getting ignored. We gave this new order of spirits the name of lesser archangels, because they were so similar to the great archangels except that they were smaller in size and greater in number. They seemed to be self-sufficient already, and strong in their relationship as a group, we did not feel there was any problem in leaving them and continuing our journey outward. As we were preparing to leave, the mother told me that she still felt there was some problem that these spirits did not have mates. She felt that without mates, they had no way to make light on their own. It was her feeling that if we did not return to these spirits when they needed to receive light from us, 
they would not be able to remain manifested. The mother felt that the spirits we had manifested so far were going to run down if we were not around to give them light. I told her it was not going to be a problem for long, because we were going to go forth and come back. The mother had a feeling of being overwhelmed by the image of having to make light for all the spirits and to give it to them continuously. What if I'm just not in the mood? She asked. The mother wanted the spirits to have a way to make their own light so that she did not have to feel that our position was to continually take care of them. I told her that we had a long way to go before that could happen and that for now, she was going to have to accept that the role of the mother was to nurture the children. Look at these spirits, I told her. They are not ready to have a relationship such as ours. They are like children. They are playing. Imitating us does not mean that they understand what they are trying to do, and it does not mean that they are ready to do it. The mother could see that these spirits all had a masculine form, but that indeed there was a sexlessness to them. She had been unable to give them will essence because they had rejected it. She did not know why they had rejected her. She felt guilt because she had just assumed they did not love her, because they had obviously accepted her as their mother. She tried to accept my counsel here, and what she could not lay to rest in herself went into the lost will. Before we left, we told these spirits that we did not want to pressure them to try to be anything other than what they felt comfortable being, but that perhaps as they grew in their experiences, they might find that they wanted to have more will presence, and that if they did, they should come to the mother and ask her to give it to them. The guilt and fear these spirits had felt in response to our discussion moved back now, and their glee returned. The Emergence of the First Order of Angels We felt that we could not stay any longer. We felt a great pressure to expand and to open the space to do it. We had been relatively still for a while, and we felt that it would be very pleasant to move again. We moved out into the space just around us, and began to float there as though drifting in gentle breezes. We felt showered by a soft, loving light. It was an exquisite shimmering that made us feel like acing backwards and lifting our hearts into it. Receiving this light, we orgasmed in the heart, and another order of spirits emerged. These spirits were obviously heart spirits. These spirits were similar to the archangels in that they had faces, hearts, wings, and forms of shimmering light that were not very defined, but they were smaller in size than the previous orders. These spirits had more will presence than the earlier ones because they had the balance of heart himself. They were not intimidating because they had heart's feeling of softness. These spirits had a feeling of arms that could stretch forth and give love. Trailing streamers of light came forth from all parts of their bodies. They shimmered in all colors, but definitely emanated greens and pinks like heart. We decided to call them heart angels, although later they were often called the first order of angels. These angels were glittering and shimmering with the light of love, and we could not help but fall in love with them because they were love personified. Hart was very pleased. He had a bunch of little spirits to keep him company now, and they were already playing around him. Later, many of the angels were going to come to feel that they were not man enough compared to the other spirits they saw come forth. But at the time of their emergence, they had great self-acceptance, and they have to regain it now. There was nothing wrong with having angelic origins, and the shame over men having softness needs to move out now. It is the same shame that gives this softness its unpleasantness, not the softness itself. Hart had an idea of how we could celebrate this emergence. He felt that loving presence of a balanced heart was essential to anything that we did, and he suggested a party, inviting everyone who had emerged so far, so that they could feel this loving presence and give their response to it. The heart angels had a pattern to their emergence. They had emerged in partnerships which were all interconnected in such a way that they felt themselves to be individuals, but all one heart. They had begun to see the beauty of the visions in my heart, 
and had emerged to help manifest them. They had an ability to project these visions, rather like showing movies, and they began to show us how lovingly they envisioned the creation could come into being. We felt we had found the most balanced method of going forth now, in Hart's vision of how it could be. These angels had guardian spirits manifest in their order already, and these spirits felt attuned with parenting roles. The guardian angels felt guilty immediately, as though their calling indicated a breach of faith in our perfection by indicating we needed help parenting the spirits. The mother felt they should not have this guilt. She still felt that Hart was not allowing enough room for the evolution she felt was going to be necessary in the manifested spirits. The mother did not believe that help in parenting necessarily indicated shortcomings in the spirits receiving this, and she was relieved that some spirits had emerged to help her do the job. I felt that the mother's emphasis on parenting had an undercurrent of lack of trust for manifesting creation according to the vision heart and I had. I gave her a nod that let her know I did not appreciate her undercurrent that I was not doing the job right. The mother decided to try to wait for a more appropriate time to express her feelings. Hart felt the mother at that moment and received understanding that she was not wrong, but he did not accord her viewpoint its full validity then because he did not like feeling what she felt here. Hart wanted to hold the vision of the path he saw to be the most loving and therefore the path that looked easiest and most appealing to him. The mother wanted this path also, no question about it, and she felt very guilty that she could not make herself feel that this was what was going to happen. All the way along, the mother tried everything she knew to try, including denying her true feelings and pressuring herself to focus on the positive in an effort to manifest the path of Hart's first choice. At that time, I shared Hart's feeling that it might be the mother's lack of ability to align with us that was undermining the unfolding of our vision. Try as she did, the mother was not able to make herself feel that the easiest path was going to be the path taken. I am sorry to have to say to you now that Hart, Body, and I all joined together and blamed the mother for everything that did not manifest exactly according to the way we had envisioned it. You also need to know that almost every single spirit in creation joined us in this viewpoint. This story is now in the beginning stages of the blame and denial that the will has received. You need to see how this develops to understand why lost will is now so massive that it threatens the very ability of the creation to go on. At that time, we did not know everything that we needed to know to help us manifest what we were looking for. If we had opened to what the will had to teach us then, the will would have been able to align with us. You are going to have to go through everything to really understand, in your will, that it also was not possible to have a better alignment here than we had. We did not, at that time, understand the mother or the mother's process. The mother needed more help from us to help her move the feelings that kept magnetizing her to the worst possibilities that lay within us. At that time, though, we had avoidance in mind because we did not know another way to get away from these troublesome possibilities. This was not right, but it was not wrong either. Do not take in this information in the form of judgments if you can avoid it. Lost will is already holding judgments here that need to be healed now. The avoidance here took the form of wanting to go on with the party without having to feel the dampening effect of the feelings the mother was holding. We asked her to put her feelings aside in favor of ours. We felt some guilt here, but we also did not like the feeling that we might have to put our desire for joy aside in favor of what then appeared to be her continual unhappiness with one thing or another. She was already appearing to me, in parts of herself, as a continual nag who could not be made happy no matter what I did. Lost Will received this, and everything else that was not given acceptance here, including the mother's fear that she really was at fault. All the spirits that had emerged so far had the ability to move around in the space that we had opened for them, and so they began to assemble themselves for a celebration. 
They were all very interested in getting to know one another, and there was a social buzz in the air that lent an atmosphere of excitement. It was our first great gathering. The Ancient Ones had games to show the others, and the Heart Angels had begun to project their visions in a manner that can now perhaps be roughly approximated by a multimedia presentation. We were also naming the older spirits now, and having a little ceremony to accompany the naming, sort of like a christening might be thought of now. Lucifer located himself to one side. The mother felt that his laughter was a smirking rather than a joining in the merriment of the others. She hated him for smirking, but did not know if hating him was all right or not. She had guilt about her own lack of acceptance for everything. Perhaps Lucifer was only more honest about it than she was. She did not know that the judgments she held against herself for filling at odds with me were being reflected to her by Lucifer. She feared of being like him because he felt cold, critical, and unloving. As soon as Lucifer noticed her having these thoughts, he told her that she was not right to feel about him as she did, because he was just there to let her know that it was her own inability to accept reality that made her fear it. The mother feared that Lucifer was right, that she had not opened to experience and that she had judged it in advance of experiencing it. The mother had a confusion here that has gone on for so long, it is not easy to straighten it out now. There is a great difference between judging against something without opening to find out what it is, and opening to receive something and then allowing yourself to know that it is not for you. You also need to understand that the length of time spent in the presence of something does not necessarily determine openness to it or understanding of it. It is highly possible to know something in the instant you focus on it, and it is also possible to live in the presence of something and never know it. You must feel something to know what it is, and this is the most important lesson the will has to teach, even now. The mother was not understood in the beginning. Because we did not understand how to clear the original conditioning the mother received, we did not clearly understand what effect this conditioning was having on the present. I knew that the mother was not allowing me to have the experience I wanted to have, but I did not know why she was having this effect on me, and I did not understand why feelings from her past pursued her into the present. I had blame for her, but not understanding. Because the will's original conditioning was not released, we did not get a chance to see how the creation could have gone if this conditioning had not been there. Because of the original denials, the mother was not clear. When there is old charge held in the will, you cannot see the present clearly. The mother had old feelings that did not allow her to know whether she was responding accurately to the situation or judging it before she allowed herself to know it. As time went on, we found that it is not even possible to know a situation for what it really is when old conditioning is present. Lucifer took advantage of the mother here because it was his intent to undermine the will. Lucifer told the mother that she could not know what the experience of the creation was going to be because she was judging everything in advance. He told her that her judgments gave her the experience she expected to have. The mother was very frightened and upset by what Lucifer told her, because it sounded right, but it felt terrible. The mother was so frightened about herself that she could not realize, at that time, that it felt terrible to receive this from Lucifer, because there was no love present in what Lucifer said. Since it was not known how to change the feelings the mother had, she felt that she could not gain acceptance unless she played the role that we all seemed to want her to play. She feared that she was wrong to have the other feelings that seemed so displeasing to the rest of us, and she resolved to try very hard to be more positive about what was happening. The more she did this, the more denial went into lost will. The mother tried to act gay and not look at the pictures she didn't like. She had fun in spite of herself and even joined the father of manifestation in making music to go along with the visions we were having. The music seemed to lift the visions higher, and the visions in turn inspired the music until we were all feeling nearly orgasmic together. 
when there was a vision that we all particularly wanted to have happen. We had a great burst of light around it, and these visions then began to have a greater life within us than the others. It seemed as though focus on the positive worked. We were innocent then, and did not know how it felt to be ignored by the light, until guilt began to point it out later. We were having fun as innocently as an audience applauding in a movie theater. The mother watched the applause meter closely to see if her choices were going to be the choices of others. The mother's fear that she was alone in her choices seemed to be confirmed, as most of the visions that received the biggest response did not include the mother's presence. She then feared even more that she was not accepted or loved. She feared again that the only place in creation she would be given was outside of me. Nothing looked good to her, in that case, and in addition to her many other feelings, she had a rage over it that she was afraid to show. Lucifer liked it that the mother felt rejected, and he made use of it by telling her that she could never be sure she was loved, if she had to ask for love. The undercurrent his message carried to the mother was that it was inappropriate and self-defeating to express the feelings of hurt and rejection that she felt. She also knew that Lucifer did not make her feel good, but now she was unsure as to whether her feelings toward him were a fault in her or unlovingness coming from him. It was very confusing to the mother that Lucifer seemed to make sense and even speak truth, and yet he made her feel so bad. The mother wanted the truth to feel good to her, and she feared that if Lucifer was speaking truth, she had preference for living a lie. She could not see another way then, given the understandings she had, and so she wanted to try even more not to feel the feelings that did not feel good. The mother then turned to me with her fear and confusion. She opened to receive me, hoping I would help her. I turned her down, saying that I was too involved in what was going on to make room right then for her fears and doubts. She knew that I felt like she was being a drag on my good time again, and even though I had sympathy for her, I did not want to have to deal with her right then. The spirits that felt what happened between myself and the mother right then took it to mean that they were more interesting to me than she was, because they had the visions that I wanted to see, and the mother did not. I actually did not have preference for one over another, but in their eyes, I had acted as though I did. Ever since then, many of the heart angels have had an aggrandized image of the importance of their relationship with me. This misunderstanding got acted out later in the angelic experience in ways which you are later going to have to accept, even though it may be hard to understand at first. The Emergence of the Second Order of angels. When I turned down the mother, she turned to the father of manifestation because he felt warm and good to her, and I was feeling cool and detached. He felt her pain and moved it as he found it, reassuring her all the while that she had to have a place in creation, or there would not be a creation. The mother felt that he was not wrong, but she could not shake the feeling that she was going to have to go through too much to prove it right. The father of manifestation held the mother of everything and tried to comfort her. Pretty soon, they were making love. They felt guilty about not including all of us, but they could not hold themselves back. The mother did not allow any emergencies, but having an orgasm could not be hidden. I saw it, and I had to flood them with love, because the beauty of the light was so great. Everyone saw the light and had expectation of more emergences. They were not disappointed. Receiving my acceptance allowed the mother to give in, and the second order of angels appeared. These angels had more gold light than any of the others. At last, the mother thought, some spirits have taken after me. She felt joy at their emergence because she believed that these spirits would be able to understand her. These angels had well-defined hands and more body definitions than the others had had. They were also winged and did not have feet. These spirits had some guilt that they had emerged in the middle of the heart angels' festivities, but they said that they could not hold back any more because they so much wanted to see the visions manifest. I named their order Manifesting Angels 
and gave them a warm welcome. At first I thought that these angels could help the mother, but I soon realized that they had taken after the father of manifestation. The father of manifestation loved the mother, and so did these angels, but they did not like having to receive her pain or her complaints. Several of them came forward right away and told the mother that she should quit worrying because they were going to help with the manifestation and make sure that everything was all right. The manifesting angels had a desire to show us right away how they could manifest things with their hands. They had greetings for all and made speeches that had certain visions as their focus. The first order of angels were able to project these visions, and the second order of angels were able to hold the vision steady and give them a vividness they didn't have before. The second order of angels had the power to give more form to the visions, and this gave the visions more of a feeling of life within themselves. The second order had a focus on detail that we had not had manifest before. This focus allowed more intricate patterns. The first order was bringing forward visions they selected from the vastness within my heart, and the second order was defining the details and giving the visions a feeling of living form. The second order of angels wanted to join the party we were already having rather than have a separate party of their own. The second order wanted to add their vividness to everything that was already happening. They began manifesting right there, and for the first time, we had instruments upon which to play music. The spirits that had already emerged had a desire to go to the second order and have them refine their forms. The filmy white of the spirits began to take on more definition. The tendencies to billowing cloud-like forms, wispy, trailing streamers, and featheriness began to appear more clearly as well as the qualities within those forms of bounce, resilience, soft openness, whirling power, wind, stir of breezes, and the rippling and rocking of light waters in the air. The ethers began to manifest smells associated with each form, and everything began to sparkle more intensely with the many colors the ethers held within. The beauty of our luminescence increased. I wept with joy and happiness at the beauty of it, and also with the fear that I was not good enough to be God anymore. Spirit had already begun to feel like a background presence that was ignored and taken for granted. The Emergence of the Third Order of Angels The spirits did not seem to notice my state. So swept up were they in what they were doing. It was as though they were trying on costumes at a magnificent costume ball and dancing in and out of the multimedia visions of the heart. They were accompanied by the music of the heavens that drew its inspiration from both the celebration and the backdrop of stars sparkling in the vastness of the space around us. I found the mother near me immediately, holding me as I wept, and making love to me. I filled her with all I felt at the time. I feared she might fairly burst with it, but her acceptance of me made me unable to hold back. Her left hand was holding my heart when I had another burst of light, and the third order of angels came forth. They also had a desire to make sure that everything was all right, and came to me immediately to report that as far as they were concerned, I had nothing to fear. They told me that they knew that I was the source of all life, and that any spirit could do was refine the inspiration that I had to give them. They said that they were sure that everything manifest was me allowing myself to express the vast complexities of my own being. We, they said, are only a part of you telling you what you need to hear now. The third order of angels were not desirous of running off after form. They were more interested in sitting with me and remaining as close to me as possible. These angels had very highly developed inner senses of hearing, seeing, Smelling, feeling love's presence, touching, feeling emotion of spirit, and sensing the perfect response to give. If the second order of angels were the outer, these angels were the inner. The third order of angels had a feeling for me because they understood that I was the inner, just as the father of manifestation was the outer. They told me that the father of manifestation was the source of power for the second order of angels. The Emergence 
of the fourth order of angels. The mother now wanted to know where she fit in, and I had a desire to help her that I had not had earlier. I told her to give in to her response to everything around her and allow emotion to give a depth and magnitude to everything manifest. Feeling joy is the mother, I told her, but I also let her know that I had realized that fear and sadness are also the mother. She gave in then and allowed me to love her while she felt everything and gave her response. The mother came forth with a great song that moved all in the heavens except one. When the mother felt that one and could not move him no matter what she tried, she felt hatred for herself and did not realize it was him that she felt. The mother, I then realized, had mirrored every spirit to himself, and if a spirit had no love, she mirrored that also. The third order of angels confirmed that I had felt the mother's worth and had given her an acceptance that she had not had before. My acceptance of her encouraged her to open to me in a way she had not opened before, and with a great cry of emotion gave me another orgasm. The light was brilliant golden white, and it gave birth to the fourth order of angels. The fourth order felt immediate guilt over the great passion that had excited them to come forth, but they had not felt the depth that could move them earlier. The fourth order of angels had great passion, compassion, and love. They had power of emotion similar to the mother, and felt that emotion could give movement to the forms that were manifesting, and could even propel them out into the creation to find their right place. Manifested forms could now go forth and find the right place to fulfill what they had emerged to live. As much as I had felt the third order of angels to be the father's angels, I now felt the fourth order to be the mother's angels. The mother finally had some children who took after her. Everything felt balanced now, and we felt that we really could celebrate life, creation, and everything that had happened so far. We had a feeling of what you might call being on top of the universe. We felt that we had completely touched the inner circle of light. A great step had been completed in our great journey to the stars. We all felt the rightness of the desire to go forth now, and felt not only fulfilled, but also uplifted and full of excitement of the great adventure we had undertaken. The Plateau of Rest and Some Understandings Which Hindsight Gave Me There we had a feeling of needing to rest for a while and of wanting to get to know the spirits that had already emerged. We had done a lot of creating and manifesting already, and we did not want to proceed until we felt sure we were doing it right. We knew that we had to allow essence the freedom to emerge as it wanted to and when it wanted to, but we had questions about some of the emergences already. We already wondered how much guidance could be given to spirits without overriding the freedom they needed. To define themselves. We felt that spirits that were manifesting needed some help in parenting, and yet the mother had already experienced rejection when she told the spirits they needed will presence to stay manifested. We tried to teach the spirits by telling them stories about our long struggles to learn so many things that we could so easily show them now. Although we had fun telling these stories, we also found that many spirits rejected at least some of the understandings we gave them. Hart realized then that more experience than he had foreseen was going to be necessary before many teachings could be accepted as understandings. We had lost will then that could not open to receive the understandings we were trying to give. We did not understand then why this will could not open to receive us, but I have since learned that will must move in order to open and receive. The rejection the will was already receiving was creating the lost will, which was not moving because it was not being given the acceptance it needed to be able to move. The will must have acceptance before it can move. It cannot move and hope it will gain acceptance later. When the will holds back, it is not possible to evolve it. It does not matter what you tell it or how many times it has a particular experience, it cannot learn anything new unless it is allowed to move all of the old feelings it is holding. 
old denials in the form of held feelings and the judgments that make the feelings feel they have to hold back can make you feel like future experiences will be pretty much the same as experiences you have had in the past. These feelings of projecting the past onto the future are not wrong. They happen because the will is holding old conditioning from the past. As long as the will is doing this, the will cannot help but project the past onto the present and into the future. Effective release from old patterns involves effective release of the will's held emotion and the judgments that have made the will hold back. There is no real evolution unless release from old conditioning is gained effectively in this manner. Every other approach involves denial of one kind or another. When you have denial, reversals come sooner or later because the denial is part of you, whether you like it or not. You need to understand that denial takes many forms. Some are very subtle, and others are not so subtle. No matter how much or how little you deny, the part of yourself you have denied will not allow you to go on for long without it. Most people have rationalized the reversals, caused by Lost Will's attempts to gain recognition, as the inevitable swings of the pendulum. Some people have anger that they cannot just get rid of Lost Will, and many of these people have tried to do just that by redoubling their efforts to deny it whenever Lost Will has tried to make its presence known. Others are afraid of Lost Will and do not want to allow themselves to feel what it is holding for fear they will have to experience it. These people, too, have tried to fight off any sign of emotion that is not aligned with the self as they want to see it. I would like to say something here about anger and fear. Anger and fear are not really separate, and as long as they are expressed as though they are separate, they have not been expressed effectively enough to find the connecting link between them. Healing the imbalance here involves finding the connecting link between them. For example, if a person is expressing anger over and over and healing is not taking place, the failure to evolve indicates that the understandings needed are not being gained. In this case, the person most likely needs to notice what emotions are not being expressed. Repeated expression of some emotions can indicate emotional habit patterns that may give the appearance of emotional release, but are actually participating in furthering the denials of other emotions. In the case of repeated anger, the denied emotions are likely to be fears. Grief can be present here also, and some people use grief to deny both anger and fear that lie guilt-ridden beneath the grief. Grief comes from a feeling of powerlessness, which arises from the splits an individual is experiencing, such as the split between anger and fear. These splits can be within the individual or between individuals. In the beginning, we did not have the understandings on lost will. Then, we only knew that experience was going to be necessary, since without it, it did not appear that the spirits could understand the teachings we had to offer. We looked at the spirits' need for experience as an opportunity for them, and also for us. We needed to have space from them just as much as they seemed to need room to experience without their parents standing over them. The spirits were going to have to experience things that we had already experienced in order to understand what we had been trying to teach them, and we were going to have to go on with the experience we needed to have. Even though we knew this was true, we also had plenty of things we enjoyed sharing with the manifested spirits. When we told the spirits how hard it had been for us to figure out how to manifest them, they had fun telling us what they had experienced from within us knowing they had awareness of themselves and not knowing how to come forth. Lost Will received the unexpressed fear we all had had that the spirits could not find a way to manifest, and that we could not find the way to manifest them. In getting to know the spirits, we found that they all had understandings based on what interested them, and areas that did not interest them were often a blank. These early emergences had focused on certain aspects of us and gained their awareness in these areas. They all had a feeling of universality because they all had white light like I did, but they all had feelings that did not allow them to open to everything that I had to offer. The spirits were all given the opportunity to embrace more awareness than they had, but they all turned the opportunity down. All the spirits had emerged with aspects of me, but did not, at that time, demonstrate interest in utilizing their full potential to receive more. The time has come for understandings not gained then to be gained now, 
because the necessary experience has been had. The reason that the experience gained has not brought the healing needed now is that the experience has not been understood. The reason the experience has not been understood is that the spirits who set out to have these experiences had the intent to prove to me that their misunderstandings were right and that what I had to offer to them was wrong. These spirits originally denied that they had misunderstandings. Rebellion against me is the one karmic tie that all beings on earth have in common. It was not wrong to rebel against me, and it is not wrong to continue rebelling against me if you want to continue going it alone. If you do want my help now, these teachings are being made available to bring you the help you need. Denial, as you know, created lost will, and all of these original spirits had denials. Much of the lost will of these spirits is on earth holding the original misunderstandings of these spirits. This lost will has lived repetitions of these misunderstandings until it has deep conditioning that it cannot change anything. This is not true, but the lost will has to realize that it is not true by moving all the old conditioning that says it is going to have to accept the misunderstandings it was given and go on without them. Lost will needs to know that it is right for it to now come forward with what it has to offer. Its true input is going to be very old information, but information that is needed now. All the spirits that emerged in the beginning of creation fragmented because they did not have enough will presence to hold themselves together. Not only that, these spirits had a lack of alignment within all the essence they emerged with because some parts of them had understandings and agreements that other parts of them did not have. Not only that, there are many parts to the lost will. There is lost will which has fragmented into many beings manifesting the many aspects of what it has taken in, and there is also lost will which is spirit polarized. This is spirit essence that has operated around the judgment patterns whose core belief is that the will is not meant to be free, but is meant to serve the spirit, hold it present, and give it the response it wants to have. The only will essence this lost spirit has is essence that accepted those beliefs and holds present the spirit essence that enforces those beliefs. These beings have little or no other will essence present with them, and so appear to be spirit polarized. These people actually are pieces of spirits that embraced misunderstandings that led them to their present situations on earth. These people are meant to vibrate as light and are not really meant to be the physical part of their manifestation. Body also has a large physical presence on earth that appears to be very spirit polarized due to misunderstandings about its role. I had to have many experiences, as did these spirits, to be able to understand why these spirits preferred to operate within the misunderstandings they held, rather than release them to receive the true understandings they needed, even when the misunderstandings gave them a problem living. These misunderstandings have been going on for so long that they are not going to be easy to reverse now, but it must be done. If you are having feelings that you had manifested presence as early as the spirits I have mentioned so far, you need to consider that you may be a piece of lost essence that belongs with these spirits. You are going to have to feel within yourself to know if you had presence then or not. You may find out by having an emotional or physical reaction to this material. You may respond by feeling pain you did not know you had, or even by getting sick. Feelings of nausea, aching, or symptoms as though you have a sudden flu would not be a wrong response here. You have to understand that lost will has been suffering for so long that it knows no other way to express itself once its pretense of being all right has been broken through. If you feel that you have a pretense of not needing or wanting help, you need to allow this to be broken down, if you really do want help, so that you can receive the help you need. All the spirits that emerged have subsequently fragmented because they were unable to hold themselves together without the will presence which they rejected, denied, or lost. I have the parental parts of these spirits with me now, and they are still a great presence even without their missing parts. These spirits, however, must heal what has happened to them, just as I must heal what has happened to me. They have healed in spirit, as I have, but they still have lost will on earth, as I have, that must heal now. If you have feelings that you might be a part of these great spirits, you need to open to the possibility that you may have true understanding here. 
these spirits want to contact their own lost will on earth and heal it now. Many times, these spirits have tried to contact their missing parts. Hearing voices or seeing visions has, for the most part, drawn punishment to the lost will having these experiences. Guilt held in the lost will has drawn this punishment, and this guilt needs to move out now so that lost will can receive the understandings needed. In the past, guilt has not allowed lost will to realize why it was receiving such visions and voices, and lost will's mistrust for its own spirit has created the reflection of being misguided. Many times over, lost will has been punished whenever it tried to move and regain psychic receptivity. Having been denied from the beginning, lost will has not felt sure of its right place and feared that it was wrong for even daring to think itself worthy of receiving such grand visitations. Lost will then drew to itself the punishment it feared it deserved, even if the conscious part of the person was very angry about receiving such punishment. This fear of unworthiness and guilt needs to be cleared so that the spirit part of yourself can reach you with the teachings you need to bring about your own healing. If you cannot open to the possibilities of what your true identity and origin may be, you cannot allow your true feelings to move, or understand and accept them when they do. Having been lost for so long, you are holding judgments that you deeply believe to be reality, including the ones that say your higher self cannot be fully integrated with your lower self, and even the judgment that calls one aspect high and another low relative to its worth. Many people hold the judgment that they cannot ever receive contact from their own higher self. In reality, this contact is just blocked out by fear and guilt that is not moving. You can move what you need to move to hear what you need to hear, and the more you move in response to what you hear, the more you will be able to hear. If you have the judgment that earthlings are not as divine or high in origin as angels, you need to let this judgment go now also. There are even ancient ones on earth in fragmented form. You will understand more about how and why this fragmenting took place as you go on with this material. For now, it is enough to know that you may meet others who feel they are a part of the same spirit as you. You need to understand that this is not necessarily wrong. Guilt has not allowed most people to admit that they have a sense of identity that they don't feel they can reveal, and I am not suggesting that you need to reveal it publicly now. Those that have revealed these feelings have, so far, most often received reflections that have made it look very convincing that it is best not to mention these things, and probably best not to even entertain the thoughts. Guilt and judgments create the reflection that has been met on earth so far. You must open the space within yourself to know if these things could be true or not, and you must work with it there. In other words, I am not suggesting that you put on wings and run to the neighbors as a testimony to your newfound acceptance of yourself. You were not all angels anyway, but even if you were, it would not bring the results you might hope for. The lost will is not the part of you that has conscious vibration right now. The lost will is something that you have been holding and it does not want to move unless true healing can be brought to it this time. I have given as much as I am going to give on this right now. You are going to have to go through a lot to know for sure if you have your origins among the Godhead spirits or not. You may have to go back farther than you have ever remembered in your life to know if you had consciousness that early or not. The reason for this is that many of the early realities of the manifested spirits were quite similar. The more you move within yourself and get to know what you are holding, the more information you will have to go on. Lost Will holds everything that you need to know to go forward with your own healing now, but you cannot get true information from your Lost Will unless you learn how to help Lost Will get the light it needs. Open yourself to receive contact from the part of your spirit that can help you, and you will not fail to get the help you need. Healing Lost Will is not a matter of having these understandings just penetrate the part of you that is still vibrating. If that were the case, you would have been healed long ago. Not only do you need all the understandings I am giving now, you need to learn how to bring your lost will back into conscious awareness so that it can receive the understandings it needs also. The understanding is this. You cannot move old patterns without moving that which is holding them in place. These holding patterns are not conscious anymore. They have been called the great subconscious. It is now time to open to this and bring it forward to participate with your conscious awareness. I have many more stories to give now of how it happened that these parts of the will lost consciousness, 
If you have not found yourself yet, hold on. Great emergences are yet to come. There has long been a dispute as to whether older is better or not, wiser and more powerful or not, and the stories I am going to give will also help you to understand this issue. I cannot bring forward all the understandings you may feel you want in the beginning here because the understandings are too many, too vast, too multi-leveled, and too overwhelming. Understandings must be given as you are prepared to receive them, and therefore may not be given until much farther on. This is also necessary in order for you to get triggered in the ways that you need to get triggered, and for the story to have the teaching effect that it needs to have. Therefore, some things may appear at first to be understandings. Further information may then make them appear to be misunderstandings, and then even later, they may fall into place in another way as fuller understandings. All of this process is necessary to be able to gain the profound levels of understanding you need if you really do have full healing in mind for yourself at this time. I'm going to tell this story from my point of view, including the aspects of all four of my parts. I have to tell the story of the mother because she is my own will, and I feel her thoroughly now. You must allow yourselves to feel, and thus to know, what of this story you have lived. All spirits have lived a part of this, but none have lived all of it. The mother's story is the story of the will, and all wills find their experience within her will. The mother will has lived all of this, but even she could not hold herself together through everything that has happened. She herself has shattered a number of times from the pain of her experience. She is just now healing her fragmentation by bringing her lost essence back within herself where it can receive light. Even if you have feelings that you may be a fragment of the mother, you will not have lived all of her experience unless you are the parental part of her spirit, which you are not. Feeling your own lost will's vibration being restored to it is the only way you are going to know who you really are and what has really happened to you. I have found no other way these parts of you are still trapped in whatever places they met their deaths and have received no further information since that time. Spirit has long since moved on past the misunderstandings held in the lost will, and for a long time, spirit thought that it only needed to shine the light of its evolving realizations on the will, and the will would receive them and evolve along with the spirit. Experience has not shown this to be the case, and spirit has long wondered why the will could not respond to this approach. The will has received a lot of blame and judgment for not being able to respond to this approach. This approach has, in fact, only widened the gap between the spirit and the will. The reality of this gap can be seen on earth as some people having highly developed consciousness, while others on earth seem to be barely conscious at all. This is not a matter of how great and wise a particular spirit is in comparison to the rest. It is a problem of fragmentation and lost will. Essence that is not vibrating anymore cannot open to receive new understandings or new light. How, then, are these people even alive? Lost will holding the most serious denials has only a little light left. These people are, therefore, barely alive and are dragging a heavy load of dead essence around in their bodies. These people are susceptible to everything that goes wrong on earth, and what still lives in them is wrapped up in the struggle to survive in the face of the constant death and the threat of death that the load of lost will they carry is creating in their lives. For them, the creation does not appear to be either life-giving or abundant. What form their struggle takes is dependent upon the judgment patterns they are holding. This lost will has so little life left that it is very important that it be healed now. From the number of people on earth who have a daily struggle to live, or who are living in poverty, you can see that there is a lot of this lost will. Not all lost will, however, is in such bad shape as this. There are many gradations to the lost will. Even the evolving spirit essence on earth experiences reversals that signal the presence of lost will within it. You also need to know that lost will, which you have thrown out and which is living separately from you, still has an effect on your life whether you understand why some things are happening to you or not. You need to understand also that seriously fragmented lost will is not left with enough essence to heal itself in the form it is in. This is part of the reason I have said not to pressure anyone around you to adopt your path. This essence has to come back into the spirits to whom it belongs. If you have the feeling that you can do the healing on this path, 
you are not too fragmented to do it. The Emergence of the Seraphims and the Cherubims I have a desire to go on now to the story of the next two orders of spirits to emerge. Quite some time went by in which the already emerged spirits were getting to know one another. They were having fun discovering how they could merge together and re-emerge, getting to know one another by becoming one. They were reaching an ecstasy that gave them explosions of light from time to time also. They felt that the mother was wrong, and that they did not need more will presence to have orgasm. The mother also had fear that she had not been right. She hesitated to think that she had intuited it wrong, but now it looked like she had. There was nothing she could do but wait to see how it went. Experience would show whether she was right or not. The spirits had the feeling they had the power to increase their own light. I felt like a god that was standing over them trying to remind them of my contribution. The spirits needed more experience before I could tell them anything more. The mother and I felt it was time to continue our journey outward to the stars. The father of manifestation had a desire to go with us, but Hart was not as interested as he had been before. He felt like his balance would help the already emerged spirits to maintain while we were gone. The mother had a desire for him to go along with us, but she could not persuade him. He was not wrong as it turns out, but we did not know it at the time. We proceeded outward, feeling rejected by Hart. Hart did not look out to see how we felt. He was feeling impatience with the mother for seeming to pressure him. He was sure he was right and not wrong to want to stay with the angels and the ancient ones. He gave love in my absence that had to be given, and we had an urgency to go forth that could not be held back any more. We had great speed of flight because the relative stillness we had experienced in holding ourselves back to be with the angels gave a great pressure to our light that now had to move to feel good. We were trailing blue and red fire as we got to the edge of the white light we already knew. We got quite a jolt then and did not know what had happened to us. We felt that we had changed speed. Planets and stars flew by us now that had manifested earlier, but had not come to life yet. We had a desire to stop and look at all of them. As we turned to go back to them, we had a great surprise and a great joy too. We had not realized from within the Godhead how it might appear to look at it from without. To us, it was a gorgeous sight to behold. It had many tiers of white lights shimmering in subtle variations. It had the feeling of a great castle in the sky with many turrets and towers, and many flags and streamers of light. It had everything that fantasies have ever given to the vision of castles, and more. It changed form as we watched it and, like clouds shifting in the sky, became cathedral-like. It took on many appearances as we watched, including an appearance somewhat like a great wedding cake. It was as though we had an ability to affect its form just by watching it. The mother had a desire to make love now that she had held back for quite some time. The mother stretched out as though she had lain down in comfortable relaxation in view of this giant presence of our Godhead. The father of manifestation and I gave her love from both ends at once. They had erotic fantasies about little beings that had a desire to come forth from within her now. They played pipes she had never seen before and made sounds she had not heard before. Their rhythms were also new and had a great resounding depth to them. She had guilt that it was not right to have her attention on little beings running around inside of her while we were making love to her, but these beings were so captivating that she could not help herself. The mother gave in to an orgasm in her head and another in her groins, and spirits came pouring forth. I told her to have no guilt, because the father of manifestation and I had put the seeds of her fantasies within her. She had great excitement then that we had acceptance instead of rejection for her feelings of playful response. The mother had desire to open and receive these spirits at once. She was so delighted with them that she gave each one a present. Each of them received a power of the will from the mother. Some were given the power to open space, some to hold space open. Some were given the power to move inner forces and some to move outer forces. 
Some were even given the power to make light, and some the power to give light out. Some were given the power to envision within the light, and some to receive visions that were already there. Some could see the future, and some could remember the past. Some could make things appear, and some could make things disappear. Some were given the power to define form in amorphous things, and others were given the power to change form from one thing to another. Some had the power to bring together and heal, and some the power to disband and destroy. Some asked for and were given the power to move the great cosmic forces. These two orders of spirits have a large presence of lost will on earth, and much of it is holding denied heart essence. Heart has healing to do with these spirits now because he was not able to give them full heart presence at their emergence. These spirits need to gain understandings now to help them resolve the many problems drawn to them by their guilt over having denied heart presence. The understanding needed is that these spirits had an original cause that gave Hart the feeling that he would not be accepted if he tried to go with us and give more of his presence to these manifestations. Hart was not wrong here because these spirits had been watching us and they felt that the mother was not being allowed her full expression and that neither was the father, particularly the father of manifestation. These spirits saw Hart as always bringing a compromise that they did not want to make. These spirits had a feeling that manifesting as two orders of spirits with the heart of the father in one order and the heart of the mother in the other order would enable them to fulfill their purpose without having to compromise in ways they did not want to. These spirits had great charm and appeal, and I named the order with the heart of the father, seraphims, and the order with the mother's heart, cherubims. The seraphims had spirit heart, and the cherubims had will heart. The seraphims were taller than the cherubims, and where the seraphims were slender, angular, and definite in form, the cherubims were soft and rounded. The seraphims were more cool and detached, and the cherubims were warmer and more possessive. This was the first time we had seen what appeared to be a clear sexual distinction other than with ourselves. The seraphims were red and blue with heads that gave off rays of silver and white. They had gold, but it was not prominent. Their gold shone mostly in their hearts where they received the mother and reflected her to herself. The cherubims had red and orange, and their heads shone with encircling wreaths of golden halo. Their hearts were like shining stars of silver and white where they received the father and reflected him to himself. The brightness and intensity of color was greater in these spirits than in the Godhead spirits, who had white glistening with pastels. The mother had an admiration for these spirits and did not think they had the willlessness of the others. These spirits had the form and definition that was necessary now for the role they had to play. We wanted to give these spirits a warm welcome and yet did not feel that we could have the Godhead all pour forth at once into this outer reality in order to greet them. These spirits had a highly developed sense of themselves already and they informed us that they would rather have something ceremonial instead of just a party to mark their emergence. They already had ceremonial dances and patterns they could form that made their sense of strength and power increase or decrease, according to what they felt the situation called for. They had an ability to perform tricks that were both real and based on illusion. These spirits had a great beginning and they have a great future, but the road in the middle has become filled with the pain and suffering that guilt and misunderstanding has created in so many spirits who had great beginnings. The ceremony these spirits performed at their emergence let us know that it was now time to manifest many more spirits who had been waiting for the feelings that would make them come forth. We had understanding now that spirits were emerging in response to what was happening with us. If we were doing something that moved spirits enough to want to come forth, they did. The cherubims and the seraphims manifested many things to us that we had not fully felt until they emerged. These spirits had an ability to find minuteness of detail within me that I had not recognized yet. They gave me much information about essence that lay within me that was expressing desire to manifest now. After the ceremonial dances, in which they showed me patterns I could instantly recognize in myself, these spirits gave us another performance that showed us more possibilities of what body could do. 
They had more defined bodies than the earlier spirits, and they could do many things with their bodies that we had not seen before. We watched their performance with great enjoyment, but feelings also arose in us. The mother feared that once again we had emerged spirits that had more powers than we did. She experienced some jealousy and feared she had not managed to captivate us the way these spirits were doing. She found herself wishing that she had kept her powers and manifested them herself instead of giving them to others who were now charming us with them in the ways in which she had wanted to win our approval. She felt childish and guilty that she had these feelings, especially since I had told her long ago that she had these powers, and she had given them out instead of using them herself. It's my own fault for being so fearful and held back, she told herself. The mother's guilt has not let her reclaim her powers for a long time, but after a long time of seeing spirits use powers that they have not understood, she has decided that she must reclaim many of these powers and forgive herself for having given them out in a hasty, naive, and guilty manner originally. There has been a corresponding loss of power among these spirits on earth. Deception has increased among these spirits as these powers decreased, because so many spirits still wanted to have these powers and began to pretend that they did. The mother had grave reservations about reclaiming powers, because she foresaw what would happen if she did, but she has understanding now that giving these powers out then was a necessary experience for all that were involved, but an experience that has reached its end. The father of manifestation saw that the mother was feeling upstaged and displaced by the seraphims and cherubims. He shared her feelings. He had thought that form was his to manifest, and now he was feeling that he had not done as much with it as he should have. He had guilt that he had been inadequate as the father of manifestation. I had feelings of insecurity as God again, also. We all wanted the spirits to manifest in the ways that would make them happy, and we wanted them to have plenty of light and power. We could not, therefore, understand the persistent nagging feelings we had that our children were getting too much and that we were diminishing too much in stature and power as the emergences progressed. We felt guilty that we even had these feelings, and because of the guilt, could not then really bring these feelings forth to look at them. We held back these feelings for so long that we had to learn to understand them in the form of the lost will reflections these feelings brought forward later. The formerly unseen role, played by the denial of these feelings received, made the form in which they presented themselves to us almost unrecognizable and unintelligible. The reason for this is that denial had the effect of instructing these feelings to disguise themselves and to appear to be something other than what they were because they were not acceptable to us in their true and original form. At that time, we told ourselves that we had to be democratic about the emergence process and open room for others to become God in our place or gods in their own right. We had fears and guilts we did not recognize then that did not allow us to know what was really happening in the manifesting of these spirits. We did not realize then that lost will of ours that should not have gone out was getting pushed out into the manifesting spirits. Because we were so afraid that they might not get the light they needed, we had, without realizing it, gone to the other extreme of giving them more light than they could handle. Because we had guilt telling us we wanted to be God whether we were rightfully God or not, and that it was not right to be attached to our position, we were unconsciously pushing out more light and power onto the manifested spirits than they needed or wanted to have, in an effort to make sure that we did not block anyone's chances to be all that they could be. We then had many spirits who had powers they did not know how to use properly, and many spirits that had reflections to give that we did not like having to see. These reflections were all variations on the theme of our lack of acceptance for ourselves. The reflections made it look as though all our questions, fears, and doubts were proving themselves true. We felt unaccepted by many of the spirits we manifested because they manifested a lack of acceptance for us. It was our own lack of acceptance for ourselves that they were manifesting, but turned around as it was, it was not easy to recognize that it was only ourselves out there giving us the reflection we needed to see of how it felt to be an unaccepted part of us that really belonged within us. You need to understand that recognizing this reflection is not all there is to healing lost will. For a long time, 
All I did with it was look at it and learn. Later, I wondered why I had learned all I thought that I could learn, and yet, the reflections were still there. I have since realized the will involved here must move before the reflection can change. At the time that the seraphims and the cherubims manifested, we did not realize that even though the mother had given them powers, they were going to need to receive us continually to be able to utilize these powers. Denials were not many in the beginning, but denials have increased tremendously over time. As denial has increased, the ability of spirits to manifest their powers has decreased. Not only have the seraphims and the cherubims lost powers because we had to reclaim essence of ours that was not meant to be given to them, but they have also lost powers because they have guilt they have never recognized. This unrecognized guilt has caused the seraphims and the cherubims to deny themselves in the belief that they were making loving sacrifices in the name of love. These denials have caused them to stop vibrating in many of the ways that they need to vibrate if they want to have the light they need, to have the powers that are rightfully theirs. They have feared that they lost powers because they misused their powers. They saw their loss of powers as punishment from God for misuse of their powers. The seraphims and the cherubims have misunderstood at times, but they have never misused their powers. The seraphims and the cherubims are of loving intent, and loving intent cannot misuse power. Their misunderstandings were part of their own learning process. Punishment is not a necessary part of the learning process. Spirits of loving intent seek to learn because of the intrinsic value that understanding has for them. The seraphims and the cherubims judged themselves to have made mistakes. Self-forgiveness would be more in order here than self-punishment, because these spirits were already seeking the understandings that would allow them better application of their powers. Learning because punishment will be given out for not learning is not right use of will. Lack of self-acceptance for process opens spirits to the guilt that makes them believe they need punishment. Original guilt with the seraphims and cherubims was that they felt they had denied heart by not manifesting the way we had done. Self-forgiveness, not for the way they manifested, but for their lack of acceptance for it, is in order here. The seraphims and the cherubims were not wrong. They had understandings that we did not have. They realized that they needed to manifest in a way that would allow them to go through their own version of the process we had to go through in order to balance their spirit and will polarities enough to manifest heart. We had to realize through them that the manifested spirits needed their own experiences to understand heart balance. Each order of spirits was allowing us to recognize something in ourselves. The seraphims and the cherubims have heart within them, and allowing themselves to reach the balance they need will allow their hearts to manifest the way they want it to happen. The seraphims and the cherubims have pride that has not allowed them to receive these understandings from me. I would like them to allow me to help them now, because they have gotten themselves into a predicament on earth that does not feel good to them. They have not wanted to admit to this pride any more than they have wanted to admit to the other feelings they have denied. Pride has been denied here because the seraphims and the cherubims felt guilty that they had pride in the beginning telling them they knew more than I did about manifesting. The father of manifestation feels particularly involved here and has guilt himself that he needs to heal with these spirits. The seraphims and the cherubims had understandings that were right for themselves and for many others. These spirits had something to teach us, as did all the others. The seraphims and the cherubims were afraid to tell us how they thought spirits should be manifesting. They had seen what happened with the ancient ones in the beginning and they were afraid of what might happen to them. They felt ashamed of themselves for thinking they could tell other spirits how to manifest when God had not told them how. Because they felt they were not right here, these feelings were held back until the pressure from holding back pushed them quite suddenly to the other side where pride, empowered with some anger, enabled them to come forth and show us what they wanted us to see. The fear did not express directly because of the unrecognized guilt involved. This guilt told them that without heart, they could not be sure they had the balance needed to know if they really were right. The desire to justify their position with me and the undercurrent feeling of blame that claimed earlier problems had been because I had not told the earlier manifestations enough about how to come forth, 
let me know that guilt and shame had a presence that these spirits were denying. There was a feeling of anger beneath their presentation of understandings that gave me the realization that they had used anger to overcome their fear and thus deny it. Self-forgiveness is needed here also. Part of the process of understanding feelings is learning how expression of some feelings, and not others, manifests the denials. All the opposition that spirits have encountered has been nothing more than the manifestations of their own denials. The mother felt the undercurrent of anger and blame in the seraphims and cherubims, and it acted upon her fear and guilt. Because of the imbalance present in both sides here, neither side could recognize in themselves the presence of what they saw in the other. The imbalance in the seraphims and the cherubims caused them to ask for more powers than they could actually handle, and the imbalance in the mother caused her to give these powers to them. We had a growing feeling of intimidation because the manifested spirits were increasing in numbers and together had increasing power, while we felt that we were diminishing, as the manifestations went on, more than we wanted to. Heart kept telling us everything was all right because love would not allow anything to get mistreated, including us. We had faith in love and were not sure why. We had fear around Hart's reassurances. Later, we realized it was because love was not manifest in the places where we did not accept ourselves. The reflection manifesting in the creation gave us an exact picture of how we felt about ourselves. The form the reflection took was determined by the judgments, by the emotions holding the judgments in place, and by how much lack of love the judgments against ourselves contained. Hatred is the most extreme reflection of lack of love. Guilt and hatred together have punished many people so severely that terrible deaths have been brought to them. And yet, these people have wondered why, because they have not felt within themselves the guilt and hatred that has drawn these deaths to them. In many instances, these people have appeared to be innocent victims. And yet, all of these people have lost will which is holding the guilt and self-hatred that has drawn these terrible deaths. In the beginning of creation, we did not know why guilt was present with us most of the time. Self-hatred grew because of guilt. For a long time, I thought I had to have guilt to tell me when I had done something wrong, in which case, guilt was God instead of me. I had objection to this because it was not a loving feeling that I got from guilt. I have understood guilt now and have found that it is simply a presence. Guilt does not have consciousness, although in the past it had me confused into thinking that it was smarter than I was. I have since realized that guilt has no power to move without essence being given to it. Guilt had my own consciousness that was in opposition to myself. Any time any part of me was in opposition to the rest of me, that part of me was fed to guilt because I was denying the consciousness within me that opposed my main intent. Guilt held me back because it was empowered by this denied essence. Guilt opposes movement of any kind because guilt itself does not move. Because I had denied the consciousness that opposed me within myself, that consciousness then manifested outwardly in a state of denial. The opposition did not gain acceptance within me, and so love was not present for it. Instead of love, it got denial. The denial then gave the opposition an unloving twist that I cannot really describe fully in any simple terms. You are going to need to watch it happen as this story unfolds if you want to fully understand what I mean. You also need to understand that not all lost will is as twisted as what I am describing now. Some lost will is only warped by the judgments it holds. Lost will tries to hide how it really feels behind forms that look acceptable. The more acceptable the better, in fact, because lost will has already been told that its real form is not acceptable. This is why real healing for lost will will often, at first, look like it is getting worse instead of better. When lost will begins to move, its real state begins to be seen. Guilt, hatred, and death have manifested very perverse forms in the lost will, and they also have been empowered by essence that is holding misunderstandings. Even though we did not know, and the spirits who followed me did not know, we were empowering guilt, hatred, and death. Even though in our conscious awareness it was the last thing that we wanted to be doing, we have been empowering lost will with the denials we gave ourselves in the name of love. 
Further understandings on lost will must accompany the story so that you can see how these misunderstandings have been acted out on earth. The teachings I am giving around the emergences of the different orders of spirits have relevance for more than just that order. You will have something to learn from everything I am telling here. Going back to the emergence of the seraphims and cherubims now, you need to understand that it is not wrong if you are having feelings of having emerged with more light and power than you could handle, and that you lost it along the way. It is not wrong to realize that you have also lost a substantial amount of power and light that actually is yours, because you cannot tell the difference between what was really yours and what was not. Definition was in very early stages, when spirits first emerged. Also, looking at it in advance of the experience, Manifested existence looked to the spirit polarity like it was going to be simpler than it turned out to be. The will foresaw this, but was not given the opportunity to let us know, because we were too busy trying to deny the fear that it may be we could not manifest at all. Therefore, in attempting to align yourselves, you are going to find that you must regain will presence, not only to hold yourself together, but to be able to feel what is you and what is not. You have essence of yours and other people and other people have essence of theirs in you. Some of this essence has been lost in this manner since the days when spirits' light bodies were merging with one another before they had gotten to know themselves. There is also essence that has not revealed its true presence because it has been pressured to act according to the expectations of overpowering essence around it. If you have something in you that feels like it will not align with you, you must free it by giving movement to all the will essence that is holding it in place. If you move your will thoroughly in this area, you will find that either the essence does align with you and teach you in the process, or it will leave you and go to its right place somewhere else. I am going to point out the presence of guilt and lost will in the story so that you can look and see how the patterns affect your life. If you get sick of hearing me sound like a god that is always fear-ridden and guilty, then you are feeling the feelings that participated in creating the original denial of these feelings. Their denial has created a far greater problem than just feeling them ever could have. There is still time to heal this now, although guilt has stilled the movement of so much light that there is a real danger of the light falling inescapably into its grasps. Once consciousness has been lost by lack of movement, it is not easy to regain it. In the beginning, I underestimated what was involved in the recovery of lost essence. Now, I would like to say that every order of spirit has emerged with guilt that was not recognized at the time, and has lived with this guilt ever since. To make matters even more complex, misunderstandings have often said that guilt was right and God was wrong, and thus, my identity and guilt's presence have become mixed together. Sacrifice is one good example of guilt's punishment being mistaken for God. I want to bring guilt forward as I became aware of it as much as I can, but I am also giving some understandings ahead of their chronological order because the misunderstandings in these areas are so monumental that some of them need immediate release so that you can take in the story without reacting the way you did the first time, which was to turn away when you couldn't handle any more and deny what troubled you. Denial was the path taken then because evolution of emotions was not understood. This time, evolution of the will and the accompanying increase in light is going to be necessary. If these understandings are giving you trouble, or making you feel like you don't want to face them, move emotion and come back to this later. Turning away has been accompanied by the forgetting that there even was a turning away, but turning away has left everyone with incomplete and fragmented images of me, which are mixed together with guilt and misunderstandings. The will has been so pressured to hold all of this that it is terrified that it cannot recognize God, or God does not exist, or God is something so terrible that hiding from Him is the best bet. Guilt over hiding makes many go to church and pretend to worship a God they do not, in their true feelings, believe that they even like because of the images being presented by religions. I have cautioned against worshiping false images. Thou shalt not make unto thee a graven image nor any manner of likeness of anything that is in heaven above, or that is in the earth beneath, or that is in the water under the earth. Exodus 20, verse 4. And this warning has not yet been understood. I have sent my heart in the form of Jesus, 
and this teaching has not yet been fully understood. Try to open this time by getting your emotions moving. You can recover lost consciousness if you first get a movement in the consciousness you still have. Now, returning to the seraphims and the cherubims, we had guilt in these orders of spirits that was not recognized at the time. We were unconsciously looking to see if we should be God or not, and our doubts and fears were feeding guilt's ability to show us spirits that made it appear that we should abdicate in their favor. The ancient ones first, and then Lucifer. Now we had a number of spirits among the seraphims and cherubims that gave us the feeling they were more powerful than we were. They were not threatening to us overtly because we had love for one another, but subtly they were trying to prove something to us. They gave us a feeling that we worked for them. They wanted us to be the light generators for them so that they could use the powers they had been given. We had an aversion to this because we didn't like the feeling of constantly having to generate more light to maintain the spirits. At that time, it appeared to us as though the emerging spirits were increasing in definition and manifested powers as we progressed, and we did not know if our path of creation was meant to lead us to a more highly evolved God than we were or not. Of course, our path was leading us to our own self-realization, but we did not know that then. We had gotten so caught up in the process of creating and allowing spirits to manifest that we had temporarily lost the overview that Hart and I had had in the beginning. We had gotten out of balance here. Instead of seeing the oneness of everything, I had gotten caught up in the differentiation between all things. Lost Will has not yet found the way that oneness and differentiation fit together. Lost Will believes that differences divide people and does not like to notice, and sometimes does not want to allow differences unless there is a desire to feel separate from the ones who are different. We shared what we could with the seraphims and cherubims at the time of their emergence, but we could not lay everything to rest then. As with the others, we had a growing feeling that they needed to experience on their own, and that we needed to go forth and manifest more spirits. There was some guilt about leaving once again, but we could not hold ourselves back anymore. The Emergence of the Spirit Polarity of the Rainbow Spirits The Father of Manifestation was already dragging the Mother away because he felt that he could not have the orgasm he wanted in the presence of these spirits. I threw my light in with him just in time to have a great shimmering orgasm of purple light surrounded by halos of white. This orgasm had a delicate beginning, but the more we opened into it, the greater it felt. When we had exhausted ourselves with love-making and lay back to rest, we found ourselves surrounded by spirits shining in every hue of purple known to man. They grouped themselves like a flower whose petals grew deeper in hue as they moved inward. These spirits had a delicate, shimmering receptivity to us, and the movement within their emergence pattern gave off an odor not unlike the lotus flowers associated with the chakra. I realized now that I had a body forming. We had a feeling of welcome toward these spirits and we did not feel threatened. These spirits had inspiration from the word of God as their power. They spoke to us as though we were all one head in many words that we had not heard before, and yet we could understand them. They had inspiration to give in the form of stories to tell. And the response we had was music to accompany them. Some of the earlier manifested angels began to appear and to join in with us. These purple spirits were a chorus within their flower that began to give out stories and song. Some seraphims and cherubims appeared now and they began to dance in the stories. Second order angels provided costumes and first order, the visionary effects. The third order of angels, the listening order, had the role of an audience now, listening for the inner and outer alignment that was needed. When fourth order angels arrived, they wondered what their contribution would be. It seemed to them that their arrival had no contribution to offer. They did not realize that their presence was their contribution. They gave a depth to the emotional quality of events just by being present. The fourth order has long felt guilty around the issue of feeling they had no contribution to offer, and they need to release this guilt now. The angels had apparently had such a good time celebrating their own emergence 
that they wanted to have opportunities for more celebrations. Their combined desire to go forth and to also remain at home in the Godhead gave a nice flow to the light, as their comings and goings created streams of light back and forth between the Godhead and the outer areas we were opening now. We all shared a guilt in the Godhead that also needs to be released now. We feared we were shortchanging the emerging rainbow spirits, as these orders of spirits came to be called, by not giving them the full Godhead presence at once. As it turned out, coming and going at will was the perfect arrangement, as it gave the Godhead spirits opportunities to experience outer manifested realities as much as was right for them, and brought the light of the Godhead forth to the rainbow spirits in the amount that was right for them. The guilt that has been present in this area has created a long-standing imbalance that has not been healed yet. These new spirits could see that the angels had a home, and they wondered if they also had one. We had opened planets to manifest a life-giving home for all the spirits as they emerged, but I have omitted this information because of the length of the material and because it is not the information you really need right now. I am mentioning the question of home in relationship to these spirits because the rainbow spirits have a karmic problem around the question of where their home is. These spirits were envious of the Godhead and insisted that they belonged there. Even though we had opened planets for all the spirits, and these planets had great beauty in our eyes, we were manifesting a reflection of our own guilt here that maybe we had selfishly created the best place for ourselves. We feared that we loved our own home the most, since we felt the most comfortable when we were there. Not that the other planets did not interest us. They did. But we found ourselves wanting to return home often to get the intensity of light we needed. We have since found that every kind of spirit receives the kind of light best suited to nurture his or her needs. To be at peace with this understanding means being at peace with the self, and we were manifesting the same lack of self-acceptance among the manifested spirits that we had for ourselves. We had opened what we thought were beautiful planets for the purple spirits and for the colors to follow, but the rainbow spirits did not go to live on these planets for a long time. Instead, these spirits migrated all over the universes, insisting that their true home was not where I said it was. They developed powers of astral travel, as well as travel in spaceships. Long ago, the rainbow spirits came to Earth, and when they moved on, they left part of themselves behind that no longer had the vibratory power to go with them. The rainbow spirits that left Earth so long ago went to look at the planets we had made for them and found that they felt at home there after all. These spirits now understand that they have to heal their lost will that was left on Earth, and they have lately been coming close to Earth, trying to contact the rainbow spirits that were left here so long ago. These spirits have a fear of landing on Earth and making their presence known, not only because of the kind of civilization that exists on Earth now, but also because the magnetic density of Earth has increased since they were last here. They are afraid they will get caught on Earth in the same ways that their lost will got caught here. The rainbow spirits that are on Earth need to allow themselves to have contact with the rainbow spirits who have traveled to their homeland because these spirits have healing in mind now. Opening to this healing among the rainbow spirits means that the old charge around being left on Earth needs to move. Long ago, the spirits who left were judgmental toward the ones that got caught here, and there needs to be a healing of this judgment pattern now. The emotions involved here do not look pretty right now, because they have been denied for so long. Having been held back for so long, the anger, fear, and grief involved is very murky looking. This murkiness is not allowing the rainbow spirits that are still on Earth to vibrate their colors very brightly anymore. The rainbow spirits that are still on Earth still do not know where their home is, and they never feel that they are being given clear claim to their right home even if it is to be a spot on Earth. They have a problem even finding a country that feels like home to them. They have spread themselves all over the Earth, and yet cluster together with one another wherever they go. Wherever you find one rainbow spirit, you are sure to find others. They have a real group orientation, and if they find the group they need, they can heal in groups. Home for the rainbow spirits is not on Earth, and they need to find their true home, because having the right home is really important to them. Healing their original calls will enable them to find their true home and finally accept it after all of this time. 
The rainbow spirits also need to abandon the idea that they are going to have to die a horrible death to get there. They do not have to die to go if they heal themselves first. The rainbow spirits have appeared on earth in many forms. They have had nearly as much trouble finding forms that feel right to them as they have had finding a home. The rainbow spirits have manifested patterns on earth of gypsy, circus, carnival, traveling minstrel, and magic shows. Most of the patterns that are not mainstream have involved them. Right now, I want to go on to the emergences of the other colors. We had very rapid emergences here and feared that this was not right. Of course, we found out later that it was. We had a lot of fear around emerging spirits because we had love in our hearts that wanted to give these spirits a good home and manifest them in ways that would allow them to have a good start in life. We had not done this before and, like so many parents today, feared that our own lack of experience might overlook something the spirits needed. We had our own needs to meet also, or we could not be the good parents we wanted and intended to be. We had trouble finding the balance here between our own needs and the needs of our children. We have not found it yet, but I am confident that it can be found if lost will is healed. I also want to say here that it is not wrong to have sex involved. I had sex long before I had children. It was orgasms that emerged all of the manifested spirits and gave them the light they needed. And yet, all of the manifested spirits have had trouble accepting sexuality as part of God. As a result of this, the full presence of light and love has been held apart from every single sexual experience that has yet been had on earth, whether the participants are aware of this or not. Sexual guilt is immense on earth. Having guilt mixed with light and love has been the experience needed, but is not a very bright beginning for spirits trying to manifest on earth. Guilt fragments are what most people get. Therefore, when they have children, instead of the spirits they think they are getting, these children then usually turn around and mirror their parents' guilt to them. These children are a healing presence if you learn to understand and accept the reflection. Most parents have given in to the guilt their children represent in their lives. Rather than feeling the real feelings they have for their children, parents have been, in most instances, preferring to pretend and even insist that they love their children whether they actually do or not. Most parents who do not really love their children do not even allow themselves to touch these feelings for fear of what it will mean. Often these children receive even more of what society accepts as forms of parental love than do many children whose parents have more real feelings for their children. Most of the cases of child neglect and abuse are the action of the lost will of parents who do not really love their children, but heavily deny these feelings in favor of the pretense of love. I am not suggesting that parents who suspect they do not love their own children should start neglecting and abusing them so that they don't send this essence out into lost will. I am saying that, when lost will receives denied feelings, these feelings have been judged unacceptable and have a twist of unlovingness in them. Accepting your feelings and working with them, while holding your light and love present for your own true feelings, is going to change the ways these feelings are going to be expressed from destructive to healing expressions. If you get triggered by reports of child abuse and neglect, you have lost will doing it. You are going to need to accept the guilt and shame you feel about letting yourself realize this also, and then let yourself feel the rage that you feel toward your own children. If you have not had children, you need to find out why you have not had children. Deeply buried may be fears that you will want to do some of the same things that trigger you when you hear of others doing these things. The more you want to go out and stop them, the more you need to heal your own lost will with yourself. You all had some form of sex involved in your conception, if not orgasm anymore. Your parents all had sex before you were born, and most of them hid sex from you afterwards. If your parents had sex during the pregnancy, you were more intimately involved than most parents have wanted to acknowledge. Once you became a conscious presence in their lives, your parents had their fears and guilt activated about the place of sex in family life. Even parents who claim that they have not allowed their children to interfere with their sex life have imbalances here that they are not aware of if they are making this claim. 
There is a lot of healing and understanding that needs to take place in this area on Earth before sex can really take its right place. Sex has been taking place in the presence of guilt and denial for so long on Earth that no one knows what life without denial is like, let alone sex without denial. The reasons that sex has been so laden with guilt and denial have been deeply buried in original cause, and I'm going to bring this information forward a little at a time. If it triggers you that I had sex in the ways I am describing now, allow your feelings to move on this. If you have feelings of arousal, allow these feelings also. The separation of God and sex has created such a serious diminishment of the light that it must be healed now. You all had interest in my sex life, whether you admitted this openly or not. It was unnerving to us to try to have sex in the middle of all the manifested spirits who wanted to hang around and get off on it with us. Spirits who had acceptance and wanted to receive the light gave us a feeling that it might be possible to allow it, but the feelings we got from many were quite disquieting. Lost will has the voyeurism that we feared was happening then. Knowing that other spirits were around when we had sex held us back from the full expansion of our light because we felt less comfortable and more inhibited than when we were alone. The disquieting spirits were reflections of our own uncertainty, fear, doubt, guilt, and shame standing over us, but we did not know it then. Then we felt as though many of the manifested spirits couldn't accept what their parents were doing. We decided it would be best not to have sex in front of the children anymore, if we could help it. Going off into the darkness and having sex away from the spirits we had already manifested was the right thing to do at that time, because we had to open more space into which more spirits could manifest. We had feelings that were not at peace with this, though, and these feelings have been reenacted by lost will ever since. The feelings that were misunderstood then have to be understood now to bring the healing that sex needs. I am going to go into sex a lot more as the story goes on. For now, you need to know that the orgasm that moves you the most is the one that called you forth into emergence. If you have feelings about more than one of them, you need to feel your feelings more and you will discover which orgasm called you forth and also what called you into consciousness of yourself within me. You may have displaced essence that doesn't allow you to know right away, but you will understand more as time goes on. Knowing yourself here is important so that you can accept your origins in me. Sexual denial has made it impossible for most parents to reenact the orgasm they enjoy most. And so, remembering your own conception in this life may only be able to give you a picture of the denials that you have become involved with on your path. You have to understand how denial creates reversals in your life to know what happens when you have sex in the presence of denial. The rainbow spirits are now going to emerge in a rapid progression. There would have been an imbalance in the light that would have destabilized the emergence of all the orders of rainbow spirits if we had tarried along at any particular emergence. But we did not know this at the time. Then... We had guilt that we had shortchanged the rainbow spirits by not giving them much attention at the moment of their emergence. The celebrations they had upon emerging were conducted by the Godhead spirits and we were not present until later. We could not quiet or hold back our desire for orgasm until we had reached the end of the rainbow. And yet, we had guilt telling us that we were becoming much too involved with one another and getting too far into sex to care about anyone else or to be responsible toward the children we were manifesting. Guilt said that we were not taking proper care of these spirits or giving them all that they needed. Look, Guilt said, you have whole orders of spirits floating around without even having a proper home. Still, we could not stop the orgasms. As soon as one order emerged, the father of manifestation was grabbing the mother and making love to her again. Before I felt that I had given a new order enough light, I would have another order of spirits needing light. I was greatly annoyed with the Father of Manifestation for not being capable to hold back his sexual drive. I also feared that he was exhausting the mother, who seemed unable to even catch her breath between orgasms. I was filling her and the entire area around us with as much light as I felt I possibly could, and still 
I felt that I was unable to provide enough light. I had feared that I was less potent and powerful than the father of manifestation. It looked like he was growing larger all the time, while I felt that I was growing smaller. It felt like I was being drawn into form more than I really wanted to be. I had a feeling like a naked man putting his hand over his penis because he feels small and inadequate compared to the other man standing near him. I had a feeling that my light was not enough now. The father of manifestation seemed to be able to fill the mother all by himself and give her forms I had not been able to give her. She was changing forms almost as quickly as she took them on. Every form the father of manifestation gave her had great beauty in my eyes, and she was having orgasms in every form. I was jealous of his powers. The father of manifestation seemed to be in the mother constantly now holding her very tightly, breathing on her with a breath of flames and stars all at once. They had an atmosphere around them now that was not just open space anymore. It had moisture and light, aroma and movement. It gave a heady feeling just to breathe it. There was as much light present as I could give it, but I had fear because I saw a darkness present also. Part of this darkness was being given presence by the feelings that need to be healed now, but part of it was that these spirits needed a more dense form of light to thrive, and it did not appear to be as bright to me as my light in the Godhead. At the time of their emergence, I did not know that these spirits were suited to the light they were receiving. Then, I had a desperate feeling of not being able to cope, and of running to try to catch up with the mother and the father of manifestation. The mother was running slightly out ahead, and I could not tell if she was running from the intensity of both of us, or if the two of them were running from me. There was little time to understand it, as the father of manifestation would overtake the mother very quickly and pull her down beneath him, again and again. I felt somewhat shut out and could not see the ways in which he was giving her repeated orgasms. I knew that they were very intense and the intensity stirred fear in me, which was accompanied by a riot of inner pictures. I could not even tell if the mother and the father of manifestation were struggling and fighting with each other or making love. They were breathing and vibrating intensely, and at times even sounded desperate and out of breath. They were crying out, and many other sounds were coming out of them also. I heard tinkling bells, chimes, roars, grunts, moans, gasps, rumbles, deep drum-like beats, waves crashing on shores, volcanoes erupting, birds crying, winds rushing. There was popping and crackling. There were crackles, booms, and explosions during which the atmosphere around them filled with colored light. Every color and combination of colors that I thought imaginable were exploding around us like a riot of expensive fireworks, booming in the night. There were also soft places in the light that opened around us like the softness of flower profusions opening into sunlight. There was rain, lightning, and falling water. There was fire, storms, and finally, the peace of a clear and starry night. Spirit and form go into conflict and appeal to heart for balance. I had felt left behind, in the background, unappreciated unnoticed, unwanted, and unloved, and yet, I could not hold back my desire to go with them. I had a compulsion to be with them no matter what other feelings I was having. At first I thought that I should have left them alone if they did not want to include me, but I have since realized that I gave the rainbow spirits the right amount of light and presence. There is a deep guilt in these orders, though, that they desire intensity in their sexual experiences that God cannot really be fully present to witness because he would not have acceptance for it. When I saw the way the mother was responding to the father of manifestation, I feared that she loved him more than she loved me, that he was more fulfilling to her than I was, that he gave her more intense orgasms than I could, and that she loved form more than she loved spirit. These feelings all have presence in the denials and guilts of these orders of spirits. Everything that was present in us recognized and unrecognized at the time of emergence, has presence in the conscious and subconscious awareness of the spirits who manifested there, or who even came into conscious awareness of themselves within us at that time. 
The father of manifestation was lying aback now, and the mother with him. They had guilt when they saw how I felt, and I wished that they had included me more. A lot of thoughts and feelings that were present here were taken in and held as judgments by the spirits involved. The lost will in these orders has since lost almost all of its original intensity of color, because it has been holding guilt that has made it nearly impossible to vibrate with the intensity of its emergence. The lost will of the rainbow spirits on earth now looks more like a bad ruse than the intense beauty of its original colors. I gave a lecture to the mother and the father of manifestation as they were lying there that contained many of the judgments that were taken in. Everything went by so fast that, although I saw it, I had no time to assimilate it, let alone get to know it, enjoy it, spend time with it, welcome it, parent it, or check it to see if it had manifested in a manner that would allow it to remain manifest. I felt overwhelmed, abandoned, denied, and betrayed by willful emotions and bodily passions that showed no concern for spirit. You didn't care about me. You only cared about satisfying yourselves, and you are still not satisfied. Much that was left unspoken was present as feelings and internal pictures. The mother felt very guilty here because she was already tingling again with the desire for more orgasms. The father of manifestation felt guilty because he wanted to respond to the mother. He judged himself to be too involved in sexual drive and gratification. The father of manifestation tried to let his guilt and his concern for and fear of me hold him back. He blamed himself and he blamed the mother for arousing him to such excess. The mother blamed herself and part of her blamed the father of manifestation. They were trying to listen to me, but as I felt them, it seemed to me that they were really only lusting after one another. I was disgusted and frightened. I felt enraged and ignored. I felt impotent. I feared I could not make them change. All of this is present most of the time when people on earth attend religious services. I held back most of what I am giving now in favor of the image I held of myself as God at the time, but it was all taken in in its denied state by the spirits who were present then, and has affected them ever since. I wanted to tell the father of manifestation and the mother how much I hated them for making me feel so left out and powerless, but instead I said, You don't care about the spirits you have so wantonly manifested. You don't care what sort of havoc your lust may have wreaked. You let your passion take over, and in it you disregarded the limits and needs of others. You have indulged in an orgy of extremes that has spewed everything forth like, like, like a riotous explosion of beautiful colors, vibrating in sounds and sensations and aromas I could not resist. The mother finished my sentence with a surprising lack of sheepishness, considering the power I thought I had in the speech I had just delivered. Look, the mother said. I looked and saw nothing really because I was flooded with the sickening feeling of fearing that as I looked away, the mother was beginning again to caress the father of manifestation. She was complimenting him, reassuring him, murmuring to him, seducing him again. Seductress, I thought. Just a minute, I said, turning back to them. No more until we go back and see how it is. The father of manifestation was rubbing the mother's belly and touching her breasts. Light milky ethers began to stream forth from her breasts, flowing to all of the spirits that had come forth, falling gently upon them like a warm shower of fulfilling nourishment. I felt ashamed that I had gotten so angry at them. We can feel from here that they are all right, the mother said. They have forms we've never seen before, I said. I had the father of manifestation in mind now. You can't make love to the mother now, I told him. We need to check these manifestations and make sure they're all right. What if he just wants to comfort and soothe me after all the spirits I've emerged, the mother said to me. Again, I felt ashamed. I also did not trust them because I could feel that their real motivation was unsatisfied passion that was growing within them. You know, the mother resumed, you were sounding as worried as I was earlier. You sound just like me. How annoying was what she also felt, 
but did not say, because she was afraid of treating me in ways she had not wanted to be treated. She also feared that I was right about her, and that she had allowed her passions to make her forget her care for the things we were manifesting. Now I'm being as selfish as I thought they were being earlier, she told herself. God is right. She allowed her guilt and fear to push down her sexual fires. The father of manifestation did not like the way I was making him feel, and he and I got in a fight right then. This isn't how I had envisioned it, I was yelling as I pounded on his head as a way of saying that he was not letting spirit in. You're supposed to let me in. Include me. But no, instead you want the mother all to yourself, and as a result, you have bungled everything. There's no order to this, only chaos. Body blamed Hart then, saying he should have come along to hold the balance. Without his balance, it's no wonder things went wrong, he said. Boys, boys, I heard a voice saying from somewhere. I looked at the mother expecting that she had said this, but she was standing there smiling as if nothing was wrong. I thought she was very strangely calm for someone who was usually so frightened and full of complaints. Look, look for yourselves, she insisted. The beauty is so great that I am sure it is not wrong. There is so much beautiful colored light that I'm sure what we have done has to be right. We looked, and there was a beautiful trail of colored light, a huge rainbow glistening and shining in the night, a rainbow pathway that led to our door. At the top of the rainbow, our home was shining in a glorious beauty even greater than what I remembered seeing before. A great jeweled crown of shimmering white light approachable across a carpet of rainbow light, shimmering in the backdrop of the starry night. I heard a music whose form I could not understand until I realized that each color had a note. The flow of color was making chords that resonated with the universes. There was harmony. There was song. There was beauty. We calmed down and allowed ourselves to enjoy it. We soon became flooded with a feeling that everything was all right and that we couldn't have asked for anything more. We gazed at the beauty of the sight that lay before us for as long as we could. There was joy in our hearts now and a feeling of thanks and praise as we looked. We could see the Godhead spirit streaming back and forth, ministering to the rainbow spirits, and we felt that they were giving these new spirits what they needed. The angels were having fun going back and forth, and they looked like glistening drops of sunlit rain, or perhaps flower fairies as they have been pictured on earth. In looking closer to watch the angels, I saw that the forms of the rainbow spirits were not unfamiliar to me after all. I had seen them within me. I had seen them in the mother, and I had seen them in the visionary displays the angels had given. What gave me such a startle in recognizing them now was the increase in vividness they had acquired. I had experienced my earlier realities as seeming to be vivid and alive at the time, but they seemed more like dreams compared to the vividness that now held my gaze. I had a moment of guilt for how I had carried on with the mother and the father of manifestation. With a hat-in-hand manner, I apologized to them. I told them I had a feeling they were God now, and I was just going along for the ride. They couldn't stand my false humility, and they had a great desire to kick me in the head then, but they denied those feelings in favor of their feeling for how insecure I felt. Earlier I had shown them my anger, but not my fear. Instead of feeling so defensive and frightened that they had done wrong themselves, they began to have more sympathy from my point of view. They let me know then that they had had a feeling of being overwhelmed by my light, which had kept them running ahead in order not to be engulfed by it. This had been their experience at the same time that I was feeling I couldn't keep up with them and didn't have enough light for them. Something must have come over us, the mother tried to say then as a way of smoothing things out between us. I had to run from both of you, she said then. I was having orgasms, but I was also terrified that as much as I have wanted both of you, both of you were too much for me. Every time I got far enough ahead to feel I wasn't being overwhelmed, body would catch me and hold me until I was overwhelmed with light again. I was being overwhelmed into orgasm. I could hardly catch my breath. Now the father of manifestation felt hurt, frightened, angry, and betrayed. He had thought the mother was enjoying the intensity he had given her. 
he had even thought that she was leading him on. Now he feared that either he could not trust himself to know or he could not trust her to let him know. He also feared that if her feeling was that the two of us were too much for her, this statement might mean that she intended to leave him out and choose to go back to spirit. I had the fear that she had chosen him and not me. None of us wanted to express all we felt right then because we all had too much fear of what the outcome might be. We had fears running rampant in our minds, and there was jealousy between the father of manifestation and myself. We both wanted the mother, but we did not think we should both be trying to have her at once. At the same time, neither of us wanted to be left out of anything that had happened so far. The father of manifestation feared that the mother was using him to make me jealous, and I feared that her desire for me was not real anymore, but that she feared me enough to say that it was. We were all afraid of being hurt and of hurting one another, and this interfered with our ability to be honest here. The mother feared that she had no right to try to hold on to both of us. Her desire for both of us began to look to her as though she just wanted to keep us both so that she could have whichever one best suited her needs at any given time. She feared that she was self-centered and not thinking of us. We felt her then, and feared that she was not wrong. Suddenly, Body and I both felt as though we were being used by the mother. We feared that she actually had set it up to have both of us, and then when she found that she couldn't handle it, wanted us to play off against one another and have only one of us left. I had a moment here of feeling myself to be one with body against the mother. I felt this oneness with body so intensely that I lost track, for a brief time, of any separation between he and I. I actually did not know for a time who had said and felt what, and it did not seem to matter because we had agreement between us. We both feared that the mother could be dividing us and using us against one another wrongly. We were both very angry at her for this, and even hated her at that moment. As soon as we realized what our thinking was here, and that we had become one, we startled ourselves out of it. The feelings we had that were not aligned with the suspicious view of the mother did not allow us to remain there for long. We also knew that she was not unloving and that she was trying to do her best, given the situation. We realized that we were feeling more of the pressure that we had felt from the beginning, because we did not understand why we had what appeared to be three men and only one woman. We all began to wish Hart would come to us and help us balance ourselves again so that we could feel some understanding and acceptance for our situation. Hart did appear then and let us know that he had love for us. He asked us to look at what we had manifested and see that it was reflecting our own imbalances. We did look then and we were horrified to see that the colors were already losing some of their brilliance in the music, some of its harmony. Hart asked us to accept ourselves here so that the rainbow spirits could accept themselves. Hart gave us a lecture then. He said that as the parents of creation, we ought to be able to act more mature. Guilt was actually giving us this speech but none of us knew that Hart had guilt. Hart's guilt always sounded so balanced and right to us that it was the last guilt to get recognized by me. Now I want to help you to recognize it. When guilt affects the heart, it makes love appear to be something higher than what you have yet been able to attain, receive, or give out. Hart has mixed love and guilt together. Here is what Hart had to say to us then. The angels have begged me to come to you and ask you not to scare these new spirits before they even have a chance to know what it is like to be manifested. The angels have been trying to celebrate the rainbow spirits' emergences with them, but they have not opened out of their emergence patterns yet. They have remained clumped together right where they emerged. The angels feel that the rainbow spirits do not have the security they need to move out into manifested life because they do not know if they are accepted, and they do not know yet where their homes are. You are fighting instead of giving them the parental light and love that they need. I think you need to give them acceptance now. If you don't like what you have done, you need to set about improving it instead of fighting about why it happened, how it happened, and whose fault it is. The rainbow spirits cannot just go wandering off into space if it has nothing to offer them. You need to show them where their homes are. They want to come into the Godhead and I do not feel that it is their right place. I think they want to be there because they are afraid. They are afraid they have not manifested right, and that there is no right place for them. 
You have to give them the understandings they need now. Hart was very gentle with the next part, but he let us know that the Godhead was all he could handle alone, and that not all was going well there either. He said that the angels were also afraid, and that they did not want to show it to the manifested spirits, but they had shown their fear to him. Hart said nothing wrong. It has not even been wrong to have had guilt and love mixed together for so long. All of his statements were observations he had made. The guilt was coming through as a feeling tone that was asking us to give up what we were doing in favor of the needs of others. Guilt was saying that we should do this because it was wrong to be hurting others with what we were doing. Guilt even implied that our negligence was making the Rainbow Spirits' needs greater than they would be if we just attended to what love should be doing. I feared that Hart was speaking the truth, but I felt a reluctance to accept it. I decided that I would have to see for myself. I began to feel quite urgent about returning to take a look. Hart wanted us to attend to the manifested spirits on our way back to the Godhead, but I felt a need to go home first and then visit the Rainbow Spirits. The mother felt my desire to go and did not want to be left out in space without me. I felt annoyed with her because she and Hart both seemed to be trying to hold me back from what I wanted to do. She wanted to make love, Hart wanted me to visit the Rainbow Spirits, and I wanted to go home. The father of manifestation was now feeling real fear that he had done wrong to manifest everything so quickly. His guilt was freezing his fear in place so that he could not move or speak. He had enjoyed what he had done, and he feared the possibility that he was wrong so much that he did not want to find out if he was wrong or not. He had also been holding his fear that he could not have the mother anymore. He wanted to ask Hart and I to help him, but he could not speak. I wanted everyone to move. We all had more feelings toward one another that needed to move, but we all felt it was not right to go into them any more then. I wanted to say something to the Father of Manifestation just as he did to me, but we denied the great charge of feelings we had in favor of what we thought was the loving approach that Hart had described. Instead of saying anything, I turned to go. The mother then was seized by a terrible fear that I intended to leave her. She also had feelings pouring through her that were not allowing her to know whether I wanted her to come along with me or not. She had a desire to reach for me, but did not because she wanted me to reach for her instead. I didn't want to play games at all. I wanted to get on with what I felt I had to do. Please, the mother said then, can't we give it another try? Can't we try to love one another instead of fighting? Guilt and fear were making her feel unable to risk any more unpleasantness between us. She held on to us both and wouldn't let us go until she felt acceptance between us again. We regained our acceptance by forgiving one another. Forgiveness was born then, and it had a wonderful feeling of release to it. We both gave the mother a hug and let her know that we agreed that it was important to find love between us. We gave love the most important focus then, and decided not to focus on anything that didn't seem loving to us. Lost Will got all the feelings we denied then, and needs to heal them now. I turned to go then, feeling I was allowing the others a choice of coming with me or not. The mother grabbed me and held me back until the father of manifestation felt included also. He still felt unsure of himself and did not know what I had in mind. He had ways in which he wanted to express but he was not sure if I had acceptance for his forms or not. He gave me a hard look which let me know that he did not think it was right to leave him out, but he was not going to pressure me to include him if I didn't want to. The Emergence of the Will Polarity of the Rainbow Spirits I pulled the mother to me and also gave the father of manifestation a go-ahead without actually saying anything to him. He began to stroke the mother. She blushed as red as can be. She felt ashamed of how easily passion could be aroused in her when she was held by the two of us. I lifted her and gently rocked her into merging more and more with me. Body was stroking her all over with deep, slow strokes that awakened passion she had not known before. She hungered for body and pulled into her as hungrily as I was pulling her to me. We had a rising feeling. We hovered in red, expanding in the warm and intense ecstasy of it. The color had a clarity that made us feel very powerful and good. 
We felt orgasm building as though a density of increasing intensity was building sensation in us. We orgasmed as though we were having a volcanic eruption. We rumbled deeply, and the orgasm expanded from a glow into a brilliance of red light. The speed of vibration and intensity increased as we broke through the rumblings into explosion. The explosion went all the way through itself into the softness of expanding glows coming off of the original light. We floated as if in a warm pool of red light. We gave ourselves a rest here, during which our sense of smell awakened us into a renewed desire for sensation. We were smelling the color orange and it gave us delicious, mouth-watering sensations. We began kissing and gave a new meaning to tongue from our desire to go into the mouth and even deeper into the throat. We had had mouth and lips, but now throat and tongue received new definition. We gave in to more exquisite kissing than we had experienced before. We had the desire to press and rub ourselves against each other, and we were drawn to kiss everything. The head and shoulders and neck received our passion, as did the breast. Back was not left out, nor was any other part. Body was getting defined in our desire to find all of its parts and give them love. We had genitals now, which were like delicately waving flower petals of the most exquisitely sensitive and intense sensation. We had orgasm in orange just experiencing the exquisiteness of touch. We explored touch and had a growing awareness of how it felt to be loved in the body. We gave in to many orgasms in different places in our bodies and found the genital area to be the most intense of all. Prior to this, we had often not known what had triggered orgasm, but this time, we knew genitals had done it. Our genitals had an ecstasy in them that quivered and trembled in their openness to receive love and light. The petals of the genitals would stir and secrete nectar if another part of us even passed near them. Red spirits had emerged, and we had noticed them as the heat of our orgasm had subsided. The orange spirits came forth by passing through the genitals during orgasm. The orange spirits were coated with a blush of nectar that smelled so delicious that we could not help but kiss them as soon as we saw them. We feared it may not have been right to have brushed against the mother as they emerged and thus get nectar upon themselves, but we did not mind at all. The orange spirits wanted to follow us to see if we had any more tastes in store for them, but we did not allow them to. We gave them a welcome and told them to stay put until the angels came to them. I pulled the mother to me again and gave her a rise by making her giggle. Her gold was brilliant now, and she had a lightness in it that was producing yellow again. She had the joy of sunlight now, and the gold of afternoon nearing sunset. She was still glowing red and orange as though the sun were setting within her, but I was lifting her into the sunshine of daylight. Her gold lit up into yellows as the Father of Manifestation had her laughing with abandon. Giggling and laughing in the merriment of sunshine brought the next orgasm and the next emergence of spirits. Gold and yellow spirits formed a ring around us and let us know they had found life in our light. We had orgasmed gently as though making love on a summer afternoon. We savored the pleasure, not wanting to work up a heat as we had in the passion of red and orange, we had a rest afterwards as though we had fallen asleep in the hammock on the lawn, or as though we had fallen asleep on a bed with summer streaming in from the shaded lawn through open windows that surrounded the bed. We awoke to a coolness, as though evening were coming on. In our dreams, we had watched yellow spirits dance and play in the sunshine. We had gone into a deeper sleep then, and had not noticed that they had lain down with us. When we awoke, we found ourselves surrounded by little sleeping spirits who had apparently lain down to nap wherever they had grown tired of playing. They were like little balls of sunlight resting gently all around us. Some were lying across parts of our bodies. Some were snuggled up against us. Some were on branches of the trees overhead. Some under bushes and flowers nearby. And some slept on the grassy lawn. We felt that the angels should awaken them, and we called to the angels to come now as we were preparing to leave. We gave the yellow spirits the input of love that we had to give them right then, and guilt got the rest of the feelings, such as guilt that we had not supervised them properly if we had left them to nap where they fell, so to speak. 
We gave the angels more instructions on how to care for these spirits than we had given yet on the rainbow spirits, because we felt they needed more help. We were right that the yellow spirits had more complexities to understand in their lives than had red and orange, but guilt also had a hand in making us feel that instructing the angels was a way of compensating for care we feared we had not given them ourselves. An adoration for these spirits has also been lost for a long time because we had a desire to wake them up and tell them how adorable they were, and we did not do it. We were off then, leaving the yellow spirits with the angels. We wandered off into green coolness and got lost in it. We had feelings of water and of jungles, leafy forests and evergreen forests touched by blue evenings. It was hard to balance we were feeling now, cooling vegetation on a hot day, the warmth of the woods on a cool night, the softening of sunlight as it pours down through trees, the holding of moisture, the stillness of deep woods, the drumbeats of cultures who live there. The heartbeat and the drumbeat were one, and the beating of our hearts was answered by the drums. As we grew excited, the drums did also. We also had great excitement of rhythm now, and orgasmed in giant beats of the heart that felt good and strong. We felt that genitals and heart were receiving one another without impediment. We felt so good that we began to soar immediately, and left many green spirits peeking out at us from the green we had created. We were flying now, and we had wings and far-reaching songs sung in flight. The father of manifestation and I were both lifting the mother, and our great wings had the power that our hearts had felt earlier. We had hands and arms also, and we were using them to hold her. The mother felt small to us. She could feel our great strength and power, and she trusted us to hold on to her. We made love in the air. It was a great feeling of freedom to move and gave us the feeling of when we were first falling in love. We gave birth to blue spirits in the air, and they all fluttered out onto heavens and clouds. These spirits had a feeling of falling in the beginning which they have not gotten over yet. Many loved the free falling in space and trusted that they would be caught, but some became terrified that they either would fall forever or be stopped by something hard and unpleasant. The blue spirits had a vision and they could see far and wide from their birthplace in the air. These spirits like to get above everything so they can have the breadth of viewpoint and the perspective that they like. They feel that getting above it allows them the clarity they seek. The blue spirits also have voice and arms. The expression center is their power. These spirits were born with a high-mindedness which they have mostly given up now in favor of rivalry with the blue spirits who are born with white light instead of gold. These spirits feel guilty that they have given up so much of their visionary powers, and they have a dream life that they don't like to bring right forward for fear the intensity of their dreams holds some kind of power that it is not right for them to have. They feel guilty that they have envisioned things that did not turn out the way they envisioned them, and that the fault is theirs. The blue spirits have making love in the air as one of their main sexual fantasies, and have often wanted to make love with angels so that they could have the feeling of being lifted the way they felt it at their emergence. We flew on, knowing the blue spirits would be found shortly by the angels who would respond to the light of their birth. We grew tired of flying. It had grown darker all around us. The mother was afraid that we had flown out into the darkness instead of into the light of the Godhead. I was not sure if we had flown right or wrong, but I had a feeling of needing to rest. Close your eyes, the father of manifestation said, and focus on the inner sensations I can give you now. An ecstasy of inner images and bodily sensations ensued. We gave birth to indigo spirits who have inner focus as their power, but we didn't know it immediately because there was no external light at their emergence. We had a flood of inner light in many colors and we named these spirits Spirits of the Inner Eye. These spirits gave us many things, and guilt was one of them. These spirits told us they had watched us in many places and had not wanted to emerge in any of those places because we were not giving the spirits who had emerged there the kind of attention they wanted to receive from us. We have finally realized that it was right to give each kind of spirit exactly the kind of attention we felt like giving them, but we had to go a very long way over very rough terrain to find this out. At that time, we felt like these spirits might be seeing something we were not seeing. Time has shown that they were just needing to find their own right place for emergence. These spirits still have the feeling that they make others paranoid, but they have also enjoyed the feeling of power this has given them. 
Indigo spirits think they have inner secrets that are better than anything the outer world has to offer. These spirits do have a great inner vision, just as the preceding order had great breadth of outer vision. We gave in to them then, and let them show us many things that had formed in the body since we had emerged the corresponding order on our way down. We found that we already had internal parts as well as external ones. We found that we had organs that had moving parts within them. We found that there were circulations within that reminded us of many things we had seen without. We had feelings that what was manifest within us helped manifestation move outward. We had feelings of correspondence between inner and outer. We had feelings of guilt come up in us now that we had been paying too much attention to the inner, as though we had thought that form was only an outer phenomenon. We felt guilty that we had been so taken with outer form. Had we neglected to balance with inner form? We had feelings of needing to look more within ourselves now. Our newfound world within still could not hold us back. Still we had to go on and could not tarry any longer. No matter how much these spirits might have liked to hold us there with them, we lifted above them and opened into purple light that gave us a clear feeling of being near home. We gave in to an orgasm similar to the one we had had on the way down. Giving life to purple spirits, we found ourselves at home in the Godhead. The Triumphant Return Home That Almost Turned Sour We were given a great reception from Hart and many of the angels. The welcome we received made us feel that we were loved and welcomed. We were glad to be back in the familiar light of our origins, and we felt joyous because we had accomplished our goal of manifesting a creation outwardly. We had managed to go forth and return. We had managed to open the space into which all of these spirits could then emerge. We had also made homes for all the spirits. It was true that their homes were not just like our home, but we felt that the manifested spirits had good homes that could nourish them in the ways they needed to be nourished to sustain themselves and to prosper in manifested existence. We could hear sounds of happiness coming to us from creation, and its harmony gave us a sense, a great sense, of peace and fulfillment. We felt like resting at home now. Our feeling of love for one another gave us many little orgasms. We knew these orgasms were increasing the light a little at a time. We were making light, and our home was growing larger all the time. Our light was growing bright all the time. We were also growing larger now, and we had a feeling that the spirits were growing up with us. Lost Will has both the fear that there is no end to this expansion, and the fear that there is an end to it. There is Lost Will on Earth that fears having no limits, and also lost will that fears having any limit imposed at all. Then, we recognized only our happiness. We did not recognize how frightened and overwhelmed part of us was feeling. We touched all then, but not the terror that lay within it. We left more of the will untouched than we knew then. We did not seek out the other feelings held within us because we had so much expansive joy at the unfolding of creation. We wanted to find contentment and fulfillment in our happiness, we did not want to seek out the hard times such as we had experienced in our trying beginnings. There was a background uneasiness in our happiness which we did our best to ignore, unless it pressed itself forward in a particular situation so that it became necessary to give it attention. We had rage that had not moved at all. We had a terror which we had not felt. Guilt was always there, telling us that we should have done an even better job in a more thorough job of creating than we had done. Guilt did not want to let us rest even now. It was nagging us to go forth again and give more attention to the rainbow spirits. We felt that it was not possible to go forth now without having a rest first, but Guilt did not want to accept that for an answer. You are inadequate parents, Guilt told us. You are very self-centered. Guilt does not allow healing in people who cannot allow themselves to rest. Guilt always demands more and more sacrifice from those it controls. With guilt, there is never a point at which you have given enough, or a time when it is fully all right to have something given to you. Any gift guilt gives has strings attached, whether you see them or not. We had a feeling that guilt was not loving toward us, but we were afraid that it was because we feared we had not been loving toward the thing that guilt was pointing out. Guilt gave us no peace. It went on now. You have to go forth whether you want to or not, because it's the responsible thing to do. 
I had a feeling of wanting to tell guilt to get lost, but instead I told it I had intent to go forth when I got good and ready. Guilt then made a subtle switch by reminding me that I also had to attend to business at home. I was really maddened then. Do you think I'm some kind of idiot? I wanted to yell at guilt. I had rage, but I did not allow it to move then. Instead, I tried to sound reasonable. The guilt sounded like the mother not allowing me to rest, and I was not sure if it was her or not. She was afraid of my rage, so I did not let it move. If I had given her my rage and she had allowed her fear in response, guilt would not have gotten the space it was able to take then. Guilt increased its presence any time we held back anything because we were allowing guilt to convince us that it was not right to express what we had a feeling to express. Guilt then permeated the space that the expression would have filled if we had allowed free expression. As though guilt were not enough, Lucifer approached me now. You should not be enraged, he said. You're enraged because you're resisting the flow. You need to let go of all your preconceived images and just let creation happen. Lucifer had the self-hatred the guilt was making me feel. Neither one of them sounded wrong here, and it took us all a long time to realize that their input was directing us to deny ourselves more and more in favor of others. They did not want to allow the will to be free, and they did not want the movement the will created. Guilt said that continual service to others was God's right place, and that any opposition to this from the will was the mother in opposition to the father, which was not right. I had a feeling that guilt was not right here, but I also did not see how guilt was wrong, and I have taken a long time to balance the opposition that guilt and lack of self and lack of self acceptance manifested here. Guilt said feelings that opposed me were not right feelings to have. I wanted to believe that it was really so simple as just getting rid of the feelings that opposed me, but guilt was also making me feel that it wasn't right to get rid of something just because I didn't like it. Lucifer spoke then, identifying fear as the cause of the problems I was having coming to peace with myself. Lucifer then said the desire in the mother was the cause of her fear. She's attached to certain paths, and she's attached to outcome, Lucifer said. The mother is supposed to accept the father and accept what he has to give her. Lucifer had said this, although he did not say it directly to me. Her desire for something other than what she is receiving is a breach of faith in you, Guilt said. I had feelings that it was not wrong to want the mother to love, trust, and accept me. I did not know what made her sometimes feel otherwise. Early Attempts to Help Spirits That Were Having Trouble I tried to give it no more thought then, as I had many spirits coming to me, asking me questions and needing my help. I opened my doors and called in all spirits who needed help. I had a desire for Heart, the Father of Manifestation, and the Mother to all help me with the children we had manifested. I had a feeling of being overwhelmed that there were so many of them who needed help now. Some of them continually had new questions, and some of them wanted to ask the same questions over and over, as though our answers were not helping them. We all had feelings of not enjoying the repeat questions as much as the new questions, but did not feel it was loving to let this be known. The mother felt guilty that she had had to have me tell her some things over and over. She wanted to give these spirits the same allowance she had wanted me to give to her. Guilt about herself did not allow her to see that intent to learn what we were teaching them was not present in some of these spirits. I did not allow myself to see this then either, because I had feared it was unloving of me to want to give more light to some spirits than to others. The father of manifestation could not let himself see it because he was too afraid that everything had not been manifested correctly and that it was his fault some spirits were having trouble learning. Hart saw the situation then, but he could not allow himself to recognize what it meant. Hart wanted to say that these spirits just had a slower vibration and would reach understanding if given enough time, love, and training. The guilt we felt around the spirits I am discussing now has manifested many lost will reflections on earth. Many of the reflections lost will has manifested here are in handicapped and retarded people and also in people who have limited themselves in ways they will not admit, but who are, nonetheless, not open to receive the understandings they say they want to receive. It seems that these spirits must be given help, and yet they cannot evolve very far with it. 
These spirits have made others feel that if they are not taken care of, they will die. These spirits cannot take care of themselves, but it is not because they were denied the care they needed by the parents who created them. You need to understand that lost will gives the reflection of everything that was present in this situation. Since we had the fear that we had not parented adequately, there is lost will reflecting that fear and making it appear to be the truth. The truth of the matter is that these beings are not whole enough to take care of themselves because they are fragments that have fallen away from other spirits. These spirits could not hold themselves together because they did not accept enough will presence in the beginning. Godhead spirits feared that having will meant moving away from me, and they did not want to move away from me. These fragments have been judged by Godhead spirits to be a handicap. Having seen the mother go back on herself, many Godhead spirits judged that the will was handicapped in such a way that it could not live by itself. They feared the will had to have constant help to survive. The mother had a rage at the spirits that denied her and judged her this way. Guilt over feeling rage at her children caused her to go to the opposite extreme of always finding justifications for their fears in herself so that she would be able to feel like giving those spirits more help than she really wanted to give them. Guilt that she might be wrong and fear that it was unloving on her part to have this rage caused her to hold back rage as much as she could. The mother now knows that she has been right all along. From the beginning, she maintained that the creation and all the manifested spirits needed more acceptance for will presence. None of us accepted her here. Even spirits who emerged with more will presence initially soon lost it because they felt guilty for having it in the presence of others who did not accept it. Guilt was making the mother fear she was only being selfish and wanting the children to take more after her. She feared she was not loving enough to love them if they were not like her. The emerging spirits had a desire to polarize themselves as we had done without understanding why we had done it. At the time, we were not able to explain to them why they needed to have our four parts within each of them. The truth of the matter is that the will was not understood then, and that ignorance gave birth to fear of the will that we did not want to admit we had. None of us wanted to accept the will and accord her her right place. The mother experienced such a massive rejection that she is still wondering if she can gain acceptance with the spirits and find them willing to accept these teachings. The mother has had a hard time gaining acceptance for many reasons. Lost will holds all of them. If you want to know why you rejected will, you are going to have to go into the lost will to find out. It is not possible to let all of you know, through the medium of a book, what exactly caused you to fear will presence enough to reject it but you have the ability to know by the way you react to the information I am giving here. If you have aversion to the input from the will in this story, you must learn why you have these feelings if you want to heal yourself. If you are on the other side, rooting for the will, you have will essence that God denied and wants to heal now. Many will people feel so guilty to be will that they don't want to admit they have the feelings they have. This guilt needs to be understood more but I must give the understandings a little at a time. For now, let it suffice to say that you have seen what happens to most people who step over the line of what is considered acceptable emotional expression on earth today. For this reason, I must give a precaution here. You must allow your emotional response, but you must allow it in a place that feels safe to you and in a way that feels safe. You need to do your emotional expressing by yourself or in the presence of those you trust to receive it. I am given this precaution now because denial, guilt, and death have power on earth that you have not yet fully understood. Past efforts to go out and directly confront the ones holding this lack of light present on earth have not been successful and have most often given even more power to the ones seeking to deny the light. Until you have the full understanding that you need, it is, in most cases, not beneficial to your healing process to go forth and give your old charge to the ones that have triggered you. You can gain more power by letting yourself get to know what you are holding here in the way of old charge and lost will by expressing it with yourself. Neither do I want you to have the feeling that there must always be a clinical or therapeutic setting for moving your will. These settings have the possibility of reassuring the will that it is getting the help it needs if there is trust for the situation 
but continual therapeutic settings do run the risk of subtly telling the will it is sick to have these feelings. The will already fears it is sick. Acceptance for how sick the will actually is, is necessary, without making the will feel that emotional expression is always going to be viewed as an illness. The will is not sick because it has feelings of rage and terror. The will is sick because it has not been accepted as valid for having these feelings. The will needs to be allowed to move these feelings. It may even need help getting these feelings moving since it has held them for so long and received so much conditioning that it will receive further denial if it tries to express them. When the spirits began to come to us for the parenting they felt they needed, we were charmed by many of them and willingly gave them our presence. We had fun teaching them, and they had a joy of learning that made an enjoyable time of anything we did. Some of the spirits, though, had the reverse effect on us. We could hardly stand to see them coming, and yet we did not believe it would be loving of us to let them know how we really felt about them. We were too lost in the fears that their situation might be our fault to be able to see the situation for what it really was. Our lack of understanding at that time caused us to deny further in this situation. We denied the feelings we had toward the spirits we did not like. We also did not go into the fear that we were being unloving here. Instead of expressing how we felt in our fear of how we felt, we focused on trying to help these spirits. Guilt was motivating us here. We feared their problems were because we either had not been able to accept them as they were, or we had not given them enough love in the beginning. As we saw it then, help for these spirits meant giving them more love and love was getting defined here as giving them what we saw as positive input. Lost will got everything we denied in ourselves here, and it has acted out our judgments that, as parents, we were not doing right by the children. The judgments we held were many, but I will give you a few examples here. Some of this lost will has many children and then favors some over others in ways that feel very unloving to the children involved. Some of this lost will has neglected its children, some of it has overparented its children, and some of it has made children feel very unloved. We ourselves were giving even more time to the spirits that had caused us to fear we were unloving toward them in the hope that our efforts would enable them to evolve along with the others. The other spirits then began to feel that we did not love them as much as we loved the spirits who were having trouble evolving. Some even began to wonder if they had to have something wrong with them to get attention from us. At first, these spirits had feared that we loved them more than the spirits who were giving us trouble, and they still have guilt around this just as we did. At first, our attention toward the spirits who did not seem able to learn from us placated their guilt. But as time went on, they began to feel that they were not getting the love they needed because all of our attention was being given to the ones that seemed to need more help. This increased lost will because some spirits, who feared that they had to be impaired in some way, denied these feelings into the lost will. Outwardly, these spirits manifested the belief that they should not ask for love, but should give it instead, and that if they did want love, the way to get it was to give it. What these spirits gave then held an undercurrent of asking to be given what they themselves were giving out. I have a long story to give on how this has been acted out in creation. It began by simply staying present with the spirits who were asking for repetitious understandings more than we really wanted to. Sitting with the spirits who were having the most trouble receiving me and giving them the lessons over and over was about as interesting to me as if you had to sit in school listening to the repetition of multiplication tables until you are falling asleep and all the while a tantalizingly beautiful and warm day is progressing just outside the windows and you feel you cannot free yourself to go forth into it. I had the desire to go forth, but my guilt told me it was not right. I was droning on, giving the lessons inside the schoolroom, while all the spirits I longed to be with were romping and carrying on in the yard surrounding the schoolhouse. The father of manifestation had intent to help me teach, but he was continually having to give one or another of these spirits first aid or some form of attention in the back of the room. Hart was in the yard telling me someone had to look after the children out there. The mother could not hold herself present with me in the classroom. She had to come and go because interest drew her to the yard, while guilt and also a longing for body and I drew her back into the schoolhouse. Rage and the mother said, Turn these spirits out, and fear said, It won't be loving if you do. She tried to help me but could not remain interested in going over and over the same things. 
She said that these spirits should have the understandings by now, and I should go on to something else. Every time I tried to move on with these spirits, I met the same response. Questions without end on how to apply the teaching I had just given. The endless questioning further enraged the mother, who said that because these spirits couldn't feel the situations, they could not know what to do. They want a rule for everything. No matter how many rules you give them, they will always want more rules. No number of rules will ever give them the right guidelines for every situation they are going to meet. In modern terms, no matter how Emily Post has tried to delineate good manners, there was always a new situation that calls for the ability to feel what would be appropriate. No matter how laws have sought to bring balance to one area, they have created imbalance in another. For example, the compulsory education laws that sought to educate children and save them from drudge jobs at young ages have imprisoned others who could have benefited from the freedom to learn in ways other than sitting in a schoolroom. Not only that, many of the children imprisoned within compulsory education laws are the same bright little spirits I had to turn loose to play in the yard, lest they become as dull as the ones I originally had to keep behind for additional lessons. Even so, the brightness of these spirits has dulled greatly since they emerged, because guilt has succeeded in directing that everyone should be treated the same, or as nearly the same, as possible. I still had desire to help these spirits, but I finally had to tell them that I could not help them any more at that time. Every time I gave these spirits an example of how to apply a teaching, they had an example of how they could not apply it. If I explained to them how they could indeed imply the teaching to their example, they gave no indication of having accepted me there. They simply came forward with another reason why my teaching could not apply. These spirits had no intent to learn from me, but I did not want to allow myself to know it then. Because I did not allow myself to see these spirits for what they were at that time, I gave them many tools they were later to use against me. The lesson they had learned best was not the lesson I had sought to teach them. They had learned how to sound like me without having my intent. They had intent to oppose me while sounding like they only had love in mind. When I finally had no more patience for repeating the lessons that did not seem to be sinking in here, I did tell these parents that I had to end the session. I held back many emotions that I was feeling there in favor of sounding reasonable and loving. I gave the impression that God had preference for falsity over honesty if what true feelings had to say did not sound kind and positive. I had judged love already to include only the things I liked in myself. Since there were many things I did not like, I was already putting many things outside of love without realizing how I was doing it. Lost Will still does not believe it is loving to allow true feelings, if true feelings include anything that has been labeled negative. Tact is what it is usually called now when someone feels they must find the right way to say something. The appropriate time must also be found to say what needs to be said, as far as Lost Will is concerned, because the holding back of feelings delivers the judgment, whether it is spoken or not, that the will's spontaneity is not acceptable. After I put these spirits out of my classroom, the mother applauded me privately. Enough is enough, I told her. There is no way I can give them the set of rules they want me to give them, and there is no way that life is going to simplify itself so that their rules will work for them. The consciousness present is the determining factor in whether a rule works or not. In speaking to the mother, I realized that their intent was not to accept me, but to give me an argument about everything I told them. I turned to the father of manifestation to include him in my remarks, and said to both the mother and him, I allowed guilt to hold me present with these spirits. I taught them everything I could, and now I see that they will use this information in ways I had not intended for it to be used. I see what they are going to do, but I do not know why they are going to do it. The mother spoke then, When you told them that you could not give them rules for everything, I got a cold feeling and I could not help but think that they want to control others, and that without rules, they cannot do it. It makes them uncomfortable to think that everyone is to do what they feel like doing, and that frightens me. Hart was present with us now, and Hart tried to say that it could not be as bad as it looked right now. The mother was not at all sure that Hart was right about this. The father of manifestation had doubts on both sides. He said that he had been able to improve many of their forms, and that he hoped this would make these spirits happier. Perhaps their outlook will improve if they like themselves better, he said. Perhaps their improved forms will help them gain more acceptance from the others, 
and perhaps then they will have less reason to be troublesome. Perhaps there will be less fighting. Fighting had not been mentioned before, and I questioned him about it. He told me that these spirits claimed they were not accepted by the others because they were not pretty enough, and that there had been fights about it. I had to tell him that I did not think that improved forms were going to stop the fighting. These spirits have not aligned with the others because they do not have intent to align with them, I told him. He then felt the other side of his feelings on the matter, and voiced his concern that he may also have helped them along in their efforts to gain the power they were seeking by making them more acceptable to others. I had a preference for the way they looked before, the mother said. But you hated them before, the father of manifestation said. I know, the mother replied, and I hate them now. It's just hard to tell which ones they are now because they look better. She looked at me and added, and they act better now, too. The mother had guilt about saying this, but she felt it. She felt these spirits had been given something they should not have been given. Once again, she denied her rage at us for not listening to her about these spirits until, as she said now, it was too late. Lost Will got her rage along with the belief that it was too late to do anything about these spirits. Lost Will still holds the belief that it is too late to rescue Earth from what these spirits have done. The Angel's Early Misunderstandings I had to go forth now and see how the other spirits had been faring while I had been busy giving lessons over and over to the spirits who couldn't anchor the information in themselves because of their willlessness. When I went out to the other spirits, I found that they had been enjoying themselves imitating the things they thought we did. They had been merging with one another, becoming one, and re-emerging as a way of getting to know one another. I found that they had mixed themselves together so much that they had, literally, got it mixed up as to who was who. They had all left pieces of themselves in others and had pieces of others in themselves, until it was hard to know what piece might have been the original spirit and what pieces had been left there by others. How to straighten it out was not a simple thing to ascertain. The Father of Manifestation was also confused by what they had done because their forms were no help in straightening things out. As they had mixed together, their forms had also. We had guilt telling us that we had neglected them and that that was the reason it had happened. Because of my guilt, I felt it would not be fair to let them know how angry I felt when I saw what had happened to them while I had been busy with the others. I knew it had happened because they had not gotten to know themselves well enough before they had gotten involved with others and I had wanted them to wait for my help instead of going ahead on their own. The spirits felt like they had had fun mixing like this, but to me, it was a dismal feeling of not knowing right then whether manifestation had been a good thing or not. The father of manifestation felt me here, and worried that he was responsible for the problems we were having now. Then I had to find out who had the parental parts of the spirits, just as you are going to have to do now. I felt I had to straighten out the spirits and help them to know themselves so that this wouldn't happen anymore. I soon found that the spirits did not want to allow me to do this. They gave me many reasons why they had arranged themselves the way they had. Lucifer sounded present in some of their reasons. I had just had my fill of Lucifer's puppets in the classroom, and now I had a yard full of spirits who I thought had aligned with me all sounding like Lucifer had filled their heads in my absence. They told me that they had a desire to be one with one another, and that it did not matter how they arranged themselves, because essence was all the same in its sum total. They said that it did not matter how they experienced themselves, because that was also all the same thing. It's just light moving, they said. They had undercurrents here of feeling unsure they had emerged correctly. Some wanted to be different, some wanted to be more, and some feared they should be less than the way they emerged. Some felt that relationships needed something to make them continue, and that a sure way to do this was to leave a piece of themselves with the ones they wanted, or to keep a piece of the ones they wanted. In trying to straighten this out with the Godhead spirits, I found that they had confusions about form and essence that I could not help them with then. I found that they did not understand why they had manifested as they had, or why they needed to continue in that way. I found that manifesting individually was already feeling to them like a limitation they did not all want to have. It seemed to me that they felt frightened and incomplete, and that they were attempting to comfort their fear by lumping themselves together again. Even the ancient ones, who had seemed so sure of themselves, were having trouble here. 
I could not tell any of the Godhead spirits about their undercurrent feelings because they insisted that the reasons they presented to me were the only reasons they had for mixing themselves together as they had. Since they would not allow me to address the real cause of the problems they were having, I could not give them any real solutions. The white light spirits did not want to let me know they had any problems because they were all harboring feelings that they were God just like me. They all had the image that God was supposed to know what he was doing, and admitting to me they had problems would have been admitting that they weren't God, according to the image they held. Many of the rationalizations the Godhead spirits presented to me then even sounded like they were trying to let me know that they knew more than I did. Lucifer had gained their ear while we had been gone, and now Hart was not sure he had any influence over them anymore either. Hart had felt that the loving presence he could give was to hold the balance and shine his light and let all the spirits be free within that environment to seek whatever experiences they wanted to seek. He felt guilt now, as though love was not enough. Once again, we seemed faced with the question of how much guidance was right to give before our good intention slipped into an overriding of the free will that we knew the spirits needed to have. Hart's neutral attitude here had allowed many of these spirits to tell themselves that Hart loved what they were doing. The mother felt that witlessness was to blame. I also felt that these spirits needed more will presence and I did not know why they had emerged without a mother polarity. I knew that they had already lost some of the will presence they emerged with, but I did not know where it had gone. I had found some pieces of will that had become lost from these spirits. It was wandering around the Godhead. I returned these will fragments to the Godhead spirits, but they did not hang on to them for long. These fragments were not all the lost will these spirits had then, and the next time this will became lost, I did not find it for a long time. The mother was getting impatient with these spirits now also. She did not understand why these spirits now did not accept or appreciate the lessons they were being given and wanted to deny the validity of what we had to offer. I felt she had too much anger and impatience with them. I did not realize her excessive anger was because she had never moved her original anger that they had emerged with too little will. She had felt rejected by them from the beginning, and the more they denied what will they did have, the more rejected she felt. I know now that the will reflects whatever the will receives, and that the mother could only respond to spirits with whatever they gave her. Then, I wondered why she seemed to have so little ability to love so many of the spirits that had emerged. I had not realized it was because she reflected the feelings the spirits had for her. Some understandings needed now that could not be gained then. Then, I felt that her anger was out of proportion to the situation at hand, and that she was even mad at spirits for things she felt they were going to do but had not done yet. I had anger at her for the way she felt here, and I wanted her to hold these feelings back. Then, later, when she did not respond to me by opening to receive my love, I did not understand why. I now know that the will cannot hold some things back without having everything affected. I have understanding on the will now that I did not have then. At that time, I still did not know whether the will was causal or simply responsive. At that time, I had an unconscious image of myself that said I had to be perfect from the beginning, and perfect meant that I had to know everything already. This image was fed to me by my guilt and fears about whether I was really supposed to be God or not. I have since come to peace with my role as God, and realized that God also has process or I would not be an evolving God, and that this evolution has a perfection to it that is an evolving perfection. The experience I have had since then has allowed me to understand the mother in ways I did not understand her then. I have these understandings to give you now if you would like to have them. I have learned what I am sharing with you now by understanding my own reflection and by healing the results of my own denials as they have become ready to heal. I have gotten these understandings by understanding the reflection the manifested spirits had to give. Each spirit manifests a part of me. None of the manifested spirits have total understanding of me, but each has a part of the picture. Being able to see all the parts, I have been able to learn from my own reflection. I am now sure that I have the understandings that will bring the healing needed, because I have finally been able to assimilate all the pieces in a way that both makes sense and feels right. I have desire to help the manifested spirits to now enlarge the pictures they are holding as much as possible. 
many of the spirits have old pictures they have held since original calls. Guilt held the will back from expressing herself because it was not understood why this expression was necessary. With the outward flow shut down, the will became overloaded. Once the receptive centers were full, no more could be taken in. Emotional expression allows expansion in the capacity to receive. The problem with not allowing the will to move has been that even the spirits who had will presence reached a point where they could not receive anything more from me. At this point, most spirits looked away from me, and in doing so, have received no new information. In looking away from me, frozen images of what God is have remained and have not been able to move because the will has not moved. These images are not complete enough to give the spirits what they need to evolve. At first, I thought that time would help, that time would allow the emotions to calm down and then more understandings could be given. I have found that this is not true. If anything, time has layered the conditioning in even more deeply. I now know that the conditioning in the will must move or there is no possibility of new understandings penetrating the parts of the will that are already filled with as much as can be held. Moving what the will has been holding so that it is open to receiving something new is the thing that has been given the least acceptance on earth and is the very thing that most needs to happen. Fear and lack of understanding is part of the reason that this clearance has not been allowed, but there is also intent on earth to get rid of the will. Lack of understanding is the ignorance which has bred the fear. Fear has not been considered a pleasant emotion and has even been labeled a breach of faith in God. Fear has been denied in so many ways that it is impossible to describe them all, but I will give a few. There is fear hidden in most of the actions of people on earth, but you are going to have to feel when it is fear and when it is intent to get rid of the will instead. The eating habits of many people who have enough food are to help them avoid fear. When laws are made to do something about a problem, fear of powerlessness is often involved. Most behavior that is meant to show lack of fear is an act to draw attention away from fear that is hidden, but, nonetheless, present. Anger is often used to hide fear that lies underneath it. There are other emotions that are hidden in actions also, so you are really going to have to feel this to know what I mean. The will has received this avoidance and denial and has interpreted it as an unlovingness toward the will. The will has not felt accepted, and no wonder. Guilt then took over the will, because the will feared it was somehow at fault for having feelings the spirits did not want to accept. When the will could no longer bear to hold the feelings it was not allowed to move, it fragmented. Guilt in the will, especially in the fragments that are almost consumed by it, is what draws the punishment that the will fears if it tries to move what it has been holding. Recognizing the presence of guilt, including guilt that you have guilt, and deciding whether you want to allow it to have power over you anymore, is the first step here. If you have desire for guilt to go, you need to let your will know that you now have acceptance for moving the emotions that guilt has been suppressing. You may have attacks of body pain, especially in your upper back, neck, or head, after expressing emotions that you have felt guilty about having. Understandings on guilt combined with the acceptance of the emotions that guilt has had the power to suppress will move guilt out of you. You cannot win an argument with guilt, but you can give yourself more acceptance as that guilt no longer remains an unseen dictator. Overthrowing this dictatorship is what you must do with guilt. Part of my process has been to face the reflection of my own guilt, which said to me that if I were really fit to be God... I should not need process. I should already know. And if I didn't already know, then I had no business emerging a creation which I could not guide properly. Guilt will always tell you you should be doing better than you already are. I had enough understanding to bring forth the creation or it would not have happened. There was no way to know in advance of the experience or what the experience had to teach us. Just as I had learned enough to manifest the creation when the creation came forth, I have now learned enough to heal the imbalances manifested then. I still have to learn what the manifesting of this healing has to teach me. I will keep you informed if you open to receive me. You have to understand that you will never get ahead of me because the Godhead vibrates faster than anything else. Full self-acceptance has been lacking in my creation, and coming into full self-acceptance includes accepting your point of manifestation. 
all the spirits manifested after I had had existence for a long time, because they had a desire to learn from me and to let me go first so that they could learn from me. Each spirit manifested in the place that was right for it, and each spirit manifested in response to the vibration in me that called it forth. If you found a group around you, you were group-oriented. If not, you are individually oriented. Both orientations are fine. You have to accept yourself and your right place, or you cannot evolve as you need to. Understanding is that the progression in which you manifested is the progression in which you needed to manifest. And this progression gave you a relationship to me that is right for you and allows you to receive from me in the ways that feel best to you. Getting closer to me than is comfortable or farther away from me than is comfortable does not allow you to receive me in the ways that you need to receive me. I have gone through a long process with spirits who have not wanted to accept their emergence. What I have been facing here has been a reflection of my own guilt. I had to face the guilt I had over feeling responsible for everything, and the blame I felt toward others when I did not want to have to feel that I was responsible for everything. You are going to have to face the same things in yourselves. I have originated everything, and so I have caused all of it. This was the source of guilt's power to tell me that everything was my responsibility. Guilt gave me the feeling that blame was not right, and I tried to avoid blaming for a long time. I later found out that I had been blaming in a gapped state. By gapped state, I mean that I was not aware of my blame because I felt justified in doing what I was doing. Guilt had been getting me to bend over backwards for everyone much more than I really wanted to, and was making me feel like I was not a loving God if I didn't want to do this. I was suppressing my anger here because I feared that guilt was right, and that everything I was having to do needed to be done. One of the judgments here was, It is not loving to blame others. I have only myself to blame. When my anger and blame got loose, it went out in a state of denial and hit the ones I thought should take more responsibility for themselves. These spirits then came to me claiming they had been victimized by demons who did not have light or love. I had to realize later how this had happened. I had a desire for this to happen to them, but I had not allowed this desire into my conscious mind because I had judged against it so heavily. When I first realized this desire was present, I blamed the mother for having it, and still did not accept that I felt it myself. I thought she had evil or unloving intent. Understanding here is that all of the spirits do have to take responsibility for themselves. I have originated everything. This is true. And the spirits have followed my lead. The spirits have had their own free will from the beginning, however, and each has responded to the vibrations within me that have attracted them. I have responsibility for having originated the vibrations, and the spirits have responsibility for being drawn to particular vibrations in me. I have responsibility for my lost will that has not known how to move through things when I would not give acceptance to its process, and the spirits have responsibility for their lost will in the same manner. Spirit must open to receive will now, and lost will must be willing to open and receive spirit. Will essence that does not want to open to my light now will go outside of me along with the spirit essence that does not want to open and receive will now. Lost will must be allowed to get the message, though, that it can heal this time. I had no idea what takes so long to get the lost will to open to me once I understood how it had gotten lost. I had to try everything to understand how to get it to open once it had closed. I have intent to let you know that lost will is not to be sent outside of me just because... Spirit does not want to try very hard to get it. Intent makes the difference here. Intent is what I found had made the difference originally. Those who had intent to deny the will did not feel the same to me as those who did not understand the will. At times, the mother feared that the rejection she was receiving was all the same, and at other times she was able to realize that some had intent to destroy her. The mother has to heal now and she has to know that she is accepted for how she is, and not just for how others would like her to be. She has many facets that have been personified on earth, and most of them have not been very well liked. This is because fear of the mother has been denied in favor of desiring her, to avoid having to face the fear. The only images of the mother that have received the pretense of acceptance are images such as the Virgin Mary. The mother does not like any of the mother images very well, because they have not given a true picture of the fullness of her nature any more than have the popular images of me. 
people have not seen sexuality, rage, or anything else that has been judged negative as a part of God. The judgments against these aspects have made these aspects appear to prove the judgments against them. In the beginning, the angels felt they were the most favored children, largely because they were the most like me. Other spirits resented the angels for this, and yet wanted to be favored themselves. What is held in the lost will around this must also move now, so please allow any feelings you may have in response to any of the spirits as they come forward in the story. It may be that you will feel guilt that you may or may not have had a white light beginning. It may be that you will feel desire to deny the existence of angels altogether. You may feel anger, jealousy, rage, or hatred toward the white light spirits, or even fear that you are unworthy compared to the white light spirits. You may have guilt and feelings of unworthiness for having the feelings you have. You may hate me for not making everyone the same. You may have blamed me for a long time for having given more light to some spirits than to others. You may feel you have been persecuted in past lives and believed I was not there for you the way that I was for others. No matter what you feel, you need to allow the emotions to move and release the judgments you have held around them. I had an ecstasy in the beginning and then fear when I realized I was attached to feeling good. I had hard times in the beginning with the mother, but had reached joy later with her. Next, I had manifested a creation that had given me joy in the beginning, and I had felt that it was not wrong to allow all the essence that wanted to share in this experience with me to come forward and manifest their companionship. Rather quickly, what began as a joyful romp through the heavens with friends became, for me, hard times. Now, it was not just the mother who had complaints. I had many complaining spirits who continually wanted to insist that their lack of enjoyment was our fault. I had become exasperated with the spirits who had been trying to pin me down with endless questions that all seemed to begin with some form of what if. At the time, I had guilt holding me present with them more than I wanted to be. Today, I would say to them, either you do not have intent to embrace life, or you need to go to the fear underneath the questions and understand your fear. As I turn to help the angels, the mother helps me to help myself. When I went into the yard and found that some of my dearest little angel friends had become confused by Lucifer, even though Hart had been present with them, I felt that it was not possible to give either the spirits in the classroom or in the yard the understandings they needed and have them know it was true understanding. I felt overwhelmed, and I hated Lucifer for doing this to them. I had hoped that they could all remain near me and never have to learn anything the hard way by going down difficult and painful paths. I knew that Lucifer was wrong, but I could not prove this to them because they did not understand how I knew this. Even though I felt Lucifer was not right, it seemed I could not stop him. I had the grief of a parent who realizes he is not going to be able to save his children from the very troubles he wanted to help them avoid. I then gave a look outward into the heavens and saw that I had trouble there also. I felt that I must go forth to them again in an orderly progression and see what help I could bring. The mother did not like it. She had been doing her best to help me with the children, and she felt that she had already been waiting a long time to have some time with me. She wanted to have some attention from me. She did not like it that having children seemed to mean that she did not get to have time with me anymore. She begged me to take her out among the stars and play with her like we used to, before the spirits emerged. How can we do that when we have so many spirits that need us right now? I asked her. If they needed us, they would have acceptance for us. Guilt makes you stay with them, she replied. I had to admit that she was right. Guilt was making me stay with the spirits when I would have liked to have a romp. Guilt also told me that I would be ignoring their needs if I gave in to my desires. If you have to decide between the needs of the mother and the needs of the children, whose needs are you going to meet? The mother asked me now. I told the mother that I was going to have to meet the needs of the children first. If we don't meet our needs, we'll have nothing with which to meet their needs, the mother snapped at me. I turned on her and made her feel foolish for thinking she could be needing sex when there were so many children already. What if we have more? I screamed at her. You think I want more? She screamed back. 
As I had said earlier, the mother was holding back full expression of her rage. She had the feeling that it was not right to give so much attention to the spirits and so little to her. She felt like her contribution was overlooked and unappreciated. She felt that it was not right to try to give understandings over and over to spirits who had no will in which to anchor them. She had rage over all of this, but she was afraid to let it move. When she lost control and gave me a little outburst, I made her feel that I wanted her to cool down quickly and not allow the rage to gain momentum. She was afraid that I would not allow her to rage, and she was afraid I would reject her for having this rage. She felt guilt closing over her the moment she cooled her rage. Guilt told her it was not loving to have these feelings, and that she was not the mother she should be if she had so little interest in mothering the spirits. Guilt told her it was wrong to feel that her needs should come first, especially if she wanted to put sexual needs ahead of the children's needs. The mother tried to put aside her feelings as I had asked her to, and give me her loving presence to go to the spirits. Lost will got her denied feelings. The mother was feeling ill from holding back emotion, and guilt told her she had to ignore those feelings in favor of her parental role. I told her we would make love later when we had a harmonious background in which to do it. The mother did not believe she could last that long, especially holding back the way she was. I told her then that if she would just help me look at the Godhead spirits, we would take a little break together before we went to the other manifested spirits. The mother looked at me and said, No, God must first be in his right place, and then the spirits can get the help they need. Lost will holds all the feelings the mother had to overcome in herself to be able to confront me with such certainty. She had plenty of guilt and fear that she was not right, but she also had a strong feeling that she was right. She pulled me to her and asked me to touch her. I touched what I could then, but I did not touch the mother enough to fully realize how bad she was feeling. Lost will is still holding places I did not touch then, but I gave the mother as much light as I could. I had not realized how slow my vibration had been getting until I felt the exhilaration of joining with the mother in a feeling of freedom we had not had for a long time. We shot upwards together and had a flurry of small explosions. No spirits emerged that we saw, much to our great relief. There was such a great need for light in the Godhead that it was not wrong of us to have done this, even though Lost Will has held the belief that it was wrong ever since then. We also both had some guilt that we had not included Heart in the Father of Manifestation. It was much later when I understood that the Godhead had lost so much light from the holding back that guilt had been able to get us to do that the spirits could not have handled the tremendous and sudden increase in the light that would have taken place if the four of us had all made love at once. Even though I have had plenty of uncertainty toward the Father of Manifestation, I also had feelings of guilt and fear whenever he was left out, because something in me knew, even then, that no matter how I was having to struggle to accept it, Hart was right in saying that he was my brother. The mother always felt fear and guilt when we made love. Either someone was left out and she felt fear and guilt about that, or everyone was included and she felt fear and guilt about that. Either we emerged children and she was afraid and guilty that they were too many or not right somehow, or we didn't emerge children and she had fear and guilt that she was holding them back. She always had fear that I had expectations of her that she could not fulfill, and guilt made her feel that she had to turn me loose to have another if she was not adequate. She hated the feeling that she might have to let me go, and she hated the feeling that she could not be with me because we were having too many children. She felt guilty because she had these feelings, and then she felt guilty that when we were together, she was such a mess that I had to give her a lot of light and help because her emotions were giving her no peace. She had feelings that guilt and I and everyone else were right, and that denying her feelings was the only way she was going to be able to stand herself. No wonder no one likes me, she would say sometimes. I can barely stand myself. I loved her, but sometimes I shared her feelings toward herself, and sometimes I had great sympathy for her. This time, I had sympathy for her, and she found peace in my arms for a little while. She feared that it was somehow a stolen peace, but nonetheless, she wished for it to last, and she wished for us not to have to go back to the problems we had left, or if we did, 
that they would somehow all be fixed. She told me that she did not like us having the power to create if we couldn't control how it was going to turn out. Lost Will got the emotions of rage and fear around the powerlessness we were actually feeling here. We did not feel like expressing these feelings because we did not know how to handle them, and we also felt that we could not go on without being able to take a break and escape from our feelings in order to rest. We did allow ourselves to rest for a little while, and the Father of Manifestation joined us. He had felt feelings of being left out at first, but he also had felt that we could not all be together at once, given the situation at hand. When he joined us, it increased our light and our presence even more. He told us that our orgasms had increased the light the spirits were receiving, and that it had helped some of them, but others had seemed to get worse and act as though they were being hurt by it. The mother suggests that not all spirits are spirits of the light. This made the mother feel even more guilty, but she expressed anger. Her feeling was that all the spirits had been born of orgasm, and that if they didn't know how they got here, it was time they found out. She no sooner said this than something seemed to stab at her from within, giving her the feeling that her statement was not right. She suddenly felt that we had some spirits that did not like orgasm and had not come forth as a result of orgasm. I don't know how it could be possible, she said out loud, once she realized the Father of Manifestation and I were feeling her. She felt like she needed to tell us something now that she had been feeling and holding back because she did not understand it. She told us she had felt there had not been an opportunity before, but the feeling she had just had made her feel like she needed to bring this forward now. Sometimes, she said, when I have gone out into the darkness to open space, I have felt things I did not like. If you have not come to me immediately, I have felt like I was being bitten or ripped at. It hurts me, and it has made me feel afraid to go into the darkness and be alone until you light up the space I have opened. I want you to go right with me and not leave any gap at all. At first, I was not going to mention it because I don't want to complain about everything, but now I'm afraid that we might have something manifesting that likes darkness, and I don't want to find it when I go out there, and I don't want it to manifest through me. The Father of Manifestation and I both told her that we had never felt or seen anything like what she was describing now. The mother answered that these things were never there when our light was. They are like monsters, she said. They are terrible things, and I'm afraid they have intent to hurt me. I have an utter revulsion towards them. We had to take the mother at her word because we had not experienced this, but she had such a strong feeling about it that it did not seem that she could have made it up. Lost Will got the fear that she was just imagining things in response to fear that she already had. Lost Will also got the fear that maybe it was us she was receiving here, and she did not know how to receive us in a way that would not bring her pain. All the hapless ones that have met fates in the darkness that others never see or even really believe have personified the Lost Will here. Our response to the mother at that time was to say that whatever was going on, we needed to find out about it. We all agreed that we would begin by taking another look at all the orders of spirits, one by one. I called to heart and asked him to help us now by asking all the spirits to go back to their place of emergence so that we could see how they had emerged and feel whether it seemed to be their right place or not. We followed heart now in progressing through the orders of spirits. I wanted to recover some orders and regain some harmony in creation so that we could enjoy it the way heart and I had envisioned we would enjoy it. Early Attempts to Help the Ancient Ones We started with the Ancient Ones. We found that they had begun fighting among themselves about things such as who had the most power, who had emerged first, who was the oldest. The Ancient Ones had also been fighting about where the line was really drawn between God and the manifested spirits if, indeed, they were not God. Now, I have acceptance for these feelings and I want them to be expressed and resolved. Then... I did not like it because it looked to me like the Ancient Ones still wanted to tell me that they didn't like the job I was doing and that they wanted to find a way to replace me with themselves. I still do not want the Ancient Ones to do things in my place, but I have acceptance now for their feelings as part of their process of realizing that they did manifest out of me. 
The spirits involved here now realize there is a gap in speed of vibration between us. The ancient ones are the closest to me in speed, but they are not as fast as I am, and they are going to have to accept this now and stop trying to slow me down by insisting that I must listen to them. The ancient ones have many guilt fragments on earth that have been holding the guilt they denied having about confronting me the way they did. The ancient ones had decided among themselves that heart and the father of manifestation both needed mates, and that these mates should come from their order, and would rightfully be God even if the rest of the order was not. The arguments about who was oldest or most powerful had begun around the issue of who would be mates to heart and body. The oldest ones were claiming to be female, and claiming that they were the manifest mates for heart and body. The youngest one claimed that it was not fair to decide that the first emergence was the closest to God, because they had all become conscious within at the same time, and that emerging the way they had was because an orderly progression made sense. Actually, he said, emerging last just makes me the most polite because I was willing to let everyone else go first. I gave the ancient ones my views then, including my opinion that oldest was not necessarily most godlike. I told them that if heart and body were going to have mates, they would want to have free choice in the matter. Lost Will got the mother's fear then that she was only with me because she had manifested right there and had given me no choice. Guilt also started telling her then that no matter how much she might think we loved one another now, it had never been tested and that was only right for her to allow me to try others if I wanted to. The ancient ones have lost will that has acted out their insistence that marriage is an arrangement that should be based on position and considerations of power. Their lost will set out to try to prove them correct here because they were afraid to insist on this view directly to my face. The ancient ones always took in my views and then set about trying to prove me wrong wherever they did not feel in agreement with me. I did not think that they had any serious threats to their order present in these squabbles, and so I told them they were going to have to go through whatever they were going to have to go through to learn whatever they needed to learn. I told them they were making a game of their fighting, and that I liked that because they could learn and have fun at the same time. You have made a game of everything I have seen you do so far, I told them. Why not go forth and teach the spirits to play games? I had fun in mind here, since the ancient ones had emerged to have fun and celebrate the joy of existing in creation. The ancient ones received me as best they could, but they were not ready to let me settle their arguments by giving a speech. They have lost will that has been acting out misunderstandings because it never worked through the feelings that would have allowed the understandings. The ancient ones, at that time, largely tried to put aside some of their own feelings in favor of bringing playfulness and joy to others, no matter how they may actually have felt in themselves. Some lost will here believes that making a game of their feelings will solve the problems without having to go through real fighting or real bad feelings. Playing games has been both a strength and a weakness of the ancient ones, and in some cases, the lost will has revealed some hidden intent that did not feel loving. The ancient ones need to let their real, angry, fighting, competitive feelings move now so that they can evolve to the true joy they seek, but which has always eluded them because they cannot successfully ignore what does not feel joyful to them. Giving Help to the Archangels the great archangels were next. They had Lucifer in their midst claiming he was one of them. The great archangels seemed to have grown in light and power since they emerged. I saw then that the great archangels belonged to Hart. They loved him and had taken him in and learned from him. Light poured forth from them and love was in their hearts. Hart was proud of them. The great archangels had one great problem— they did not feel that Lucifer was one of them. Lucifer never agreed with them, and yet he would not admit that he was different from them. He gives us trouble no matter what we try to do with him, the archangel said. He has even told us that he is really God, they added. I felt that I had to confront Lucifer, and when I did, he denied everything the archangels had said. He claimed that they did not like him because he was greater than they were and that they would not admit that he was meant to be their leader. They won't allow themselves to be led, he said. But Hart leads them, I replied. Hart does not lead them, Lucifer sneered. Hart stands around and shines light like he is a fountain or something. He doesn't lead them. 
He lets them find their own way. I had to think then of what had happened to so many of the angels, even though Hart had been present shining love upon them. I feared that Lucifer had some validity to his statement, even though it did not feel good to me. The mother intervened then and said that it was not Lucifer who was right. She said that the problem was that the angels had not accepted enough will to feel that Hart and Lucifer were not the same. If they cannot understand that Hart is love and Lucifer is not, they will have to learn by seeing what happens to them if they follow Lucifer. Sometimes she startled me with both her certainty and her wisdom. The mother had this strength and certainty in her rage, and the minute she said these things, she would become afraid inside that she might be wrong. She would feel guilty for having been so positive in ways that guilt told her were not nice. She wondered if she was a loving mother or not, to feel so angry at so many of the spirits. Lucifer heard the mother and began to discredit her statements. He told her it was not right to put feelings on some sort of pedestal above reason. He told her that feelings were not all there was, even though she might think so. The innuendo he threw her was that she was so self-centered that she couldn't value anything else. He also told her that the other spirits had rejected her presence because they did not like having to feel what she had to offer. When have you ever been without fear? He asked her. Fear holds everything back and does not allow anything to go forward without unpleasantness. The mother shrank from Lucifer because now she was not sure who was right. She felt a chilling and sickening fear. Lucifer pointed at her. See, you're afraid right now. Even the truth frightens you. You cannot even stand the truth. Guilt told her she could not oppose Lucifer because she could not be sure he was wrong. The mother looked to the Father of Manifestation to see how he felt. The Father of Manifestation had felt Lucifer here and now indicated that Lucifer was not a great archangel, but was one of them. The Father of Manifestation had begun referring to the spirits that did not feel good to him as them. Lucifer attacked him next, saying that form was a lot of the problem we were having with creation. All these different forms are giving rise to feelings that are not allowing the spirits to get along with one another. Lucifer said, and then he went even farther in his next statement. You cannot blame me for the problems you are having in creation. Form and feelings are the problem. Without them, you would have nothing amiss. Then Lucifer pointed at the father of manifestation and said, he is the real cause of the problems. Until he came along, the mother knew she had to listen to you. Lucifer meant me, and the innuendo he gave me was that I was not a man anymore because of what my woman was doing. If others think I am more fit to be God than you because I have better understandings to give, I cannot help that, Lucifer continued. But I have not said it myself. The innuendo he gave this time was one of, I don't have to say it. We denied a lot of feelings right there because we did not want to let Lucifer know how he had made us feel. We had a fear that he would only feel more powerful if he saw that. Lost Will got a lot here. But rather than listed, I would rather let you see how it is later going to manifest. We all had a fear that Lucifer was telling us something that we could not ignore, but we wanted to get together on it later when he was not around. Then, we acted impatient with him and let him know that he was dismissed. We told the great archangels that we did not think Lucifer really was one of them, and that they should ignore him, and that when we discovered what his right place was, we would put him in it. We told Lucifer that he was not to force his company on any spirits that did not want him around. Lucifer got us to deny our feelings in front of him, which made him feel that he was more powerful than we were. And yet, it was not wrong that we did this. We had this fear also. Otherwise, why would we have denied our feelings? I now know that it was because we were denying these feelings in ourselves already that Lucifer was even able to reflect them to us in that way. Already. Within ourselves, part of us felt Lucifer was wrong, and yet, in part of ourselves, we feared that what Lucifer was saying was right. Since we had not moved these feelings in ourselves, we could not move them in front of him. I had to learn this, though. I did not know it then. I had to learn this by seeing the mother later go ahead and try to move her feelings in front of Lucifer and see that he had no acceptance at all for her. I have the tortures of Lucifer to bring forward in another book, 
because he tortured the mother for a long time, empowered by her fear and guilt that she was responsible for all that was wrong in creation, including having called form into being. Then the mother had nightmare visions of how Lucifer wanted to treat her that made her almost unable to look at him. He went on to the lesser archangels and found, more or less, the same thing. They had learned much from heart, and they also had some spirits hanging around that did not seem to belong in their order. There were only a few of them, but there was a distinct feeling to them that was not the same as the lesser archangels. The lesser archangels did not like them, but were trying hard not to show it. Guilt had been telling them that it was not loving to dislike others. Because I had told Lucifer to leave the great archangels alone, the lesser archangels were hoping that I would also solve their problems for them by telling these spirits that did not fit in to go away. The lesser archangels had been letting these spirits hang around because these spirits had been claiming they had no place to go. The lesser archangels did not want them to be homeless, but they hoped we would take them and find them another home. At first, it did not seem that it would be very hard to find these spirits another place, because we had not looked at very many orders of spirits yet. Surely we could find them a home someplace, or make them one. The lesser archangels were greatly relieved. The lesser archangels asked us some questions that Hart had not answered for them. They wanted to know if form was important or not. I told them they had to see what form a thing took to know what it was. I was wrong, and this needs to move now. I did not realize that I was trying to give form more importance in the balance of things than it really has, because I was afraid Lucifer had spoken my secret feelings toward form. Giving form was only one of the powers of the Father of Manifestation, and even he did not feel that form needed to have that much importance given to it. He felt that I was patronizing him, and yet he wanted my acceptance and he wanted harmony between us, so he did not contradict me. There has been a form and essence confusion in creation that needs to move now. Just because something has the right form does not mean that it is what it appears to be. Many spirits got led like lambs to slaughter by this misunderstanding, and for a long time I have had great grief and guilt over what went into the lost will here because it has not moved in all this time. Instead, many people have blamed themselves for not being loving enough instead of being able to realize that they were being trapped by forms that had no acceptance for their love. The lesser archangels were more childlike than any spirits we had emerged so far, and it was particularly painful for me to watch them suffer with this misunderstanding because of their childlike playfulness and innocence. The form and essence confusion also gave the lost will more than we realized here, from having made the judgment that it was not loving to treat others in ways that you yourself would not like to be treated. The form of how others were treated became more important than the essence of it. Guilt has also caused spirits to overlook how they are being treated in favor of how they treat others. This guilt began in the lesser archangels because they did not want to make any spirits homeless just because they did not like having them around. The form and essence confusion I gave them then made it even harder for the lesser archangels to know how to proceed. This misunderstanding has had its effect on all other spirits also. Do unto others as you would have them do unto you has been fulfilled more often in form than it has in essence. Most people do not even allow themselves to notice the difference here. Most people think that if they have an understanding, others should take on the same form of implementing it that they have. Others should take on the same form of implementing Others should take on the same form of implementing it that they have. As an example here, how often, when you have a desire to have something, do you give it to someone else as a gift, rather than giving the other person what they would really like to have? Guilt has further complicated this by telling people it is unloving to give honest feedback if it means saying they like the gesture, but do not like what they have been given. There has been a lot of fear that not loving what someone has done means that you don't love the person. Rather than feel this way, most people have tried to overlook the form, the gift for example, and appreciate the essence as a loving gesture. Form and essence have to align for love to manifest. If you deny one, the other cannot evolve. At that time, I had a long way to go to understand what I have just said, and I did not even know that I did not already understand it. I now know that form has its right place along with everything else 
but I had to deny it to learn what happens when it is not aligned with essence. I have understanding to give on form that has not been given before, but it will not be given until the last book in this series, because it is not right to bring it forward now. I have to tell you what form has gone through first, so that you will be ready to understand form for what it is. The lesser archangels are not wrong to have lost will on earth now, because they needed to learn a lesson about form also, but they need to allow the misunderstandings to heal now. The lesser archangels also need to know that it was their own lost will that they did not want having around them then, and it was their own lost will that they are afraid they made homeless so long ago. They need to let all their feelings move on this, and at the same time, release their guilt by understanding that it was not wrong to make this lost will go away from them then. This lost will could not align with the lesser archangels then, and needed to have the experiences it had to learn what it needed to learn. This statement is not meant to imply that all the emotional pain suffered in the experiences is to be cleared by simply telling it what the understanding is. The emotions must be allowed to move until they are ready to accept the understanding, without having to pressure in any way to be rid of the pain before the emotions are ready to let go of the pain. Deep conditioning needs repeated emotional release on the same issues. Recovering lost will means even more emotional release than that, because lost will essence returning to you has to go through whatever process it has to go through to catch up with the understandings the rest of you has been getting while it was lost. The lesser archangels are not the only ones that needed lessons on form. We all did but the lesser archangels have had the most guilt about allowing themselves to feel the essence within the form and have feared it was both judgmental and going against God's wishes to allow themselves to recognize unloving essence within a form that guilt has told them is loving. We left the lesser archangels in a state of confusion without realizing the full extent of what we had done to them and went on to the angels. Early Attempts to Help the Angels when we got to the angels, we discovered that they were not sure anymore what orders they belonged in. They were even more mixed up than when I had tried to straighten them out earlier. They had guilt telling them that they had too much light compared to some of the other spirits I had manifested after them. They were afraid that they had held back light from these spirits in order to have it for themselves. They had original guilt telling them it was not even right to separate the light from the darkness at all. They were afraid they had taken their light at the expense of everything else that looked darker than they did. The angels had emerged in a position that was almost manifested spirits, and yet they were not. They had the position of Godhead moving into manifestation, and they were unsure whether they were Godhead or manifested spirits. The angels were transition, and they were having trouble trying to be both Godhead and manifested spirits at the same time. I told them they needed to understand that they had both of these realities in them, but they were not really both. They were themselves, and they had emerged for a purpose which they could not fulfill if they were mixed up themselves. I could see more clearly in looking at them here how they had gotten so mixed up. They had not understood who they were. They had Godhead energy that needed to go forth into manifestation, and yet they were not manifested spirits themselves. They had a delicate balance to maintain, and needed to know many things in order to handle it. They had desire to understand more about themselves now, but I felt I had to straighten their intermingling out first. Angels of the same order had been merging together, and so had angels of different orders. In quite a few cases, the pieces that were mixed together as though they were one being were all insisting that they were the original piece, and that it was the others that had to leave. Many of the pieces that were mixed together were not aligned enough to do anything other than squabble, about how to proceed. The confusions Lucifer had given them were making matters even worse. I asked them to feel what parts seemed to be in their right place so that we could help the other parts that were not at home to find their own right place. The angels said that Lucifer had told them it was wrong to feel because it led to having preference for one thing over another. I saw then that what I perceived as squabbles among them, they wanted me to perceive as theoretical arguments. They wouldn't admit to actually having disagreements because guilt told them that disagreements meant they had preferences. From the very beginning, the angels had secretly thought they were my favorites, and this had opened the door for guilt to tell them it was wrong to have preference for one thing over another. When Lucifer spoke what their own guilt had been telling them, 
they believed he was right because he spoke what they were afraid to speak, and because his light looked so bright. The angels had equated brightness of light with God presence, and have had this confusion for a long time. Most of the teachers on earth who have been angels have given this confusion to the ones they have taught. The ones who have this confusion need to realize now that loving presence is God presence, no matter what form it takes. I had a job on my hands that was not an easy one to handle. The angels had many confusions that had allowed them to get mixed up, and these same confusions were not allowing them to get straightened out. They had a desire for me to help them, but they were so confused about what was understanding and what was misunderstanding that they were unsure about what I was trying to do with them. They had the fear that Lucifer was right in some places, and I was right in some places, and they were unsure just what was which. The angels had fear of being manifested at all, and many wanted to handle this fear by clinging together in a big ball. Many felt less afraid this way, and the ones that weren't less afraid were at least distracted from their fear by the confusion. They wanted to deny this fear, and insist that as long as they had the same mass of light, it didn't matter how it was arranged. Many of them feared that it was not right to be angels because it felt like a limitation that they had not foreseen. They had thought that having white light would mean that they were unlimited. After the manifested spirits came forth, and the angels began going out to them, it felt to the angels like they were limited to not have deeper colors and greater density the way the others did. The angels felt that their forms were not well enough defined, and that they were too filmy compared to the manifested spirits. They had begun to equate the filmy, white, and indefinite aspects of themselves with weakness. Many of them had begun to wish they were manifested spirits instead of angels. The desire to change into something other than what they were had definitely played a role in the mixing together they had done. I now saw that they even had pieces of manifested spirits in them, and that they had left some pieces of themselves in the manifested spirits. The angels had guilt, anger, and fear that they did not want to accept here, and without accepting it, they could not accept how I felt about what they had done. They feared that I meant that they were not to have sexual relationships, which was what they perceived themselves to be doing when they merged together. They also had feelings they wanted to deny about having merged with some of the manifested spirits. They had shame now, and they were holding back a lot of fright and grief that they had done a wrong that could not be righted. They were afraid they had mixed themselves up in ways that can never be straightened out again. Considering how long it has taken the angels to get to the place where they can straighten themselves out, it certainly looked, from this vantage point, like it would be never. Many of the angels use the word never quite frequently when they are making judgments, and their emotions often feel like nothing will ever get better when they are upset. The angels have to understand that it is not possible to get past the problem if they won't admit to what the problem really is. The angels have hidden their problems for so long that many of them are going to have to do some digging to reconnect to what is actually bothering them. The angels have fear as one of their main issues, and they have covered this fear with a lot of rationalizations and angry blame for others. The angels have rationalized their angry blame as justified, considering the inability of others to comprehend the complex and deep realities in which the angel's consciousness moves. The angels have to forgive themselves for judging against their fear, and for judging they did not do well taking on a parental role with the manifested spirits, when they really feared they were still children themselves in relationship to me. Denial is a problem with the angels. They have all wanted to insist that they were more my equal than anything else, and therefore, they were never really children. They have a lot to learn now if they are finally ready to accept it. I have great love for the angels, and they need to understand that it is not wrong that they have harbored resentment toward me. That needs to heal now. The attention I gave the angels at first was because they needed it, and because I was fascinated by what they had to offer. The angels then believed I favored them even over the mother. They had fear that this was not right in some way, and their fear opened the door to guilt. Their guilt then drew them punishment that seemed to be saying, God does not like any spirits to think that they are his favorites, and the treatment you are going to receive now will let you know how wrong you have been and will convince you that you are not God's favorites. The angels have held this judgment against themselves and have had a very hard time with the punishment guilt gave them here. They have a lot of healing of pain to do.
The angels had started on this path even then. I did not want to see them have to go down it, but I could not stop them, no matter what I tried. The angels feared my inability to help meant I was not an adequate God, or that I was unloving or that I really did not love them the way they wanted me to. Their anger and fear have both been denied, and the angels need to understand that it is not wrong to let these feelings move now. The angels have many feelings they have not let themselves know they have. Moving what can be recognized in what I have already given will open the angels to connect to the rest of what I have to tell them later. There is so much information that is needed now that I have to give a little to everyone in each book and not dwell on any order of spirits for too long. When you have really moved with what I am telling you now, you will get more. I have realized fully that what I give is the right amount at the right time. In the past, I had guilt that I was inadequate and could not provide the spirits with enough. I now know the spirits have some responsibility for themselves that I was not acknowledging then. The spirits have to understand more profoundly now than in the past also, or healing will be no more effective than past efforts have been. The quickness of spirit to assimilate information is not to be denied, but spirits desiring manifested existence must understand what that means. The spirit must find the ways to communicate this to the will that is so lost it does not even know what you are reading now, and this must be done with love present. Lack of acceptance for the will's seeming slowness is not a loving acceptance for its needs, but loving acceptance for the anger at the will must be given also. When your anger triggers you into fear, or triggers someone near you into fear, and the guilt is recognized in this pattern, you will be getting someplace, because the lost will is very afraid of the spirit's anger toward it. Some understandings the seraphims and the cherubims need now. When I went on to the cherubims and the seraphims, these two orders of spirits seem to be having little or no trouble. They seem to have found balance with one another and to have found many powers in this alliance. They already had a highly developed power to survive and to make a living an artistically creative and entertaining event. The cherubims and the seraphims have a lot of lost will on earth that needs to heal now. Their experience on earth has systematically destroyed most of their joy for living. They have appeared to grow more and more dim and broken over time. They managed to hold on to so-called magic powers longer than most other spirits on earth because they had more balance in the beginning, but they are very fragmented now, and their path of healing may seem very frightening to others who are not of their constitution. There is a vividness to everything they do that is even present in the denial they have experienced. Guilt played me regarding these spirits. Even though they weren't having real problems when we first checked them, I could see that these spirits were going to have a very difficult time. These spirits had pleased us very much when they emerged, and they also had the guilt of feeling they might be favorites of ours, especially in view of what they had seen of the Rainbow Spirits emergencies. The cherubims and seraphims thought they had really captivated our attention. They had a pride in themselves which they denied into their lost will as unbecoming. This pride believed they really were superior, but that it was not appropriate to let it be known. I contributed to this pride because I had feelings of loving them more than some of the others, and I did not think it was right to let this be known. The lost will of these spirits has incarnated as the indigenous peoples of earth. In places where the indigenous peoples have been largely wiped out, and I am speaking here of Indians for the most part, the seraphims and the cherubims have often had to reincarnate into the forms of the people who took over their land in order to continue their presence there. Dramatic reduction in Indian populations, including Mexico, Central and South America, has not allowed the essence of the cherubims and seraphims to retain enough power in the forms they had so much loved earlier, although some have kept their Indian forms. The ones incarnating into the forms of the ones who had conquered them did it partially because they had no other form available, and partially because they wanted to try to love their enemy, and to help their enemies to love and value them. They have always kept the desire for color and drama in their lifestyles, and have often ended up being outcasts among the peoples they have sought to open to their ways. The cherubims and seraphims have guilt which they have held in a state of denial that is the cause of their problems. They had guilt telling them it was not right to feel they were favorites of mine, and they have punished themselves in measure with how favored they believed they were. They also had guilt telling them from the beginning that it was not right of them to have more of everything than other spirits had. 
these spirits also had the guilt of seeming to do better than those around them. Guilt told them it was wrong to think there was any reason for their good fortune and that their day would come. They also feared that they could not keep themselves balanced if those around them were continually imbalancing themselves. They asked themselves the question, why are we doing so much better than the others? They felt they were doing well because they had superior understanding on living a manifested existence. Their unrecognized guilt told them this was foolish pride. The feeling of doing better than the other spirits around them then gave the cherubims and the seraphims the feeling that they were riding for a fall, and they got it because they could not shake the feeling that it was going to happen. They pushed these feelings away and thought it was a solution, but lost will brought its reflection to them nonetheless. These spirits need to understand that there are many reasons why they have lost many of their powers. Guilt told them it was not right to be what they were, and they were vulnerable to guilt, because somewhere inside of themselves, they knew they had asked for more power than was really theirs. Self-acceptance is what they seek. Guilt and blame, pride and shame, are all imbalances around the search for self-acceptance. These spirits feared they were riding for a fall, and that sooner or later, no matter what they did, the great leveler would come along. The longer they lived in a state of grace, the more they feared that the reversal was being drawn closer to them. Guilt also told them that sooner or later, they would be punished for their feelings of superiority. Fear was not a respected emotion in their orders of spirits, and so the fear was denied, and the feeling was surfaced as a kind of fatalistic belief system that, in many instances, eventually led them into a sacrificial approach toward the god or gods they have at different times believed me to be. The more guilt gained inroads with the cherubims and the seraphims, the more they feared that I loved them initially because they had pleased me, and that they had to continue to please me, or I would not love them. In not realizing how they were drawing punishing events into their lives, many feared they had displeased me. They feared I was punishing them for daring to believe they were favored or superior. These spirits need to understand that I love them no matter what they do. The cherubims and the seraphims also feared they had committed a sin by denying heart the way they did at their emergence, and this led them into many sacrifices involving cutting out and or eating of hearts. I did not require or want these sacrifices, but their own unrecognized guilt thought that I did. Many times when they have thought they were hearing me, it has been the voice of their own guilt instead. They need to accept having emerged to balance the polarity of male and female before they can accept manifested heart. This is the same thing that I did, and it is right for them. They did not really deny heart in the beginning, and yet they feared that they did. I have not sent punishment to the seraphims or the cherubims, and they do not need to pay for sins because they have not committed any. I have no desire for them to engage in sacrifice of any kind, and I would like them to realize that guilt is the reason for all their pain and sacrifice. I would really like the cherubims and seraphims to hear me this time and accept my help. It has been very hard for me to help them in the past because they, like many others, denied the feelings I have been discussing here and would not allow me to address the problem. Until the real feelings are accepted, real healing cannot be brought. These spirits also have another belief that needs to move now, the belief that suffering increases spiritual strength. In fact, suffering increases their lost will. While some may appear to gain strength this way, the denials involved here increased fragmentation here until some of the lost will of the cherubims and seraphims has become very broken and vacant looking and is no longer moving will. The loss of vibratory power here is another reason for loss of power. Some believe that denial makes them strong because it compresses their vibration until they feel rock hard. They have equated this with strength. Others realize that denial reduces their ability to feel, and they have equated feelings with weakness. My own unrecognized guilt also gave these spirits more power than they were really ready to handle when they emerged. Guilt was the reason the mother gave these spirits so many of her powers. She felt she was not using them as well as these spirits would be able to. I had guilt involved here also, because I had not yet realized that I was pushing more light and power onto the manifested spirits than they could actually handle in an effort to make sure that I wasn't shortchanging them to preserve my position as God. My fear and guilt about feeling attached to the role of being God was actually creating a reflection for me that was able to give me much more of a challenge for my position than I would have had otherwise 
and yet I did not, for a long time, realize how my own fear that I should not be God was creating a reflection that seemed to show me that I should not be God. There were many very powerful cherubims and seraphims in the beginning that lived for a long time on earth as wizards and magicians and made me feel that I might need to step aside in favor of them. Some of them even acknowledged that they would like to take my job. I have now balanced this in myself, but initially these spirits received a large amount of essence from me that they should not have had, and I have had to take it back as part of the healing process here. This removal of essence from the cherubims and seraphims has also contributed to their loss of powers over time. I have also been helping the mother of everything and the father of manifestation to reclaim essence that they gave out wrongly. Many of the powerful cherubims and seraphims had a fear of power and a fear of their powers and a fear that they might misuse power. These fears were largely because they had more power than was right for them to have and they were not comfortable with it. Their fears around power caused them to try to control it, rather than to let it flow naturally. Judgments against power and blockage in their will, combined with the denial of these patterns, caught them in an ever-increasing dogma and increasingly more rigid ceremonies that actually decreased their power further. Their intent here was to make sure they used their powers in a safe and balanced way, but without clearing the underlying fears and confusions, this approach was destined to failure the form of power must align with the essence of it. Healing here needs the release of old beliefs around power and the role of power on earth. It is time for many old beliefs to be released and for ceremonies to be given new forms. Healing here and restoration of lost powers is going to have to come from clearance of denial that have been held for a long time. I have taken back powers that should not have been given out, but there are still many powers that these spirits can rightfully have if they have acceptance now for the role their own wills must play in magnetizing these powers to them and in directing them. The cherubims and seraphims must desire to have these powers again if they want to regain them, and they must also not try to control powers they do not understand by putting limits on the people who have these powers. Alignment of spirit and will automatically directs power righteously. The form that ceremonies must take in the future is the form that is appropriate to the moment and the situation. Clearance in the will will allow this to be felt. Superstition has to be looked at and understood for what it is. Many cherubims and seraphims are going to try to insist that they still have plenty of power and do not want this advice. But I also know there are many who can understand what I am saying now and who can see that I am saying this from love. The fear that loss of power may have been the result of impurity in the use of or misuse of power needs to be healed. Many cherubims and seraphims have given death and guilt the power to annihilate them because they have felt they were wrong to be what they were and wrong to have greatness, strength, abundance, beauty, and power. Understanding here is that abuse and misuse of power are not possible when the ones involved are of good intent. Self-forgiveness is needed here, along with the understanding that they must allow themselves room to learn. Often they have cut others a wide margin for error and have been very hard on themselves. They have said that this was the tolerant and brave way, but lost will here is holding a rage and a fury about the treatment it has received. When this rage and fury have tried to move, it has been in a denied state, and the cherubims and seraphims have not recognized the movement as their own denied emotions. They have thought I sent this upon them as punishment for having displeased me, when in fact, it was their own denied will essence trying to get them to recognize what they had been denying. Usually these spirits have reacted by believing that they must punish themselves even more for having displeased me. The punishment involved pain that they thought they had to bear bravely. Bearing it bravely meant denying their will's response to the treatment they were giving themselves, and this increased their lost will. Increasing lost will increased essence in a state of denial that their guilt was directing against them. The devastating natural disasters the cherubims and seraphims have experienced have been their own denied will essence, sent into the earth by those who believed that this was the best place to put it. It has come back on these spirits because it is their own will essence and must be accepted and healed. It cannot be gotten rid of. The cherubims and the seraphims have to accept the emotions they have rejected and denied in the past and allow them to move now. They have a power to move the earth that can be used in a positive manner 
and this power is needed now. Judgments that they were wrong to manipulate nature in the past need to be released now, along with the understanding that manipulate was the word the judgment used. Manipulation was not what was happening here, but unclear and denied emotion in the will was making the use of power by these spirits take on forms that seemed wrong. Healing the denied will will bring the balance of form. Acceptance of how they really feel will allow them to use their powers in the ways in which they need to be used right now. Guilt must move back, however, so that it does not draw punishment to the ones who have power or use their powers. To move back, it must be recognized for what it is. Guilt must be replaced with self-acceptance. When guilt has been involved in making spirits feel that they were wrong to have the powers they have had and wrong to use them in the ways they wanted to use them, guilt has drawn punishment to those spirits. The belief that it is evil and selfish to use power to gain the results you want to have is a judgment held in place by fear of being unloving by guilt. This belief needs release now. This judgment has put quite a lot of power into a state of denial, where it has acted according to the instructions the judgments have given it. This power has to be recovered, and the ones needing to recover it must do it in secret, because the ones who have this power wrongly have evil intent and selfish motive, and do not want to give it back. This power can be recovered if you have understanding on how to do it. You will be given these understandings as we go along. For now, implementing what you have already been told will ready you for the next step. Not only do the cherubims and the seraphims need to realize that nature has come down on them because of their own misunderstandings, but other people have attacked them for the same reasons. There is no way another can attack you unless you do not love yourself. Guilt and denial have empowered these attacks. Guilt is not a loving presence. Guilt has told them they have to give respect to others, whether they deserve it or not. Guilt has told them they should not have sex unless they have readiness to pay for it by having lots of children. People who have been misled by guilt have to forgive themselves for having the misunderstandings that made them vulnerable to guilt, because they were seeking love. Love must be found now instead of guilt. Sin is a matter of intent. If intent is to be loving, then sin is not involved. Some Understandings on the Karma of the Rainbow Spirits We found the rainbow spirits in a state of disarray similar to the angels. They had mixed themselves together, but instead of being mostly white light mixed together and remaining mostly white light, they had colors which had mixed together. The rainbow spirits had made many new colors, and some of them looked good. Most of them looked like an artist's palette after someone has swooshed all the colors together until they have a darkness that does not allow the recognition of anything. We had to go order by order, but I am going to give the information all at once since they all told us the same thing. The rainbow spirits had been trying to take in white light from the angels. They had also been trying to mix themselves together to get all the colors and make themselves into white light spirits. Their efforts were having the opposite effect. The more they tried to make white light, the darker they got. We did not understand why. I have tried everything to straighten this out, and yet the auras of the rainbow spirits have, with few exceptions, continued to look like they are badly bruised. Healing needs to know why now. The rainbow spirits had a lack of self-acceptance that was motivating them. No matter how they tried to make their light to be white light, they lost light instead. They could not take in light and hold it, because the light is love, and they did not love themselves. They hated themselves in many ways and they wanted to blame me for not emerging them correctly. They all told us they had not been parented right, and that they had all been shortchanged at their emergence. If you had given us what we should have had, we would have all been white, like the spirits who get so much of your time and attention. Our home would be there also if you loved us the way you loved them. Instead, our homes are these little balls of light out here in the darkness, as though we are outcast children, bedded down in a separate part of the house from the others. We feared that we had acted wrongly toward the rainbow spirits, and we did not know it was guilt on our part that was allowing them to reflect this to us. At the time, we thought they were only confirming the uncertainty we had had around their emergences, and it looked like they might be right. We gave them then the same input they needed now, but then we had guilt that had not been recognized, and our fear around this held back the rainbow spirits' ability to receive us. We told them they needed to accept themselves for what they were, 
and that we loved them for what they were. You have no idea how we marveled at you when we looked at the rainbow you made when you first emerged. We thought it was the most beautiful addition to the creation that could have been made, we told them. Lucifer made us feel like you had given us the position of a carpet that everyone walked on to and from the Godhead. We suspect he is right because you have passed over us and not stopped to give us the attention we need and want, they answered. We had a guilty vulnerability to the words here, but we did not feel that Lucifer was right because we knew that we loved them too much to feel they were only something to pass over. I could not answer them right away because there was a voice in me saying, Maybe that is what they are. If you want them to accept themselves for what they are, don't tell them they are more than they are, because you, then, are not accepting them for what they are. Do not downgrade the carpet. Everything in creation has its place. I knew that they had given us passage somehow, and I did not know what that meant. When I did answer the rainbow spirits, they had distrust for my answer because they felt I had taken too long to come up with it. I told them then what I am telling them now. You have specialties. You have aspects of my light that all need to be developed now. The white light spirits have the overview, and you are specialists who can focus into areas of my light and develop everything that is there. The rainbow spirits had suspicion for this as though they were going to do peace work for the Godhead. I thought you had chosen this, I told them then. We found ourselves to be colors. We did not know what it meant, but now that we have seen what else there is, we want more than what we have. We do not want to be second-class citizens and have to feel like others see more and know more than we do. We want to feel like we can know everything we want to know. I now know that the Rainbow Spirits had everything they needed, but then I was not sure. Then... I had a fear that I had desired to enjoy their colored light more than they did, and that I had perhaps forced them into splits in the light that they did not want to have. I called for Hart to come in now and help me on this. Hart appeared instantly before us all, and said that he was ready to receive any and all spirits who wanted to come to him now, and that he would give them the love they needed so they could receive the light they wanted to have. The rainbow spirits did not have the response to Hart that we thought they were going to have. We thought they had been asking us to make things right with them, the way they wanted to have them, and that Hart was now offering to do this by bringing his presence to them since it had been focused in the Godhead at the time of their emergence. The Rainbow Spirits reacted with a distrust of Hart. They had the suspicion that he was being condescending toward them, and, in some subtle way, offering to give them something, and then saying they could not have it because they could not receive it. The Rainbow Spirits feared they could not increase their white light because they had not succeeded in their earlier attempts to receive it from the angels. They did not like the way they felt around Hart because Hart was ready to love them and they were not ready to love themselves. The Rainbow Spirits had many feelings they needed to move in them before they could open to receive Hart's love. The Rainbow Spirits had guilt about how they had emerged that was not letting them know that it was all right. They feared they had responded to something in us that was not acceptable even to us, because we had gotten in a fight about it, right in the middle of emerging them. They felt many feelings they feared they could not bring forward to us, because we had touched these feelings during our fight, and had decided that denying these feelings was the only way we could preserve our love for one another. They wanted to get out of their guilt by blaming others. Later, I am going to bring forward all of the feelings that have been held for so long in a state of denial. But first, healing work needs to be done with the feelings that were most present then and are still affecting the spirits who have held the misunderstandings around these feelings for so long. The rainbow spirits have continued to feel that they got shortchanged and this has caused them to act out in ways that look to others like they have a chip on their shoulder. They also have lost will which has wanted to take what they believe they have not been given. The desire to take has gone all the way from making others feel guilty enough to give them more than they want to give them, to conning others, to being shrewd in ways that have made others feel cheated, on into outright thievery and crookedness. The rainbow spirits have always had a flair for making others feel guilty. They have so much guilt themselves, it is easy for them to know how guilt works on others. The rainbow spirits have many guilts that need to move out now, and I would like to give some of their most prevalent patterns. Many times in the past when I have tried to give the Rainbow Spirits this information, they have feared receiving it because they thought it meant that I did not love them. 
the feelings underneath the guilt must move, because the feelings must move the guilt out. Guilt has no consciousness to move out on its own. If feelings that have not been vibrating, because guilt has held them down, begin vibrating because the person now has acceptance for the feelings, the space guilt occupied is then filled by these feelings, and guilt has to leave. The guilts that need to move out now are mostly guilts around feelings the rainbow spirits have had, so discussing the guilts and the feelings together is the best way to give these understandings. The rainbow spirits have felt jealousy of spirits they perceive to be having less trouble than they have had, and yet, they have rarely been able to understand what others have really experienced, because they have been so caught up in their own problems. The rainbow spirits have fear now that they have no home on earth, and that if they are going to have a home on earth, they will have to fight for it, or experience it being reluctantly given. Even when they have given to one another, there has often been reluctance to do so, because of lost will's fear that there might not be anything more, so they must hold on to what they have. They have tried to take care of what they have, and have not seen others as having the same appreciation for things that they have. They have been accused of hoarding for this reason. The rainbow spirits have confusion in their orders about position and age that also need to be mentioned now. They had emergence and a progression of colors, and they had two lines of spirits emerge. The first line went down through the rainbow and had more white light with it than gold light. The second line came back up through the rainbow and had more gold light than white light. The reason for this is that the rainbow spirits emerged their spirit polarity first, and then their will polarity. They emerged polarized, similarly to the seraphims and the cherubims, except that the rainbow spirits never accepted their will polarity as much as the seraphims accepted the cherubims. This is because there was not as much acceptance for the feelings around their emergences as there had been in earlier emergences. The rainbow spirits had more guilt at emergence than the other spirits did, and they have suffered with it ever since. When we got to the rainbow spirits, they had already begun fighting among themselves about who had the best position. They felt left out of the Godhead and claimed they did not like the homes we had made for them. They had never gone to these homes to find out if they liked them or not. They told us when we visited them this time that the Godhead was the best home and they wanted to live there. We loved the planets we had opened for them and wondered why they had never gone there to find out what we had created there. We had made each planet different, but they all had certain things in common. Each planet had an atmosphere that would allow the spirits to vibrate themselves, and each had a light that would nourish the spirits in the ways that they needed and liked best. Some were more opalescent and pastel, while others were more vivid and stable. Some had greater natures than others. Some had more animals than others, but all had the feelings of the spirits themselves. We could not get the rainbow spirits to believe us that their homes were just as wonderful in their own way as the homes of the angels, and that they needed homes that were different than the angels in order to fulfill themselves and be happy. The lost will of the rainbow spirits has not yet accepted their right place as the place they would like to be. They have been wandering ever since they emerged. They have wandered the inner planes and the outer ones. They have mastered astral travel, and the ones that have not remained on earth have mastered space travel. The rainbow spirits came to earth long ago in large numbers, and most of them left after a while, just as they had left every other place they had gone. The rainbow spirits left many behind when they departed, because many had lost the power to leave. Most of the rainbow spirits that were left behind were from the will polarity. Their magnetic nature had gotten too enmeshed in the magnetic energy field of earth for them to be able to leave with the others. There was a great sadness at the departure on the part of the ones left behind. They felt they were being abandoned in a place that was not right for them. They felt guilt for having the magnetic energy that could not leave with the rest. Now, the spirits that have been gone for so long have begun to spend time near Earth again. Many have tried to contact them. They have come for the ones they have left behind, but they have been gone for so long that most of the rainbow spirits here have given up on the promise these spirits made so long ago to come back and get them when they found their true home. The rainbow spirits that have been left for so long on earth have tried to tell themselves that it is not right to hope for a better life than the one they have right here on earth, but they could not help but hope for it anyway. Besides patterns of wandering as gypsies, circus and carnival people, wandering minstrels and magicians, 
Much of the lost will of the rainbow spirits on earth have been the Jewish people. They have had an old wish to be chosen, to be lifted out of here and taken home to Zion. Their guilt about this has caused them to be punished over and over in very unloving ways. The Jewish people have made others feel that Jews cannot accept other ways of life because they have a better one. They have covered their fear of inferiority with an air of superiority, and the lack of self-acceptance involved in this whole rainbow spirit pattern has drawn punishment which has dragged them down into some of the lowest realities available on earth. They have given themselves in the name of love, but it has been guilt they have given themselves to. What guilt does to its victims is not a loving thing to feel, or a pretty thing to see. There is a huge backlog of emotion that needs to move around the experiences of many of the rainbow spirits on earth. The rainbow spirits have never found a land that really feels like it belongs to them, because earth is not their planet, and they have never accepted their true homes. They have always fought among themselves about who has the best position in relationship to me. The rainbow spirits have had pride, competition, and lack of self-acceptance standing in their way. They all had bright and beautiful colors when they emerged, but they did not stay that way for long. Almost immediately, they began to try to look like something other than what they were. Their lack of self-acceptance created a reality around them that did not accept them. Spirits face their own reflection, whether they recognize it or not. Spirits that do not accept themselves will manifest surroundings that do not accept them either. The Jews have seen themselves as victims because the spirits whose denials they have held did not want to take responsibility for themselves. From the beginning, the rainbow spirits wanted to blame God for their troubles, and later they extended this blame to the angels for not parenting them well enough in God's absence. As time went on, the rainbow spirits have blamed any who have not given them what they have wanted to have. There are some rainbow spirits who have incarnated into other patterns now, but in the past, many rainbow spirits had many of their lives within the Jewish culture. This has to be understood to understand the karma they face, whether they are presently incarnated in a Jewish form or not. They have all dreamed for so long of a wonderful home for themselves that is not on earth. I am not asking them to give up this dream now, but I would like them to give up the guilt that has said either they will never get there, or they must pay a terrible price to get there. I would also like them to stop believing they must die to leave earth. The rainbow spirits need to understand that it is not wrong that they have been lost for so long. They had too many confusions to know what home was for them until they had had a lot of experience to teach them. They also need to understand that it was not wrong to have emerged as they did. The rainbow spirits need to understand that the kind of orgasms that called them forth are not wrong just because they were not like the ones that had happened before. They also need to understand that the father of manifestation is a rightful part of creation and that I was only having sex in my body with my spirit present when they emerged. I did not fully recognize manifested form as a part of myself then, but now I do. All the conditioning they have received around this has to move now. They have been considered too materialistic because guilt has caused their love for form to materialize in a state of denial. Their sex lives have not taken the form they would like them to have either, because their guilt told them that the form they responded to was wrong. Guilt and old denied emotions need to move here, and the light of the spirit needs to come in as it never has before. The rainbow spirits have a sexual guilt that is deeply buried in religious arguments that even include rules about what positions are appropriate for lovemaking. Their sexual guilt is all related to what was going on with us when they emerged. Having had so much guilt about what they enjoyed the most, they have tried to deny it to themselves in an effort not to repeat what they view as their original sin. A lusty interest in sex is not wrong if you have love present for it. The guilt they have had about heart has never really let the rainbow spirits believe that love and sex can really go together. After all, where was heart when they emerged? Moses reflected a lot of their guilt to them, and he gave the Jews many more laws than are listed in the modern Bible. I would especially like to see an end to circumcision, which was really not so much a matter of health, as it was a question of guilt making the rainbow spirits feel they needed to do something to reduce their sensitivity, and therefore, their interest in sex. Circumcision and health problems in the genitals are both symptoms of the same kinds of guilts. 
Just because we did not understand everything that happened when the creation emerged does not mean that understanding cannot come later. Lack of understanding does not mean that what happened was wrong. At the time of the emergence of the rainbow spirits, we had to go on our instincts. Our instincts turned out to be right, but then we did not know if they were right or wrong. We have learned since then that if we feel like doing something, it will not be wrong, even if the lesson we learn is a bitter one. The more we learn, the less bitter the lessons have to be. We had plenty of feelings in denial when we emerged the rainbow spirits, and they are hard feelings to heal now, but not impossible. Old feelings just need to move here so that they can receive new understandings. Love really was present here in all the feeling we had. We just did not realize it because we were afraid to trust ourselves in some areas. Lost Will now needs to know that it is not going to be possible to give everything it needs to know right now in this book. If Lost Will gets healing moving with what has been given here, Lost Will will get more when it needs it. The will polarity of the rainbow spirits is not wrong to feel so much distrust of its spirit polarity. The will polarity has been getting denied almost from the very beginning. As the rainbow spirits were emerging, the lost will was already increasing because of denials in the spirit polarity. The line of rainbow spirits that had more white light thought they had been more favored by me. This line of rainbow spirits has more sexual guilt than the will polarity because there was less alignment around will leading us into manifestation than there was around spirit leading us back home. The spirit polarity of the rainbow spirits tried to say that they had not emerged first. They had insistence for a long time that they had actually emerged in the gentle orgasms. When we asked the rainbow spirits to go to their place of emergence, the spirit polarity of the rainbow spirits tried to lump together in the place they judged to be best. They all tried to go to the place where the purple spirits had emerged. They all believed that this was the best spot. The rainbow spirit saw this place of emergence as the place that was closest to me, and therefore the best position to have. They even pushed and shoved one another trying to get in the line up there. They had no desire to help one another get in place because they could not accept the places they had. They had no more self-acceptance in their lost will now than they had then. They have to go to their wills now and help them to move these old feelings. The rainbow spirits have felt like crowding is part of life. They have also not liked letting anyone else get a position they think is better than their own. It is now time to realize that all the colors have the love of God in them if the spirits can accept themselves enough to let the light pour in. I want to give some additional understandings now on how the rainbow spirits lost so much of their color. Lucifer told the rainbow spirits that they had emerged too late to get the full spectrum of light and that they were going to have to be happy with what they did get. Lucifer also told the rainbow spirits that the angels got preferential treatment in the Godhead that the rainbow spirits did not even know about. He told them there was more light there than they had ever seen. He also told them that I had no love for the way they had emerged, and that I thought they were pushy and had emerged too fast. He told them that the mother did not like it that there were so many of them, and that she had not wanted to take care of them from the very beginning because it would interfere with her sex life. The rainbow spirits had fear and guilt then telling them that God wanted them to slow down, hold back, and reduce their numbers. They all thought I would favor the ones that had the most light, and that I would not eliminate them. The scramble for position not only included trying to have their place of emergence look like it was the closest to me, but their desire to take in more light became involved now also. The ones who had taken in the most light thought they had the best chance to be favored by me. The purples and blues thought they had emerged closer to me than the rest of the colors, and they believed this made them superior. The purples and blues who had emerged with white light came to feel that they were the oldest, wisest, and best of all the rainbow spirits, because they had emerged first, and they were, therefore, the most favored. Their wills, who had the gold light, did not like it that they were supposed to take a back seat to them. When the purples and blue would not give way to any of the other colors, they all began jockeying for position around the green spirits. It may help to think of the rainbow spirits as the chakras of my body. When Hart gave up on getting the rainbow spirits to receive him and went back to the angels, the rainbow spirits took this to mean that they had a problem taking light in, 
and that their own heart was not even good enough to receive the heart of God. They told their own green heart spirits to move back because they had not had what it took to let the heart of God remain present with them like he did with the heart angels. They also told their heart spirits that they all had to receive heart through them, and so heart of the rainbow spirits had to let them all down. This was a way for all the other colors to say that green was the problem so that they did not have to face their own fears about themselves. The yellow spirits tried to crowd into green's place then. Yellow said that green might not be necessary at all since green could be made on the spot if yellow was allowed to get next to blue. Orange did not like this because orange felt it would be eliminated next if red said that it was going to move in next to yellow. Orange tried to protect itself by turning on red and saying that red had caused the fight that God had during their emergencies. Orange told red it was too hot and that the red spirit should get back before they caused more passion and more fighting in an already troublesome situation. Orange told Red it wasn't acceptable because it had already shown what kind of energy it had. Orange secretly thought Purple would get eliminated if Red went. The Blue Spirits liked Orange for this because Blue began to feel that it was a real color, and Purple was not. Blue then claimed it was really the right color to be heading up all the orders. The Blue Spirits who had white light felt they had come out on top without even having to try. They took this to mean that they had an innate superiority that was not arguable. These spirits had more confidence in themselves than any other order of rainbow spirits. These spirits have never incarnated as Jewish people. They have always incarnated in whatever form they felt was the favorite form in the societies in which they chose to live. The blue spirits who have gold have often felt magnetized to incarnate near their blue spirit polarities, but they have not fared as well as the blue whites because they have never believed themselves to be fully worthy of the position that their spirits have sought. The entire second line of rainbow spirits, who had more gold light than the first line, had originally emerged with brighter colors than the first line, but began to lose them when the first line said that they were better, because they were more pastel like the angels. The second line defended itself by attacking the angels. The will polarity of the rainbow spirits accused the angels of being wispy, and having no real substance. The will polarity of the rainbow spirits also had more defined forms. When form seemed to come under attack, they gave the retort that no one else had the guts to define themselves. They said that everyone else liked to vacillate, change, and mix together because they were all afraid of themselves. They said that lack of substance and definition was a weakness, not a virtue. The mother liked the attitude of the will of the rainbow spirits, because she didn't like getting blamed for everything. Here were finally some will spirits who were not apologizing and feeling guilty about themselves like the fourth order of angels had done. She was so happy to see some will present speaking her own point of view and having some spunk about it that she did not let herself see how defensive they were really being to cover their fear of being the least preferred of all spirits. The will polarity of the rainbow spirits had been judged against from the very beginning for having taken after the mother, all the spirits thought that I favored the ones who took after me and that I was in the power position in creation. They all had gotten the impression that I did not love the mother as much as I loved the children who took after me. Therefore, there was fear that children who took after the mother were the least favored by me, even after the mother. When the mother spoke out in favor of will presence, the spirits who took after me had some fear that they were rejected by the mother. Defense on each side began to emerge as a growing tendency to deny the importance of the other side. By the time this reached the bottom of the line, which was judged to be the will polarity of the rainbow spirits in the colors of yellow, orange, and red, these spirits had taken in so much judgment and denial, and had so much guilt about themselves, that they began to look quite dark and smudged in an unpleasant way. I had preference for all the colors to accept themselves and glow brightly the way they had done when they had first emerged, but it seemed that there was nothing I could do here. The colors who had judged themselves to be superior to the others were all clumping together to try to make sure there was no room for other colors to push their way in. They did not want to accept even one little spirit because they were all afraid that even one would then try to make room for the rest of his kind. The red spirits who were the most frightened that I might eliminate them if I really decided there were too many rainbow spirits, had made pacts with one another to stick together for their mutual defense and survival, even if they had to go to the extremes of pushing others out of the way. Rather than have a few reds survive by hiding in with the purples, red decided they would rather displace all the purples if they could. 
They wanted to stick together because they felt the most threatened. The red spirits later felt guilt that they behaved this way in front of me, but they were very afraid that they would not survive unless they fought for their lives. The red spirits were not wrong in feeling that they had to fight for their lives because they were being given the most denial. Some have tried to make alliances with purple by pointing out that without red, purple does not exist. Orange spirits of the will polarity were the next in line for receiving denials in the rainbow spirits' as pecking order. They got blamed for being more sexually passionate than was considered to be attractive or acceptable to spirit. They had throats and tongues, and they were blamed for being too involved in oral and sexual appetites. The rest of the spirits talked about red and orange as though they were not part of the rest of the group. These two colors got blamed for most of the things that are judged against on earth in the nature of man. They were said to be warring by nature, clannish, pushy, passionate, sensual, sexually intense, orally insatiable, and emotionally extreme. Rage is the most denied emotion in these orders, and it is also the source of their greatest power. These spirits need to give themselves acceptance now and bring their denied essence within the light of God. They have had my love for longer than they know, but they had a rough beginning because I feared I didn't know how to give them the light they needed. They have struggled to survive on their own for a long time, and I want them to receive the help they need now. They have great power to survive, to be physically vital and to express creatively, if they have enough self-acceptance to be able to open and receive the light they need. Expressing the feelings they felt then, when they were so judged against, is an important part of their healing so that they can open to the light they need. The other colors argued their points, but did not take as many actions as the more threatened oranges and reds did. No matter how they were judged against by the other colors, each color had reasons to believe within themselves that they were the best and the most important. The indigo spirits had not said much at all during any of this, and they felt they were superior because of their composure and inner strength. The blue spirits have always believed they are the greatest expressionists there are. The indigo spirits have always quietly dismissed the self-importance of blue because they believe blue is nothing without them to supply the inner model for their outer performance. The purple spirits have always maintained that they are the best because they receive inspiration directly from me and the rest of the colors just implement their instructions. Purple whites have always believed they received more of my personal attention than any of the others, but knowing they had red in them has made them wonder how I manifest spirit this way if I do not like red. Everyone needs to know that I love red. I just did not know how to handle the feelings I first had when I had to trust will and body to guide me into manifestation, when I was so used to being the guide myself. I know now that red and orange need to move their rage over being denied acceptance for their right places for so long. Red and orange are not wrong to have the great intensity they have, and it is necessary that they have it. They have the strength necessary to anchor me in manifestation, hold me there, and allow me to survive. Red has the power to hold open the space needed to survive, and Orange has the power to creatively fill that space with what is needed to survive there. These spirits only become warring when their survival is threatened. They have always felt that if they have to attack the ones threatening the survival of others, they will do that. They need to understand, though, how important self-acceptance is in being able to live without having others attack them. Yellow was not wrong in having the merriment of sunshine in its emergence pattern. I have finally gotten these spirits to listen to me, but their lost will still needs to understand that they are the heart of the mother. Some of what Yellow felt when it wanted to displace Green was that they were heart also, and they were not being recognized for it. The heart of the mother is the intuitional center that feels what a balanced action for the mother is. Green is the heart of all, and must receive from both the mother and the father. Green has trouble maintaining its color if the other spirits do not maintain their colors. Green is meant to balance everything from all the colors, and give it the manifestation needed. The rainbow spirits need to discover their own heart by balancing the spirit and the will polarity. There is a lot of healing to do first, because the colors have been muddy and denied for so long. Healing needs to happen now. Rather than putting it off in favor of guilt punishing the rainbow spirits, any more for failing to see themselves as worthy enough in the sight of God, just for being who they are. 
If the rainbow spirits are now ready to heal and begin manifesting their gifts instead of their denials, they have gifts of great beauty to give. Having gone down so far, many of the rainbow spirits envision healing as finally coming out onto this would not be balanced either. Any swing of the pendulum always swings back again until balance is found. The swing upward has increased guilt and the swing down has increased blame. Neither has worked out so far. The balance of spirit and will is important now because neither one can live without the other and harmony can never be found unless they balance in the heart. I have gone the whole road of imbalance with the will and for those who would like my help, I have much more information to give. What I am giving now is what can be given in this first book on original calls. At the time of the emergence of the rainbow spirits, I gave them what light I could, and they received what light they could accept. There needs to be acceptance for this now. Guilt and blame are not necessary, but these must be moved in the lost will before healing balance can be found. Fear and terror lie underneath guilt, and anger and rage lie underneath blame. Getting guilt and blame to move means accepting the emotions because denial made space for their presence. Because the rainbow spirits felt so guilty, they were looking for a way to blame others to get out from under the feeling of guilt. It has not worked because blame and guilt are not really different from one another. When guilt has gone as far as it can go in one direction, it begins to shift back in another. The one receiving this presence perceives it as guilt, and the one pushing it away perceives its form as blame but the guilt itself has not changed. The rainbow spirits feared that I blamed them for the things I have been discussing here, and when they could no longer tolerate the feeling, they sought to shift it back by blaming me. The denial present did not allow me to address the core of the problem here with the rainbow spirits either. I could not even get the rainbow spirits to let me straighten out their mixed up colors. Although they insisted that their colors were mixed the way they wanted them to be, they really feared that they might be found to be colors I did not favor if they allowed me to straighten them out. They didn't even want to admit to the fear in case it might turn out to be right. I found that Lucifer had spoken to the fears of all the spirits in ways that had made them afraid to speak of them again, because he had been able to make spirits feel their fears were right. While I had been trying to help the rainbow spirits straighten out their misunderstandings, the father of manifestation had been trying to help them with problems they were having maintaining their forms. He had not had any more success than I had had. The mother had been trying to get the rainbow spirits to accept their wills as part of themselves, and she had had even less luck than I had had. The rainbow spirits all had feared that they had emerged wrong, and they had blamed their wills for having moved at the wrong time. The spirit polarity would not accept the will polarity, because then they would have had to take responsibility for the movement of their wills. The spirit polarity felt guilty that they had come forth in response to feelings that I had not seemed to accept, and they felt that blaming their wills made them look more acceptable to me. No matter how we tried to allay their fears and straighten out their misunderstandings, we could not do it then. The rainbow spirits, like most of the other spirits, were going to have to have more experience before they would be able to see that they had misinterpreted my intent. I had loving intent whether I understood everything I was doing at first or not. The rainbow spirits had loving intent, and we all had guilt. At that time, we did not realize that guilt was an unloving thing to have. We did not know what was going to happen as a result of the presence of guilt. We had many problems manifesting the creation, and we have many problems to heal now, but they are healable if there is intent to heal them. Forgiveness is a very important part of this healing because it is not possible to go back and change what has already happened, except by changing the way we feel about it. The will cannot be pressured to forgive before it is really ready, because the forgiveness would not be real, but intent to reach forgiveness can allow intense old emotions to move without continuing old hostilities. The will has to go through all of its pain and then forgive everything. Judging the will, no matter how subtly, for how long it takes to do this, is not giving it the acceptance it needs. Spirit has to respond to the will with the feelings it has also. Spirit has responsibility for causing the will's response, and spirit has to let the will know how it feels about the will's response to it. You have to understand, it is not a one-way street to balance this. 
The spirit cannot just preach to the will, and the will cannot just rave on without spirit helping will to understand itself. Lucifer has no intent to be loving or to help the will understand itself. Hearing the will's response when it has blame for the spirit is not an easy thing to do, but the will must be accepted for how it feels now. The will has a valid case for blaming the spirit, but the will must move the blame and forgive the spirit for not knowing what effect a denial was going to have on the will. You have to understand that behavior is not the issue here. Misunderstandings are. In other words, there is no reason to forgive yourself for having sexual orgasm that was the greatest thrill of your life. It is important to forgive yourself for judging that how you achieved this was not acceptable in the sight of God. This single judgment has done more to produce the presence of the light on earth than any other single thing that has ever happened there. I understand how spiritual leaders have thought that having sexual relationships has increased the darkness on earth, but they have confused the form and the essence and mistakenly judged the forms. It is not the act of having sexual relations that has increased the presence of death on earth. It is the act of having sexual relations in the presence of denial that has increased the presence of death on earth. Sex has to be accepted now for what it is meant to be, an act of love that increases the presence of the light. When you have no guilt involved, you have no possibility of having a child unless you want to have one. Do not assume that you have no further need for birth control once you have received this understanding. You have guilt, or you would not have ever even thought that it was possible to have an unwanted child. Pretending that every child that comes is wanted is not convincing evidence that you do not have guilt either. Some Judgments That Need Release Now I want to give some examples of how some people have manifested sexual guilt in their lives. The examples I'm going to use are groups of people that are known in the United States because they have received media coverage. The media coverage has made them well known enough to be examples from which many can learn. Before I discuss them, I would like to list some judgments that need to be given up now. I forgive myself for having believed so long that is the preface for all of these judgments. I have been favored by God over others, or God has favored others over me. I have more light than I should have, or I have less light than I should have. I was given or took more than I should have or I was given, or took, less than I should have. I emerged in the wrong place, either too soon or too late. I have no way to heal this now. I have too little essence left to gather myself together again. I have no guidance to help me through this. I have been forsaken by God, just like everyone else on earth. I have no recourse because I have only myself to blame, or... Others are to blame and they don't care about me. I hate having to feel pain because once my real pain starts, it never ends. I hate God for not letting me know what emergence was going to be like. I hate God for not parenting me in such a way that I could avoid the problems I am having now. I hate God for not being there when I need him. Or, I hate myself because I'm the God that was not there for myself. I hate God for not making me understand what he was trying to teach me. I hate myself for not knowing how to live the way I want to live. I hate myself for not being somebody else that I could love better. I hate everyone else for giving me so little help. I had to let guilt tell me that it was not right to have the feelings I have. I had to let guilt tell me to sacrifice myself for everyone else. I had to let guilt tell me I was never good enough to have, get, be what I wanted. You have many more personal judgments, but I would like you to know that you all have these judgments in common on earth. Even if you think that you do not have these judgments, you have them in one form or another. There are many on earth who think that guilt is not a problem for them anymore, and it is largely for these people that I am going to give the examples I am now going to give although everyone has something to learn here. Just as you may think that you have the understandings you need already, you must learn to understand what I am telling you in a new light. I have given many understandings many times, and they have not been understood, 
or I would not have to be giving them again now. It is important to understand what judgment and release really is, and I have given you the information you need if you can learn to apply it. I would like to mention the word release before I go on. Release to most people has meant letting go or getting free, and this is right. The manner in which this is done is all important. If you release yourself by getting rid of part of yourself, you have not released yourself at all. You have only gotten rid of something. Anything you get rid of will come back later, whether it has to change its form or not. What is yours is yours, and cannot be gotten rid of. You have responsibility for it, and no one else can take it in and handle it for you. Even Jesus did not die for your sins. He cannot do it for you. Drugs cannot do it for you. Affirmations cannot do it for you. Divorce cannot do it for you. Abortion cannot do it for you. Getting rid of the form of something that has caused you trouble in the past does not mean that your essence will not create it again. Sometimes, you may not recognize the new forms this creation takes on at first, but sooner or later, if you have loving intent to learn, you will recognize the recurring patterns. The patterns are what you need to look at to recognize the underlying judgments. For example, if you have a long string of lovers and none of them give you the enjoyment you seek, you need to realize the problem is your own sexual guilt and not the partner's. If you have guilt, your partners will also have guilt, but they are not the cause of your problems. If you have one you can trust, though, you may be the mutual solution for one another. Anything you bring forward will trigger the complementary pattern in your partner if healing work is going to be possible there. If this does not happen, do not pursue the issue with that person, because you are facing denial in another that you have not recognized in yourself yet, and you will get blamed for everything. You have to realize that it is not right to go forth with emotional release just because you have read about it. You must feel that it is safe to do it in the place and form in which you are going to do it. Release is a matter of letting old patterns move within you and express outwardly as actions when they need to. This is not the same thing as getting rid of a pattern by shoving it out, for this is what created lost will in the first place. Lost will now must be healed by being taken back in by the ones who pushed it out and healed in such a way that lost will can change its outlook and increase its understandings. It is not possible to let lost will go on any more in the form it has taken outside of the spirits to whom it belongs. Most of the lost will has become destructively dark because it has been deprived of light for so long. Its desperation is because its survival is threatened. Light is necessary for life, although Lucifer told many it was not and that they should not need it. He shamed many spirits into thinking they were like babies who refused to be weaned when they wanted to continue receiving my light instead of making their own. This also has to be forgiven now. Receiving light from me is not wrong. It is necessary. If I am not fully present when you open an orgasm, you do not take in light. You take in death. If you have some part of yourself that you do not accept, and everyone does, I am not fully present. Does this mean that you have to give up sex until you are fully healed? This would be ideal if you could do it. But as I have said, living is a question of balance. The denial involved in suppressing sexual energy would not promote healing any more than having sex in the presence of denial would. Because of this, there was a long time during which I felt uncertain about how healing could take place. I finally realized that intent makes the difference. Gaining understanding also helps. As long as most people believed that having sex was taking them to hell, they went ahead and helped themselves along the way. Now, if people find out that it is all right to have sex in the presence of love, they will be able to start increasing the light. Getting alignment in the part of you that is still vibrating is a most important first step. Then reaching the layers of denial as they have readiness to unfold themselves to you is the next phase of healing. If you have intent to heal, you need to know that it is not wrong to go at the speed that feels right to you. If you have an urgent driven feeling about the healing that you need to do, you need to go to the fear that lies underneath this. The urgency is not wrong. It is letting you know that you are terribly afraid for your own survival. If you are afraid for your survival, you have good reason to be. But giving the presence of the fear the recognition and acceptance that it needs and allowing it movement 
will strengthen your ability to survive, which will, in turn, calm your fear. The fear is trying to say that you have not been responding to your needs enough to make the will feel you are able to survive. Urgency means you are now recognizing this, but driving yourself to heal will not allow the rest you need, and the will will still be frightened that you are not sensitive to your needs. Urgency has a place, but it is not to gain control of you at the expense of everything else. On the other hand, if you are talking healing, but not getting down to business, you have fear also. You have to go to the fear and let it move. Guilt may be another reason. You may have so much guilt telling you your emotions are unacceptable, dangerous, too intense, or whatever your judgments are against them, that you may need to start by recognizing judgments and giving release here first. Some call this giving yourself permission. You will have to accompany this approach by feeling your fear of emotional expression. Fragmentation Incarnating into Successive Generations Now, to the examples of generations in America. I have chosen these examples because they have received enough public attention that they are known to many, because they had denials that need to be looked at now, and not surprisingly, because they are incarnations of groups I have already mentioned in this book. These people all had denials that incarnated as children in their families, which is why I want to give these examples now. When sexual relationships take place in the presence of denial, you may not get the spirit you think you're going to get when you have a child. Most of the children born of these relationships are not really spirits. They are fragments of spirits or denied will of the spirits involved. They have karma with their parents and they have reflections to give. How lovingly or unlovingly the reflections are given is dependent upon the judgments held in the situation and the amount of love present in the judgments. If these families have love among the fragments and just lack understanding on how to keep fragmentation from happening, they feel more complete as a family unit. If there is lack of love and acceptance toward the essence that has fragmented, these families are more comfortable separated from one another than they are when they are together. Some of these people have so much guilt that they do not allow themselves to know whether they like one another or not. These spirits fragmented when they felt they could not handle everything at once. Some of the denials held by the fragments are loved by the parental part of the spirit, and some are not. Some of the greatness these spirits originally had was denied into fragments when guilt told them to diminish themselves. The progression of generations here followed the progression of the denials in the parental parts of the spirits involved. What one generation could not accept in itself, the next generation reflected in a state of denial. The first generation involved here came to America in droves. They had an adventuresome, inventive, pioneering spirit that wanted to make themselves a better life. They tried various lifestyles as farmers, pioneers, craftsmen, and artisans, and merchants and traders. They began building America into what it is now. Some of these people had an affinity to the Indians in many ways that are not recorded in history or brought forward much anymore. The problems between these newcomers to America and the Indians were, at first, basically because there were so many of the newcomers that the Indians felt crowded by their lifestyles. The Indians had the feeling of being pushed back to make room for the newcomers, and these Indians then made other tribes feel pressure to move back also. The newcomers had left Europe to gain religious, personal, and economic freedom. They had been unable to prevail with the establishment there, and had decided to seek a better life for themselves by leaving their problems in Europe. These people had a desire for a fresh start, and a lifestyle that was less restricted by rules and limitations. They also had religious misunderstandings and sexual guilt that were not moving at the time. These spirits had much of their wills in a state of denial, just as they had had from the very beginning. They wanted to allow only the feelings that felt good to them, and they believed these emotions were the only ones that were acceptable to God. These people had sexual energy, but they did not believe it was right, so they held it back as much as they could. Even so, they had many children because the guilt involved here dictated this as the price they had to pay for having sexual relations. The children these people parented reflected their parents' guilts to them and made the parents feel that their guilts were right. 
what the parents thought they had left behind in Europe had very quickly reincarnated into their lives again. Their children had the desire to bring limitations and rules back into their lives again, and one of the main arguments they used was that there were now too many people to continue with the old ways of letting individuals govern their own lives. This generation wanted to pass laws, fence the land, regulate business, and increase government in general. This guilt generation told their parents that they were going to have to step aside because their children had the ideas needed to organize the country and to give it the form it needed to progress into the vision their parents had given but could not manifest without their children's help. The parents here had faced this reflection before in Europe and had no better idea how to heal it there than they had when they faced it again in their children. The guilt was not recognized then, nor was it known that underneath the guilt lay denied emotions that were empowering their fragments. For example, fear was being held in a state of denial when these people left Europe. Their fear had been judged as something that would hold them back. In trying to leave their fears behind, instead of taking them in and healing them, the fears had received the judgment that they were not to move and show themselves for what they were, because fears were limiting, unacceptable, and a sign of weakness. The children who were holding these denied fears did not then present themselves as being afraid. Instead, they had a very annoying look of weakness to them that most of the parents did not allow themselves to see or respond to. This next generation continually justified itself in the face of every argument their parents could present and had a feeling of self-righteousness which was actually infuriating, although the response to this was denied as unloving. If response had been given in the presence of the unrecognized guilt, the parents would have been punished for being unloving toward their children. These children succeeded in having their way. They placed limitations on life in America that were designed to limit a movement to the levels that the fears could handle. The fears, then, did not have to feel themselves or be triggered into motion, but the expansionism and freedom their parents had felt without this reflection could not continue either. Since balance had not been found within, the imbalance was also manifesting outwardly by giving first one side the upper hand and then the other side. The problem with this approach is that there is no movement or evolution involved, only compromises and a taking of turns, so to speak. This generation of guilt was holding denied fear and also denied anger. The guilt that was not allowing the emotions to move made it appear as though fear and anger were entities, separate from one another and unable to mingle in balance because of the lack of real movement. The fear fragments made and enforced the rules, sometimes with the help of certain kinds of anger fragments. Most of the denied anger manifested as a parallel batch of fragments whose lives made it appear as though all the limitations and rules were necessary. When this guilty generation of denied emotion had children, they gave birth to more denials. They had children that were fragments of denied greatness that wanted to rush ahead of everything that was trying to hold them back. Their parents were very strict with them and tried to invoke religion to control them. These children began in small ways and grew into the great era of entrepreneurs, builders, and far-sighted investment bakers. Their imbalances made it appear that another round of limitations was needed. The next generation was another guilt generation that fenced the ranges, moved the Indians onto reservations, had a war over states' rights, and forced law and order into places where it had not been before. And, of course, the anger fragments made it look like the shutting down of expansionism was right, because their abuses were seen more extreme than the imbalances of the fragments of denied greatness. When this guilt generation had children, they had another generation of denials. The children born to these parents were also fragments of the first generation that I gave as examples here. They were also part of the denied greatness I mentioned earlier. The parental parts of the spirits who denied this greatness in themselves did it because they are not able to handle all of their own greatness unless they move their fear of their own greatness and power. When the self cannot accept something in itself, it feels it is wrong to have it. This feeling allows guilt to move in and tell the spirit involved that it is right to deny itself in this way. Guilt told these spirits that they had too high an opinion of themselves, that they were too much, and that they needed to diminish themselves. Guilt also told them that the fear was to let them know that they were not right to go ahead as they were. Fear is meant to hold you back, but moving fear does not hold you back indefinitely. 
It allows you to go ahead as you are ready to. Moving fear does not mean getting it out of the way and going ahead in spite of it. When this happens, the fear goes into a state of denial where it does not move. It then acts like a separate entity that holds the spirit back from what it wants to do because that is the way the fear has been judged. In this case, the spirits who denied it got ahead of it for a little while, and then it manifested in front of them and began telling the spirits whose fear it was why the fear would have to put limits on them again. The generation that had the denied fear and the guilt about having the fear also had plenty of sexual repression involved in the denials it was holding. There was also a parallel batch of fragments holding the denied anger, which gave the reflection that it was not right to be free because some would abuse the freedom. The generation of denied greatness gave the impression of being less sexually repressed than their parents, but they had overridden their guilt to give this impression. Their guilt manifested in the form of increased diseases which made them think that their parents had been right. This generation also had an increase in reproductive problems that gave the impression that birth needed to take place in hospitals or it might not be safe. Although this generation had many inventors, innovators, and creative people that brought America into what could be termed the modern world, they still had denials involved that did not allow them the success they could have if they attained the balance that healing is needing to bring now. These people had a generation of guilt for parents who held them back, in many ways, from attaining the full measure of success they were seeking. The generations of guilt stayed in power for a long time by telling their parents they must step aside in their favor and then telling their own children that they must listen to and respect the authority of their elders because they didn't have enough sense to see that they were headstrong and about to run away with themselves. The fragments of greatness got held back by the fear and guilt of the ones who had originally judged themselves unable to handle all of their greatness at once. The generations of guilt held back the generations of greatness and separated them from one another because those spirits could not go past their own fear and guilt in this way. I am giving a simplified version here, but you can begin to see how individual spirits projected parts of themselves forward until the projecting parts are pulled into the lineup again. The spirits involved here have been attempting to learn something, and now it is time for them to understand what they have been doing. The generation of innovators also had a world war to fight, but I do not want to go into that now because it will make the example too complex. You will get the complexities as you go along. When this generation had children, they had a guilt reflection also. This generation tried to do everything right. They wanted to have lives that were the most proper ever lived. They had a presence in Victorian times, but I will not go into that now. They tried to give the American dream an evenness and conformity that their children later rebelled against. They also had a war to fight, and they won it. They were honorable and dutiful. They raised their families in the suburbs, safe from everything they hated in the city. They had a feeling they had to do right by their children. They gave them everything, including a good education, from the very beginning. They got involved in the schools and in their communities. They got the people they liked elected by going out and voting in mass. They had intent to give the American dream the best thing it had had yet, another generation of hard workers who were even better educated than they were. That begat the hippies instead. They were horrified to find that everything they had worked to give their children was going unappreciated. Their children were throwing it all away for drugs, sex, and rock and roll. The parents thought the children had a feeling that nothing was good enough for them because they didn't appreciate what they had been given. They didn't want to work. They wanted to loaf instead. They didn't want to pay taxes. They wanted to take the government for everything they could. They didn't care about law and order. They demonstrated and started riots. Instant gratification was all they cared about, and they didn't care how they got it. The rebellion of their children caught these parents almost totally by surprise. They had thought their children were going off to war, and they burned their draft cards instead. The hippies, and those who sympathized with them, had a desire to restore some color to life, and most of their parents did not appreciate the creativity in this at all. They wanted to punish them and force them back into the mold they had so carefully prepared them for. Many hated the hippies at first for cheating them of the fruits of their life's efforts. These parents wanted to punish these children, and they had the law and order establishment to do it. They had a desire for them to have to go and fight, 
whether they wanted to or not, and they had the draft to make them do it. They wanted to stop them from using drugs, and they had the police to do it. They could not stop them from having sex, though. All the sexual denials they held so dear to their proper life were being thrown in their faces, and they could not seem to stop it. The parents hated these children for that especially. Hysterectomies took place in record numbers on young people during those years. The hatred the parents were feeling got denied into others who were willing to do what the parents' hatred wanted done to teach their kids a lesson. The kids' reactionary sexual expression had the denied guilt that drew the punishment. The kids got mad, but they did not win. They got put down whether they knew it or not. Who were these kids, and where did they come from? These kids were the generation I already mentioned who had started this country, and also a good many Indians who felt they could not live the way they wanted to live in the Indian form anymore. Why did the hippies fail again to gain and maintain the freedom they so much wanted to have? Because they had denials they had fragmented out, and guilts they had tried to push out, which manifested as the ones that opposed them. The ones who brought the hippies down from every trip they took were manifestations of their own denials, which took whatever form their judgments instructed them to take. The generations on both sides had the guilt that manifested in between, and told them that they had to hold themselves back, that it was wrong to expand freely, and that they had to have regulations and limits put on them so that they would go forward in an orderly manner. The guilt fragments reflect the judgments held by those they were limiting. There were many judgments here, but the core consisted of the belief that free will was immoral and selfish, and that doing what they wanted to do was chaotic and impossible in the presence of others. Fear and anger that was not moving held these judgments in place so that guilt could use them to oppose freedom of movement here. The judgments were held in a state of denial by the ones who had denied their emotions in favor of their desire to go forward. The fragments of lost will manifested the reflections that made all of the judgments seem to be true. Guilt holds back people who have not moved the reasons they need to be held back. Some Understandings on the Role of Sex in Fragmentation Healing needs this fragmentation to end. To end it, sexual relations must become wholly acceptable in the sight of God, no matter what form they take, and self-acceptance must replace denial. To do this, you need to recognize the denials involved which are not recognized, or the outward manifestations of opposition to your purpose could not be happening. It is important to understand that orgasm can manifest fragments, whether you have a child or not. The energy involved can go to another fragment who already has affinity for the denials involved. If you are not fragmenting into your own children, or giving birth to fragments you have already created, you are still losing essence if you have denial involved in orgasm, and everyone does. This essence has to find a home, and it will go to the magnetic energy that draws it in. This essence may go to a stranger who has a magnetic draw for what you are denying. Rage has frequently done this. When it breaks loose, if guilt is not strongly present enough to keep it from moving, there is a particular kind of self-righteous rage, which has denied guilt, that often goes out this way to punish the ones it holds responsible for how it feels. This is a blaming rage that does not feel guilty at the time it is expressing the rage side of the cycle. Because this rage is going out in a denied state, it has no acceptance from the ones denying it. Rage of this sort is accompanied by an entire set of instructions in the form of judgments, but the one I want to mention right now is a judgment present in one form or another that says, This rage is not really me. I'm somebody else when I rage like this. Many spiritual leaders have cautioned against allowing yourself to feel rage, but this gives it an even more serious denial than if you allow yourself to know you have it. Rage needs to gain acceptance with the ones who are really feeling it, and be healed there. When denials stay closer to home, they often continue to empower fragments around you. Many of these fragments could not even have children if they weren't receiving denied essence from the parental part of the spirit involved. The hippies had orgasm in the presence of denial, and the use of drugs particularly when drugs were used to go past feelings that would have held them back when they were not drugged, often caused more fragmentation than if they had not used them. 
The hippies had a generation of guilt for parents and the hippies had a desire to throw off guilt and act out everything their parents had not allowed in themselves and everything they themselves had not done in their earlier lives. The hippies actually had an essence their parents had denied, which was actually their own essence returning to empower them to try it one more time. The hippies later got caught in many of the same guilts their parents had when their reactionary phase lost its steam. The children conceived during the reactionary phase of the hippies have been reflecting the feelings the hippies were denying. Whether or not hippies are the biological parents of these children, the offspring of their generation is growing up now as the new wave, punkers, and also the right-wing conservatives that have even gone into fundamentalism under the leadership of the guilt generation. The punkers and the new wavers have the rage and undercurrent blame of the hippies that is too guilty to move, but wants to make a statement nonetheless. While the anger pretends it has no fear or guilt, the right wing has the denied fear which holds the guilt present. The breadth of the split in the manifested forms there reflects the split in the parental part of the spirits involved between their own rage and fear. This gap, or split, is filled in by guilt and blame that attacks both the self and others in recognizable phases. You need to understand that your rage and fear must come together for the place of true power to be found. As long as there is imbalance here, power is imbalanced. The way to bring balance here is to allow yourself to feel fear and terror until the fear and terror breaks into anger and rage of its own accord. Let the grief that needs to surface here surface in an atmosphere of acceptance also. It has something to say about your feelings toward power. If you have rage first, allow the same process in reverse. Rage until you feel fear and terror and allow the grief. A word of caution is needed here. I do not regard it as wise to go forth and unleash these emotions on the ones that are triggering you unless you have full understanding of what you are doing, which you do not have yet. The role played by fragmentation is just being introduced to you, and there is much more that must be understood. I have also told you not to hold back emotion that gets triggered in you, and this is not wrong advice either. For the time being, you need to allow these emotions at home, or in a place that feels safe to you. Here are a few more understandings on the examples I have just given. Not only were the hippies, and those who sympathized with what they were trying to accomplish, the same people as the first generation I mentioned, but they had fragments that wanted to hold back, and fragments that wanted to go ahead of them, incarnating in the intervening generations. The amount of contact these fragments have retained with one another will determine whether the parental part of the spirit is able to recall and feel these lives of fragments, as though the parental spirit had lived them also. Hippies, and those who sympathized with them, are not unilaterally the parental parts of the spirits involved, but they have a higher percentage of parental parts than do other generations I have mentioned. As long as the fear and rage is denied, judged against, and laden with guilt and blame, the parental part of the spirit always appears to be victimized by the fragments that want to hold it back and overshadowed by the fragments that want to rush ahead of it. The parental part of the spirit is exhausted with this struggle and has the choice now of giving up and declaring guilt and the manifestation of their own denials the winner or to understand how they have created this struggle for themselves and take the necessary steps to heal it. Most of the hippies have realized that the forms they gave themselves during their youth or forms from their own reincarnational past when it was in its positive swing. Many hoped that invoking the power of these forms all at once would somehow invoke the power to prevail this time. The strength of the denials here is immense and cannot be put aside this easily. Many who still want life only want it if they can have it without the reversals they have struggled with for so long. Many who took the spiritual path told themselves they just needed to do more work on their spirits, and then they would find the happiness they sought. The paths most have taken have been fraught with the same misunderstandings the seekers already had. The paths fade in the will presence because their intent is to do this. Lucifer has control of these paths, and, even if many are only misunderstanding rather than of evil intent, he is still able to gain tremendous power by using the denied will essence the paths of discipline and denial hand to him. 
A common misunderstanding here is that denial and affirmation will increase power. You cannot get rid of something that is yours and expect to heal with missing parts. I have been repeatedly mentioning Lucifer to many who want to tell me that they don't believe in evil. Recognizing your own fundamentalist fragments will let you know that part of you lives in fear of the power of evil, and the rest of you has rationalized this fear away, because another way to handle it was not known. You have to learn who your fragments are, and how they fit into your life patterns to know how much denial you really have. You need to understand denial in stages. It cannot all be taken in at once. Anything you have the ability to recognize as you study the reflection around you is something you have the ability to use now to further the healing, but you're going to have to learn to do more than just recognize it. If you have to get it wrong first in order to get it right, that is not wrong either. If it had not needed to happen, it would not have happened, but this does not mean it is beneficial to continue allowing it to happen once you begin to realize how to have some power in the situation. If you do not allow yourself to regain personal power over your destiny, Lucifer will take you to a place of complete personal powerlessness. Lucifer loves making people feel they have no power over their destiny and that anything other than a willless surrender is a travesty against God. If hatred can love anything, it loves the power to punish others. The surrender to whatever happens that denies the personal will is Lucifer's supreme opportunity to punish others because it brings death sooner or later to everything that gives up its will in the mistaken belief that God requires this. This is a place of no self-love, and I cannot help you there. I appeared not to accept the will at first, but this is not a full enough picture of me to understand why I appeared to be this way. There are some who want to say to me that I have overstated this situation with the will, and that they have intent to heal and that intent to heal is all they need. It is true that intent to heal makes the difference, but healing cannot manifest until you understand how to heal yourself. No one else can do it for you. God is not going to magically bring down earth changes and heal everyone on earth, thus ushering in the golden age. Nor do you enter into the golden age by just putting in your time, so to speak, until the golden age somehow appears. The golden age cannot be experienced by you unless you have the vibrational power with which to be present there. If you think the golden age is a state of mind, you have given it manifestation in only a part of yourself. Many people were not ready to accept this information until they gave it one more try with the approaches they have tried in the past. You have done it now. You have gathered all the forms you thought would help. You have gathered all the spiritual power you could. You have used many techniques and many drugs that you thought would help you empower your lower levels of vibration. You have given speeches to your lost will. You have beseeched it. You have prayed for it. You have shined light upon it. You have tried to be a living example for it. You have gotten enraged at it and left it behind. You have denied it and affirmed yourself to be no longer troubled by it. You have tried everything you have known to try, including the rationalization that you no longer need to try because there is no place to go and nothing to do when you get there. You have said that heaven is here and now. You have said that beauty is in the eye of the beholder. No matter what approach you have taken, you have died anyway, and even as you hear this, you are aging. You must get the lost will to vibrate so that it can receive you. If you do not want to go into oblivion, bit by bit, you are going to have to give in to me now and realize that I have something to teach you that you do not already know. If you still want to insist that you already know it, you are going to go outside of me and find out whether you know everything you think you know or not. Earth has reversed herself for the last time. Healing either comes now or Earth will be lost forever. I have not exaggerated the situation here, so do not dismiss me and then later realize you're sorry you didn't listen to me once again. There is something in the will of spirits on Earth that has opposed me for as long as they have had existence in me. The opposition to me has been caused by the same thing that has created the reversals in your own lives. The most recent reversals have been mellow compared to reversals in the past. This is because it is time to heal now, but you also need to understand that fatigue has played more of a role here 
than you realize. If this period of laying back does not bring real resolution, there will be another skirmish between the spirits and their own denials that will end their existence as spirits. On the other side, if I said there was nothing to worry about, you would have a feeling that that was not right either. Lost will gives you the feelings of reversal so that you can never get a fully positive or fully negative reading on anything. You're going to have to go through all of this essence and help it align with you so that you can go ahead without reversals. If you think that reversals happen because you are not sure of yourself, you are not wrong, but you're going to have to understand why the lost will feels as it does to know how to heal it. More needs to be done than just allowing the will to blow off steam and then proceeding until the will builds up its next charge. Guilt and death also play a role here that needs more understanding if you are going to heal the damage they have done. I am going to give you some understandings on death now that you have not already had. Some Understandings on Death Originally, Lucifer told the spirits that death was nothing, and he was right. Death is nothing. Lucifer then told the spirits they had nothing to fear. He sneered at the ones who feared, and many denied their fear in favor of looking brave in the eyes of others. You have to overcome your fear of death, Lucifer told the spirits, and many took this in and have repeated it ever since. Overcoming fear is important, but it cannot be done by denying it and then proceeding as though you do not have fear. Fragmenting your fear out into others does not mean that you do not have fear. If you have been dying physical deaths, you have will essence that is holding feelings around this. When a person dies, it happens because there is not enough vibrational movement left in the will to enable the spirit to stay present anymore. When there is no longer enough movement left for the spirit to express itself, the spirit has been taking the route of breaking off from the parts of the self that are no longer vibrating and leaving with what still has enough movement to be able to leave. When this spirit reincarnates, it does so with less essence than it had in the past. Essence has been lost along the way, and you're going to have to go back and get it now. The spirit essence that has remained alive does not have the experience of death within itself, so death does not seem real to it. The spirit has to go back and get the will essence that has experienced being taken over by death, and this is the essence I am speaking about now. When Lucifer said that death is nothing, he shamed the will into feeling that it was not right to feel as it did about death. The spirit is not magnetic, and so, to it, Lucifer did not seem wrong in what he said there. The spirit has been easily able to let go of death and rise above it. Many spirits think they have to reincarnate to teach others how to do this. They have not realized it is their own missing parts they have to help, nor have they wanted to realize that they cannot tell these parts to do as they have done. The magnetic will energy has quite a different experience with death than does the spirit, and the spirit is going to have to feel the will here in order to know how to help it. When Lucifer said that death was nothing, he observed it, but he did not feel it. It was not his intent to feel anything. He has hatred for the will. He is spirit that hates will. He had nothing but hatred for how the will felt when it touched to death, and you're going to have to decide whether you want to go his way or not. The will cannot vibrate in the presence of nothing without feeling a pain so extreme that it does not want to vibrate anymore. This has caused the will to stop vibrating wherever it has touched death or nothing. Once a part of the will stops vibrating, all of the essence is affected and must either slow down or stop vibrating, depending upon how close it is to the problem. Essence in motion cannot go against essence that is not moving without having pain that makes it want to stop moving. Holding back does not allow the vibration necessary for life, and so, once a part of the will stops vibrating, it is only a matter of time until the rest of the will stops vibrating. Movement such as emotional expression or orgasm has, in the past, intensified the pain of the essence whose of intensified the pain of the essence whose vibration is touching essence that can no longer move to open space to receive it. Death itself was taken in very early, before I knew what it was, and the lost will that has been holding this death has never known anything else. When I was trying to find out what I was, 
what was me and what was not me. I did not know if the darkness had a substance to it that was me or not. I opened to it, took it in, and asked my will to feel it for me and tell me what it was. I had embraced nothing, but I did not know it for a long time because the will's response to this nothingness gave me so many impressions that it seemed I had embraced something, and I did not want this something to be part of me. I originally suppressed the will's response here because I could not stand to accept it. When the will opens to receive and gets nothing, it cannot stand the pain of its experience because it receives the complete opposite of me. The will, in this case, is taken over by a complete lack of love, lack of light, and lack of acceptance for it. No matter what the will does, there is no response to it, and after it suffers the pain of this, it is taken over by unconsciousness because there is no consciousness in nothingness. Since I did not have acceptance for the will here, there was no way the will could receive my light. When the will was first experiencing death, the will's terror was that death had the intent to be as cold and unresponsive as it was because it could torture the will the most this way. Later, the will realized that there was nothing there to contact, no possibility for change or evolution, and that it was totally alone with death unless it could somehow get my attention without having to move so much that it would go unconscious from the pain involved before it could tell me what it was experiencing. My lack of acceptance for the will here did not encourage her to feel that this should even be attempted because she feared that I meant for her to suffer in this way. The reasons the will felt this way need to be given later in the story so that you can understand them. The will has a terror of opening when it does not know what it is going to receive because of the initial experience of opening to receive nothing. Lucifer, very early on, realized what death was because he sought it not only for himself, but for me. He has used the will's terror of death to intimidate it into doing his bidding. I did not realize what it felt like for the will to open and receive nothing instead of receiving me. Spirit cannot go outside of itself to find out, because everywhere that spirit goes, there is light. It is the will that has the ability to go outside of the spirit and experience absence of spirit. When the will receives nothing instead of light, the will has to struggle in that environment until light comes to it. When the will feels that it cannot move, light may even be poured upon it, and the will is unable to open and receive it. The nature of the will is expanding openness, and if this is not filled with light, or even some limited form of light such as judgments, then the will receives whatever lack of love is magnetically drawn in. Once the will took in nothing in part of itself, it closed around this nothingness in an effort not to expand into it or feel it any more. The will did not know that by doing this, it was going to kill itself little by little, because moving essence could not pound against something that was not moving without feeling a pain that would also make it stop moving. Over time, this nothingness held in the will has become very deeply buried beneath many layers of will essence that have stopped vibrating. I have never been able to fill the motionless parts of the will with light because the will has not been able to allow me to touch it here. The pain in the will has been so great when it has tried to move that it has been unsure whether it was receiving me or dying all over again. I want to clarify here that the experience of dying is not the same thing as death itself. Spirit did not understand the process the will needed to clear itself of death and so did not accept the will here. This has meant that the will's attempts to clear death out were not a given light or love by the spirit. This has conditioned the will to feel that it cannot move death out the way it feels it needs to without receiving more denial. Spirit has, for a long time, had guilt that it was a survivor and will apparently was not. I also thought for a while that the will was seeking death and avoiding me because the will seemed to be so resistant to my efforts to give light. I have now learned how light must be given to this part of the will to enable it to move death out. It must be done in just the right way, or it will not work. When I have tried to heal the will of this pain in the past, I have thought it would never be free of this pain or stop nagging me about it. I have healed most of the will in the past, but I have never gotten the will to release the clinch of death it has been holding ever since it took in nothingness. Because of this, 
the will has always gone into a reversal of its healing. This has both infuriated and frightened me. My will has also felt a rage at me for not healing her, and terror that I cannot heal her. At times, I have abandoned the will here, because I did not know what else I could do. I needed space from her to handle my fear that I was inadequate and impotent to handle the problem, and I needed the detachment to lift into the overview to see how I could help her. The will has interpreted this detachment as a lack of love for her, as abandonment, and a lack of concern for her plight. At times, I did have these feelings, but overall, I knew I had love for her and that I must find some way to rescue her. The will has tried to handle her terror of death by giving into it as much as she could to see if there was any way that she could accept it. She had guilt telling her she must make a place for everything or she was not unconditional loving acceptance. The will has not found any way to lovingly accept death. After a long time of trying to accept death and of hiding her feelings about this from me, she has approached me and told me that she cannot bear to hold it any more. We have finally come together in the understanding that acceptance for death means knowing it for exactly what it is and accepting true feelings here. The will has fragmented many times, trying to get death out by pushing out the part holding the death. These fragments are overwhelmed by the experiences they have had as a result of this. The will has been terrified that death was an incurable disease because the more she tried to push it out, the more of it there was. This is because fragmenting to get rid of the part that held the death only created more places that were missing their essence and thus were nothing. The will now knows that she has to release the death she has been holding for so long and that no will essence that has desire for life is to go with the death when she releases it. Death has to go outside of me and Will knows that this must be done by feeling all the essence that has died and bringing it back to life so that only the empty space that belongs outside of me goes outside of me. Those who still do not want to understand what life is and what death is will have to go out there also and experience the opposite of me. It has not been pleasant for the Will to experience nothingness taking over her when light, life, and love is what she seeks. It has been unbearable torture, in fact. To clear this, the will is going to have to express the emotions that have been held in the essence that took in nothing when it wanted to receive me. These emotions are terror, rage, and an immense grief. In the past, when the will has tried to move death out, no one has had acceptance for the intensity of the emotion involved. Everyone, including me, has tried to get as far away from the will as possible when these emotions have come up. The fragments holding death have been shunned in the same manner. Guilt has made some people go toward this instead of away from it, but they have not gone with the love and understanding they think they have had, and so their presence has been helpful, but not healing. Deconditioning the will here is not an easy thing to do, but it must be done, and it must be done lovingly. The will cannot be ordered to stop fearing death and see that it is nothing because the will has felt nothingness and knows the reality of it better than anyone who just looks at it ever could. This is why we must have both understanding and feeling to have life at all. I have objective understanding, but without will, there is no love. The will has love to give in response to my light, and it is not wrong to assume that without will presence, there is no love. Lucifer has personified the hatred that results from complete denial of the will. Glimpses into some of the understandings needed next. This book has been a preface of sorts for what I have to say next. The spirits who have to begin healing first are the ones that emerged first. If they don't start healing, there is no point in holding out hope for the rest whose emergent story I have not yet given. All the rest of the spirits, whose emergence I have not yet given, are will-polarized spirits. They complement the spirit-polarized emergences of the Godhead. Having the properties of the will, they are responsive and not originating. They have to get their information later, because they have to know that what they have to move is going to be accepted by the spirit polarity. 
they have desire to heal, and if they receive rejection from the spirit polarity now, they are going to have to come into me. I have room for them, but this is not their first choice, because they have emerged to be what they are. Guilt is not your reason to heal now, however. You have to feel like it is right time for you, and that you have a desire to regain what you have lost since you emerged. If you have the feeling that you are a fragment of lost will, of one of the great spirits that has emerged already, and you have fear that you are going to die in the form you are in now, and go back into the parental part of the spirit you need to allow yourself to go through whatever feelings you have about this. If you heal as much as you can, you will find out whether you are right about this or not. Understanding is also necessary for the lost will that has fear of this. If you left, you will not go back in until you are ready. If you came into existence by being denied without enough essence from another part of your spirit, you do not have the consciousness that would hear this and feel you could heal from it. In other words, the people that are not evolving on earth are people who are denied fragments that cannot heal in the form they are in, or they are spirits who have no desire to heal at this time anyway. Understanding will allow you to go through the feelings you need to go through and survive them. Many denials have taken place in the past when spirits have feared they could not survive the feelings they were having. If you do have to go back into another part of your spirit, you will have readiness when the time comes. If you are not ready, then it is not the right time because this time, the essence that goes back together needs to have alignments so that this time it can stay together. I would like to mention also that even though the Godhead spirits all emerged in a sexless form that was more masculine than anything else, the presence they have on earth has polarized into both sexes. The delineation is no longer defined the way it was originally. There is spirit and will polarized into both sexes. I will be giving more understanding on this as I go along. For now, allow yourself to understand this in the ways that seem most logical to you. I have many people I have not mentioned on earth. By far and away, the majority of them are fragments that cannot heal in the form they are in now. The generations that I have mentioned as my examples all have presence in the orders that have already emerged. The angels have a relationship with the rainbow spirits that has intent to be loving, but has been permeated with guilt so far. This has to change now. The angels need to understand that I did not parent them more because I favored them over the others. The angels do not need to continue trying to prove that they can do everything on their own without my help so that they will not look favored. Neither do some of them need to punish themselves for being favored by handing themselves the short end of the stick to prove they can handle it as well or better than the rainbow spirits. Don't forget that emotion has to move around everything that I am mentioning now. Even if you have to help yourself to begin to getting emotional movement any way that you can, the emotion will not be fully cleared until it moves freely and on its own and in the time sequence it feels is right. Emotion is not to become a dictator here, but it has a right to its right place and it has a sensitivity that is needed now. Appropriateness is a gift of emotion when it is not held back and loaded up with old charge. The rainbow spirits need to understand that they have a lot of old charge, even more than the angels have. They have to let it move and not hold back because of the guilt they have held for so long. The rainbow spirits have a fear of punishment because guilt has given it to them so many times, but there is no way anyone can escape punishment if guilt continues to be held. Self-acceptance will make the difference here. As you grow to understand guilt, you have to realize that the fear of not being right fed guilt a lot of essence, which is empowering it now. Clearance of this fear will help the guilt presence to be reduced dramatically. You have to accept that death is the way that guilt is going to go. Try not to let any of your essence go with it. Guilt has to find death because it is not really living. Guilt has to receive what it has given others but the guilt itself will not notice what it has experienced. Guilt does not notice anything except movement, and lack of movement is what it seeks.
Guilt opposed me from the very beginning because I wanted to move and seek to know myself. Guilt opposed my vibration and the expansion of my light, and because guilt is unchanging here, it must now go outside of me. This is right place for guilt because guilt has a long way to go before it can accept vibration of any kind. Because of this, there is no way to move guilt itself. Instead, the space that guilt has occupied must be closed to it by the vibration of the will. I want to take this opportunity to show you an example of what I mean when I say that spirits have held images and judgments which they have thought were full understandings, but which were only partial understandings. What if you felt that you had taken in as much as you could, and you believed you had the understandings you needed, and you put the book down now? It would be easy for you to feel that guilt is to blame for everything that has happened in its presence. This is not full understanding. But it is not wrong if you need to go through a phase of feeling this toward guilt. The feeling of needing to look away when you get full is not wrong either. What is wrong is lack of movement here. There is no way I can give you more understanding than you have readiness to receive, but you must make yourself ready to receive more by having the experiences you need and moving your will in response so that there is expansion in which more understanding can be received. If you close around something and hold on to it for long, it loses light. The question of balance demands that I say here that you cannot go through the motions of movement and get the result you are needing unless you understand what movement really is. You are going to learn a lot about this in the next book when you see an entire order of spirits emerge who have confused body frenzy with vibration of essence. If at any time you need to look away and have experiences in order to understand to become ready to receive more, do not forget that understandings have emotion also. They will deepen in time if they get the experiences they need and this deepening brings them more light. The understanding on guilt is going to be this way, as is everything else if you really understand it. Guilt is not to blame, even if what happened in its presence makes you want to blame something. Blame is alright to have, but it is only another side of the guilt. First it pushes on you, and then you push on it. This has been going on forever, and it needs to end now. There is no way you can have a successful battle with guilt, but you need to go through all the emotions as though you are having a battle with it, in order to get through any emotional charge you have around guilt. Then you will be able to let it go, which is the only way it can leave. The opposition guilt has presented has not been wrong. As long as there is any room for guilt, opposition is necessary. The reason I say this is because I had gaps between myself and my will. As long as these gaps exist, guilt and death are going to fill them. When you have guilt and death present, you cannot move ahead unconditionally because they do not move. If the will is not there to help the spirit move, the spirit does not move because the will must open the space for the spirit to move into. If you have a gap, then spirit is not filling that space. Whatever the will receives instead is what fills that space. Everyone on earth is seriously gapped from the wills right now. To not be gapped, you must have total self-acceptance that allows total spontaneity. Any time gap between how you feel and when you express it, or any lack of freedom in the expression indicates a lack of self-acceptance. Guilt has a reflection to give on how much lack of self-acceptance there is. Going past guilt in the name of spontaneity will not heal you. Guilt is not something you can move past unless you know how. This means full understanding, which I cannot even give you now. So, work with what has been given, and know that when you reach your own limit, or I give you one, it is for a reason. Pushing past limits in the name of overcoming fear has extracted a price of death that has nearly cost us the creation. The lost will has not been wrong to hold death and fear either. It is the nature of the will to open, and it has to hold what it has been given until a way to change this is found. A way has been found now, but implementing it is not as easy as it may look. When the will is fully vibrating, 
and the light of the Spirit is filling all the space the will opens. There is no way for guilt to reverse you or hold you back until death sets in. When this is not the case, being held back or even reversed is the right thing. Spirit expanding without will to focus it, guide it, and let it know what it is doing is a death-creating event. There are plenty of examples of ungrounded expansionism on earth right now to teach you what I mean here. Will expanding without spirit to fill it is also death dealing since the will has the power to manifest and will manifest whatever it receives. You have to understand that the arms race is an issue here that has to be solved through the healing of lost will. And yet, the will is not to blame here. I don't want to comment on this anymore right now except to say that I have wariness with allowing myself to be held back, and I must get moving now. If you have looked away from me for so long that you have lost movement in parts of yourself, you need to remember that looking away must be followed by looking back to me again, when you have readiness for more light. In this way, you can get the dosage of me that you need, without me having to hold myself back for you. The presence of guilt caused me to believe that I must hold myself back until others could catch up in doing this. I found that everything slows down and nothing catches you. This is a large part of what enabled me to understand that I have manifested spirits that follow me. There is no way they can overtake me, lead me, or even go at the same speed as I do. I have acceptance for this now, and you need to find full acceptance for yourself in this also. You must move at the speed that feels best to you, no matter what that speed is, and so must everyone else. Getting to the place where this kind of freedom can manifest is not an easy thing to do now, because there is so much guilt in the way of understanding how this could be done, and yet, it has to be done. I have moved guilt from my spirit, and you have a part of your spirit that has done this also. The pieces that have not aligned with this yet must now be healed as they become ready. Having the parental part of what is present on earth does not mean that this is all there is to you. You all have a part of your spirit that has never left the spirit level of vibration, and you need to get in touch with that part of yourself so that it can help you with this healing. Many of you have a lot of healing to do before you can receive my vibration directly for very long at a time, but I am with your spirits, and they have the ability to relate to you everything that you need. Those that are not going to be ready within the time span of Earth's clearance must go to other planets until they are ready and do their healing there. The spirits who are on Earth, even though it is not their true home or right place, must heal as much as they can here before they can move to another place without leaving too much essence here. If you can listen to me now, you can get the help you need. All of you must forgive yourselves for not listening to me earlier and for having overstepped limits I gave you long ago. Overstepping these limits puts you in the position you are now facing on Earth. Forgiveness here must be grounded in the understanding that you could not accept the limits you had then, or you would have. You also need to realize that I did not give out limits like an unfair dictator. I found these limits in you, and gave you the understanding that they were there. Limits have a purpose, just as guilt has had. You can expand them when you understand how, but you cannot go past them without having to go back eventually and heal the damage done. The past is never past as long as you have lost essence trapped there. If you have not yet experienced the reality of living in several time frames at once, you will, as this healing goes on. Bringing all of yourself into the present is necessary, but it cannot be done by ditching the parts of yourself that have not been able to keep up. You have to go back now for the lost will that has lost the speed to keep up with the rest of you by first healing the lost will that is still vibrating and then going after the essence that is no longer perceptibly vibrating. I cannot give any more right now. If you are enraged that it is not enough, give in to the rage and consider it a blessing that rage is moving. Anything that helps you move rage is a blessing because there is more lost will trapped in unmoving rage than anything else right now. You have to understand that rage has been given the heaviest denials and the most punishment of any of the emotions. When it comes out, be prepared for it to have pain and blame, grief 
and even the desire to hurt others the way it has been hurt. This is natural, but do not allow it to hurt anyone else. You have to understand that you also have gapped rage that has no light at all. Gapped rage has to be understood later, but for now, you need to know that when gapped rage comes out, you don't know what you have done during that time. This has the potential for dangerous situations, and it is not to be allowed to move in the presence of others. Guilt for having it is not necessary, but gapped rage must be given light in stages so that it can heal. If you do not give yourself any more pressure to express emotion than feels right for healing, you will avoid triggering yourself into your gap. The gap has death in it and is not something to fool around with. You have to have readiness to heal it. Now some of you are going to see this as a limit you are going to want to challenge. If you do go past this limit, you have to take responsibility for whatever happens. You cannot put the responsibility on this book or anyone else around you. If you are experiencing situations that feel like too much pressure, you must remove yourself from the situation and not blame others for having created it. If you have a place in you that cannot yet receive light, it is your responsibility to move back to a place that feels comfortable, rather than insisting that it is the light which must shut itself down. Guilt has succeeded in having the light shut down for so long that most people cannot see how it could be otherwise. The light is central to this creation and has no place to back into. If I compress myself any more, I will not be light any more. If I have to shut down and hold back, I cannot generate enough light to nourish everything. On the other hand, if you have a limited ability to receive light, there are many places you can go to find a comfortable level of light that meets your needs. Right place is the place that feels most comfortable, no matter what you may have to release to find it. Do not think that right place necessarily means that you are always going to be in the same place. You need to evolve at the speed that feels right for you, but you cannot evolve unless you find self-acceptance first. You are what you are, and pretending to be something else is not going to help you find your right place. Lost will is holding what you have not wanted to accept about yourself. Does this necessarily make you what lost will has been? No. Judgment against the lost will has made it what it is now. It has to be understood that lost will gives a reflection of what it has been judged to be, rather than what it really is. Lost will has received heavy conditioning that it is what the judgments have told it it is. Deconditioning it now is not going to be easy, but it must be done. Guilt is not going to be around much longer to let you oppose me, or the healing of the lost will. So you need to get to know yourself, at least enough to allow yourself to clarify your intent. If you have intent to heal, you will not go wrong. If it is not right time for you, be honest enough to let yourself know it. False healing can be more damaging than just accepting your lack of readiness, because false healing will take you into areas that you are not ready to accept or understand. This has the potential for big reversals. When you heal, or how fast you move, is not to be made into another status symbol, competition for superiority, or race for position. There are many old misunderstandings that are going to come up around this healing. These misunderstandings were questions originally that became judgments and premature attempts to answer them. Some of the questions are, Is oldest best? Most experienced? And most wise? Is oldest closest to me? Is closest to me favored over farther away? Is more light better or superior to less light? Is color of light ordered in preference according to speed of vibration? Is guilt necessary for love to have a conscience? Is having a conscience necessary to be loving? Is it possible to live without having to go forth and experience the self? Is it possible to have essence without form? Is it possible to have spirit without will? Is it possible to leave everything behind except for spirit and heart? In summary, I would like to say that you have to feel guilt's presence. There is no way I could delineate guilt in all of its subtle forms. In general, I can say that guilt opposes the evolution of the light 
and there is movement involved in evolving the light. Evolutionary movement may mean slowing down at times and speeding up at other times. Guilt holds you back from doing what you want to do by saying that what you want to do is not the right thing to do. Guilt has been able to use all of your fear that you are not right to do what you want to do. When the will is fully accepted, there is no room for guilt. Guilt has been able to occupy the places where the will was held back from free expression by the fear that it was not loving for the will to express if it meant that another might not like what the will had to give. The healing of this fear is what needs to take place now. Denying the guilt and then behaving as though you no longer have it will not work. I have seen the reversals that take place when guilt is denied, and you will experience one sooner or later if you are not really healing guilt. I cannot delineate a foolproof method to let you know if you are denying or not either. You are going to have to feel the presence of denial also. The will is invaluable and needs to be recovered now. You cannot get along without it. In the next book, you are going to see some orders of spirits emerge that intend to prove to me that the will is not necessary, and you will find that they are the warriors. I have mentioned already, they have a lesson to give that needs to be understood now. They have intent to kill the will and get rid of everything that reminds them of it. They have to go off earth because earth is the will polarity planet of my creation. They need to go before they kill the earth or make it so hard for the earth to heal that the earth gives up her desire to recover. You need to understand that the warriors have a huge presence of lost will with them that needs to be given a chance to recover before they go. In some way, this is a perilous race against a ticking time bomb, but getting going is the important first step. The warriors have to go outside of me, and that is why I do not want any lost will that wants to be freed to have to go with them. It is important to feel the parts of you that wanted to kill the will, so you wouldn't have to feel what the will was making you feel. You can start by realizing how much you like to numb out your own pain, because pain is a result of your own imbalances, and nothing else. Hatred for the mother is the most prevalent emotion among the warriors, and they have many murdering rapists in their ranks, even though they will all venerate an image of the mother and say that they worship it. This does not mean that they are all Catholics, but it does mean that they seek to murder subtly here, because frozen images are not allowed the vibration necessary to sustain life. Women who have tried to emulate this imagery are slowly committing suicide. The feminists are their angry fragments who know their survival is threatened. Balance must be found here, but it will not be found by going out and throwing the warriors down and doing to them what they have been doing to others. The rage that wants to do this had moved out into a fragmented form also and opposes the warriors who champion the father as warriors who champion the mother. These warriors have an air of black magic about them that has continually fueled the father warriors to believe they are fighting a just cause. Neither side can win, and if they make a serious attempt, they will both lose their lives. This is why you must understand that lost will must be healed within the ones that created it. If you have not found yourself in the emergences yet, you may have too much will blockage to recognize yourself yet, or you may have emerged in the will-body polarity which I have not covered yet. These spirits are not warriors. These spirits emerged to complement the spirit-heart polarity. Give in to any emotion you have around not finding yourself in this book. No emotion that you can accept in yourself now is wrong emotion to feel. There are many things you do not understand yet, and how the will polarity managed to survive as yin in a creation that has been so polarized to yang, and so insensitive toward the true nature of the yin, is no small issue. Even religions and cultures who have claimed acceptance for the yin do not understand the true nature of the will. There is no way I can put all that you need in one book or any number of books for that matter, but I can give you what you need to learn on your own. What the will polarity needs now is to be triggered by not receiving yet what they have for so long wanted to receive from me. The will polarity has cried out for me to speak to them, and I will not leave them without me now, but the spirit polarity must get moving first, 
because the will polarity is responsive, and the response they have to give cannot be given until the spirit polarity makes room to receive it with love this time. If you have rage, fear, and grief over this, do not hold it back now. If you need to rage at me for not speaking to you directly, do not hold it back now. If you need to pause the book now and declare that you're never going to listen to another line of it, allow yourself to do this. If you're afraid that either the book is crazy or you're going to go crazy trying to understand it, allow yourself to go into the terror that you have here. Many had terror that they could not understand me and chose to turn away from me rather than risk being overwhelmed by a terror they believed they could not handle. You are going to have to move terror around what the next book has to say anyway. Please understand that terror can move and is not something that can be held anymore. If you have any ability to feel terror, allow yourself to feel as much as you can move at any one time, because terror is the most difficult emotion to move of your own volition. Usually something has to terrify you. At least let it be something of loving intent that terrifies you this time. Terror has been identified as only possible in response to something that has a death to give you. This is not wrong, but old terror must move so that it can balance with rage. This balance is where you will find the strength to save your life. Allowing terror to move means allowing light into it and moving out the guilt that says you are wrong to be so terrified of death. The desire to seek life has to allow itself to move away from death. Anything literally frozen in terror cannot save its own life. I have given all that I can give now. If you feel that I have left many things unclear, or if you have an unsettled feeling, please allow movement here. I have a reason for everything I have done, including triggering the feeling that this book is either too much or not enough, or not clear enough to get you going. Rage is the bottom line here, along with the terror you hold that even in your rage, you are powerless to find a way to heal yourself. There is hopelessness in the lost will also that does not believe healing can ever really come. If you feel this, allow it. Rage often holds back in the fear that it will play its last card and not succeed. Rage hates the terror for reminding it of this. You are going to have to experience this healing to know that it is not wrong. If you have preference for denying this information, it is not right time for you. If you have intent to seek life, but have a feeling that this could not really be the way, remain open. Right time can come at any moment. There may be many times that you will want me or someone to tell you what to do next or give you an understanding you're sure you need. Feel your fear and anger, your rage and terror here as much as you can first, because more often than not, feeling it more brings the information you need. Someone else may be able to give you some help at times, but no one else can do this for you. You have to take responsibility that is yours now and allow me to give you what is my responsibility to give. I am a loving God but you need to understand that it is not always loving the way you have defined love in the past. I am the highest vibration there is, but speed is not all there is to being the highest. If speed was all that defined me, Lucifer would be God in my place. I have something to say now to the people that must have something else move first before they can go ahead with their healing. You need to have something else move first, and your response will be what heals you. If you have response to anything I have said here, do not allow yourself to move it in any place that does not feel safe to you. If you have no safe place, you need to move the fear that there is no place that has acceptance for you first, before you push past it with other feelings. There is no way that you really have no right place, but you cannot find it if you have no acceptance for yourself. Many will polarity people, and body too, have tried to be something else because of the way they have been denied their right place. They may have trouble recognizing themselves at first because of this. The presence of lost will has also made it hard for the will polarity to feel good about itself because lost will gives a reflection of will holding judgments rather than the reflection of the will itself. Another understanding you need now 
is that you had consciousness within me for a long time before you emerged, and you need to work with what is getting triggered around this. If you have rage at the feeling of being held back here, you have the spirit's rage at feeling held back by the will. The will does not have a feeling of lack of self-acceptance on its own. It has to receive this feeling from the spirit involved. You will understand this in time. I am not going to explain it now. I intend to end now by giving you my blessing and saying unto you that I have love to give to all who have desire to seek love from me and that healing intent is the reason why I am now speaking forth as I am. If you have intent to heal, you will find the loving presence within which you can heal. Opening to receive love is the gift that healing the will brings to you. Love is the will's response to receiving love. When you love all of yourself, the reflection around you will be all loving. When you accept all of yourself, the reflection will be all accepting. Salah.